at my own yes, w um, um, when there is a yeah. <coughs> Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah. And anyway, it's near them anyway. Yes. So yeah. yeah. Thank you. We may just keep coming to make sure that this is. Thank you. Although the time's 9.30, uh, Mr. Moyes, I think, has just popped to the restroom, I think, I guess. So I'll just, I'll just wait till he comes back and then we'll formally open. <clears throat> Okay, good morning everybody. The time is 9.31 and the inquiry is resumed. Thank you. Um, just a couple of items just to cover off before we start. Uh, so just to confirm, yesterday I had one more document added to the ID documents from my side, which was the, um, the updated drawing with the existing uh, embankment level dotted on. Uh, so just to check for both parties, that's also what you had as your so documents. I've got a soft copy. It would be useful if there is a hard copy available. If that's a possibility. Uh, after oh, us. <laughs> ID four. Do we have a yes, hard I copy? Four, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and then is is Councillor Love here? Okay. Um, so he wished to submit two pieces of evidence. Thank you very much, Councillor. Um, it might be worth waiting until he gets here, then we can talk to him about what those are. Uh, but for now, uh, we'll just leave that and we'll come back to that when he comes in. Uh, and I also, I'm sorry, I'm not sure of the lady's name, but there's somebody who wishes to submit video evidence. If that's, ah, oh, hello. Yes, can I just ask a bit more about that, please? Um, it, yes, that might be easier, actually. Uh, yes, well, I, I, that, before I see it, I just need to check to see if, it, if it's admissible first. So I just wanted to understand what it is. Yes, it's a 13 second video. Mm -hmm. It's taken at Seabrook okay. on the south side path, yeah. looking towards the left, towards the sea, okay. where the trees are. Okay. And where those trees are is where the road is proposed to be, up path. Okay. And it's got all the bird song. And you can hear very, very faintly in the background just because of the traffic noise. But it's actually really loud bird song. Okay. That's okay. It's no one doesn't control okay. it at all. Okay, uh, Mr. Honey. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, um, you'd be able to experience this on the site visit. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, in my submission, there's no need for the evidence to be admitted. And secondly, in any event, we are now well past the 5th of October deadline for the submission of evidence, and you made clear, sir, at the pre-inquiry meeting that was the deadline for it. More importantly, we're past the time where my witnesses have given evidence. So it is now impossible 
for me to ask my witnesses to comment on any new evidence that is adduced. So, sir, for all of those reasons, we would object to late evidence being admitted, and especially video evidence, which is not going to be e easy, as it were, to handle. May I interject? This video actually came on my social media yesterday and it was recorded exactly two years ago yesterday. Now, how, how coincidental is that, that it should happen just like that yesterday? And I'm thinking, wow, that's really, really evidential. OK, um, I, think the, so I think Mr Honey has made two good points, which is that um, he won't have the chance to um, respond to directly to his witnesses. Um, and also, I think the bigger point for me is that I would experience this on my site visit. Um, so it's, it'd be something which I will make sure that I um, take notice of when I'm walking around. It's really, um, really important, sir. Really, really and I will do. I promise thank you I will you, do that, but I won't, I won't accept thank the video. Thank okay, you. thank you. Um, on the site visit, um, shall we at the end of the day just to agree... Uh, because by then we'll probably know exactly where we are with the programme and then we can agree exactly how that is undertaken. So, yes. If it would help at this stage, I can just indicate that I discussed it, took instructions last night, and we're content for it to be accompanied, and we can provide Mr Woodhead to do that. Um, so that's our, uh, as it were, updated okay. position following what Mr Moy said last night. Grateful okay. for that. Okay, thank you. Um, Okay, that's everything from me. Um, uh, is there anything that either party wishes to raise before we start? Nothing from this side, sir. Okay, thank you. Then I'll hand over to you, Mr Moyes. Thank you, sir. So we begin a new chapter in the inquiry, um, and that's the evidence from Save Princess Parade, the um, Rule 6 or <coughs> main um, thank you. party to the putting the contrary case to the applicant, put it like that. So that, that is a list, excuse me, hopping over the, um, a list of the witnesses uh, with their professional qualifications that say Prince's Parade will be calling to give evidence to <coughs> you um, before the inquiry. So the first witness um, I'd like to call is Mr. Graham Wickenden, who is seated at the witness table, um, sir. Um, Mr. Wickenden, good morning to you. Good morning. Now, you um, prepared a written uh, proof of evidence, um, which um, the inspector has, has received um, in relation to highways and transport, and do, do you have a copy of that to hand? Thank you. Um, so if I first of all introduce you to the inquiry, um, you're Graham Wickenden with a um, member of the Institute of uh, Civil Engineers, your FIHT. Um, what is FIHT, just to clarify it's that for the benefit of... Fellow of the Institution of Highways and Transportation. Thank you very it's much. It's now FCIHT, something along those lines. Right. <laughs> You're a chartered civil engineer with 40 years experience and while semi-retired in 2020 you take an active part in major projects, uh, reviews on a freelance basis and you've worked across the globe in the promotion of design, construction of major roads, minor civil engineering and infrastructure projects and um, locally you've worked and led major infrastructure schemes in Kent and Essex for the last 20 years. Yes. And before rejoining the private consultancy sector, you also led major design teams for Kent County Council yep. and was more recently involved in the um, successful UK infrastructure development bid in, in Essex. That's, that's, that's correct, yes. I'm, I'm grateful. Now, um, you, can you confirm... Um, that we haven't seen you physically at the inquiry so no. far. Have, can you confirm what you've been doing in relation to the live streaming? Oh, no, I you know, watched it, I can't say wrapped with, but I've watched the last two days, yes. And it's been, it's gone well. Yes, I've taken notes. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been good. So you've been following it on the live stream, yes, thank you. So, so. Um, and you've heard the evidence that's been given by Mr Fitch yep. um, 
in that regard. And could I just deal with um, uh, some pr preliminary points first of all? Um, in relation to the, to the focus mm, of the inquiry um, and, and the scope of it, um, there's been some... Is your understanding um, of the scope um, slightly more refined on the basis of, or slightly deeper, perhaps is another way of putting it, on the basis of the evidence that you've heard so far in terms of what? Yeah, no, that's, yeah that's fair to say. Yes, Thank it's certainly you. Been come, become clearer the last couple yeah. of days where the focus is far more nuanced than possibly I appreciated, and there are a Thank couple you. of bits of text that I would... Amen. I'm grateful for that clarification. Now, so the way I was proposing to deal with this, and I have had a um, brief word with my um, learned friend, um, was if you had the physical hard copy of Mr. or perhaps you prefer to do it on screen, it was entirely a matter for you. But I was proposing just to, um, as it were, invite, and it, this applies to each of my five witnesses, invite them each to. Um, explain which part of their written evidence they no longer wish to rely upon. Um, and I was rather hoping that that exercise could be done by just a striking out a paragraph or two um, from the text. Um, and then if it was felt necessary, we would provide updated, written, amended proofs of evidence to go onto the inquiry website in the fullness of time. That's how we were propose oh, I was proposing to deal with it on uh, yes okay that would be easy for me to do on, on hard copy um, do we do we have a hard copy oh. that I can actually write on there's one here you can have mine yes no I'll get you one oh, okay okay <clears throat> thank you sorry so I perhaps should have explained that at the mm -hmm. outset to um, each witness but that's how I was proposing to which day would you want to copy uh, Mr. Wickenden's this, this is fine I had a spare okay thank you thank you sir grateful. So if I could just ask you to consider your paragraph 6F which is under the headings um, adopted in the Buckles May 2021 document, um, yeah. Mr Wickenden, uh, adverse impact on the setting of the Royal Military Canal. Um, as, as we know the jurisdiction of the inquiry is to deal with the um, proposed extinguishment of vehicular rights of way on the existing Prince's Parade and the substitution of that vehicular right of way on the proposed new road yep. yet to be constructed. Um, and it's the direct consequences of that yep. and that, that, that is the scope of the um, jurisdiction as opposed to any issues, for example, in relation to the physical construction of the road, which is yep. pursuant to the planning permission and has already been um, decided upon, subject to reserve matters and conditions and various additional bits, and there's other statutory regulatory control. So in, in, in the light of that, um, could I ask you, are there passages under your 6F adverse impact on the setting of the Royal Military Canal, which you would wish, or you no longer would wish to... Um, have your ev have give evidence about and, and don't in fact rely upon. Yeah, I think based on what I've uh, what I now understand, I'm happy Good. to uh, remove. To, 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 sorry, I apologise. <laughs> okay. I'm happy to remove section six F. Um, I'm be I better understand the nuance towards the transfer of circa four and a half thousand vehicles on the new road. My section on adverse impact on setting of the RMC. I'm, I'm happy to remove that element of text, the whole of it. I maintain there will be an adverse impact on the setting, but I will remove this text. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, now, Mr Wickenden, um, 
in relation to um, a paragraph, and we've heard some comments about this, your issue concerning the facade, yeah. um, you say, I do not think consideration has been given to the creation of potential fa facade effects between highway noise created on the new road being cast towards existing residents. The noise of the new road, comma, together with the facade effect may require acoustic barriers. Um, what, could you just explain to the inspector what your evidence and your position is? That was under your heading of 8H, noise yeah. and air pollution. I will take the same stance on 8H as I am on 6F, and I'll remove that text. I would like to maintain there will be an effect of noise and air pollution by putting uh, 4,500 vehicles on a road close to the uh, canal, but I'll remove my text. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification, um, Mr. Wickenden. Now, um, if you could read from your summary, beginning in my proof of evidence, please. Okay. Okay. In my proof of evidence, I offer my opinion relating to highway matters and the merits test for the section 247 stopping up order and diversion proposed. From a highway's perspective, my concerns are in the following areas. Loss of visual and seafront amenity, the loss of parking and disabled and elderly access, the effect on the Royal Military Canal, ecological highway aspects, traffic, highway alignment and safety. They're separate points. Thank in you. Some, oh, go on. No, no. no. Okay. So I apologise. Uh, no, no. No. Shall I go on? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. please. In summary, and in my professional opinion, the stopping up of the existing highway and its proposed realignment would result in a number of harms which I consider ought to lead the Secretary of State to not confirm this order. OK, so that's your overall um, evidential position in, 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 in writing, um, and, you, and orally, I assume, or is that... The, 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 so, um, if we look at each item individually, yep. um, you, as I say, you've used the Buckles themes, and you 3C, yep. loss of seafront parking. Yep. Um, could you read out your 3C, please? Yeah, I, I, although I say that was gone at some length with Mr Fitch's yes, uh, evidence and cross-examination. <coughs> yeah. In my opinion, any loss here directly impinges on direct seafront access and egress for all, but in particular, and I'm focusing here, on the elderly or disabled. Mm -hmm. Princess Parade is currently heavily used for parking, and whilst alternative parking has been offered in the development, it is some distance from that currently enjoyed. The report accepts this, but does not highlight the distance factor, which is crucial for these key user groups. The Disability, I put this, but the Disability Discrimination Act of 1995, I appreciate it's been superseded, recommends a maximum distance of 50 metres for several disability groups without rest, <clears throat> and a maximum gradient of 5%, ideally as slack as 2.5%, that's 1 in 40, so it's quite slack, and does the council's provision make such allowances? I consider this, if it's not founded, a demerit, and I see no adequate mitigation. I do appreciate that I have now seen a good deal more on, that, on this subject. Mm -hmm. I still feel the minimum distance matter has not been addressed. Thank you. Now, if we turn up Mr Fitch's appendix, appendices, there were two um, plans that Mr Fitch put in in his yes. written evidence, and there were quite a few questions about those plans. Um, If you have in front of you, bear with me one moment, there's two plans. So Appendix A is the existing parking arrangements, yes. and the Appendix B is the proposed parking arrangements. Yes. So if you have those two plans in front of you, um, um, Mr. Fitch, um, my my note of his evidence was his oral evidence certainly was that he accepted that if we gave one we looked at one particular example from the tram where the current tram stop is um, in the middle of the sort of proposed square section of the development and um, somebody accessing the beach at that point from the blue 
proposed parking bays on the new carriageway. You see, do you see that? I do, yes, I do. Yes. And Mr. Fitch accepted that the distance would be something in the order of 100 metres, and his evidence was that it would be people who were using the replacement parking would not have to go more than about 125 metres to yes. get to the beach. That was the broad thrust of it, following the. Um, the new provision, if I can put it like that. Um, where, does the, where does your opinion stand now in relation to having heard what Mr Fitch had to say in his evidence, having looked at his um, plans which identify the locations of the proposed replacement parking, can you assist the inspector with your, your opinion on the situation as yeah, so it currently I, stand. I think the provision is widespread in some places, particularly for the canal, I'd say a betterment. But in respect of Prince's Parade, I say it's not. Um, standards are there to be worked to, I accept at 100 and 125 metres. They are too standard. Mm -hmm. But I was looking at comfort, not maximum distances. Mm -hmm. So I was suggesting lower distances. I accept the standard quoted is now out of date, but it is one that is still accepted. So I was looking at circa 50 metres for certain groups. Mm -hmm. And they, they do look at rests. I do accept that through the uh, landscaping, there will be rest points. Take, but just take it quite slowly, because yep. the inspector has to make a note. This is all your oral evidence. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. <clears throat> so in, in terms of loss of seafront parking, your opinion on that, as matters currently stand, is what? I'd say that's a loss. Thank you. Um, and sorry, is that just for uh, access for the disabled, or is that for I'm, people I'm, in general? I'm picking that group really mm -hmm. uh, because I do accept some of the other parking is is a betterment, but not not for these areas. When you when you walk it, look at the distance. I do accept the wave wall there, but you'll have a similar situation. On, in the new arrangement. Thank you. Um, now, if we could look at 4D, loss of seafront highway visual amenity. Yep. Um, could you read your evidence in relation to that, please? <clears throat> yeah, this is in relation to the Buckles report, which you may yes. want in front of you, because I do draw direct reference to it there. OK. But, but, um, Sorry, can we have a CD, CD 66, I believe. Thank you. No, no. Um, Just bear with Yes, it is. It's CD 66. Grateful. Thank you. So, bear with me. You're ahead of me, Mr. Whittenden. Just turn it up. It's all right. It's okay. Um, yes, is that all right? Thank you. I thought I could call it up, but uh, I can't. Um, I think the programme officer will be no, able to okay. assist if technology doesn't... Um, Yes, do, uh, if anyone is struggling with the internet, please let me know, because I'm having problems with yeah, like, ah, two I, computers. I, I couldn't log in at all. <laughs> ah, thank okay. you. Right. Th thank you. Um, Mrs Williams. So I, I'm, I'm referring particularly to the summary in the Buckles report in section 7, mm -hmm. which starts bear, on, pa bear, on page... Bear with no, no worries. It starts on page 11. Yes. And in that document, they summarise the previous objections into a number of groups. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's a number of those groups that I've uh, addressed in my, in my proof. Yes. So response theme D, which is loss of highway visual amenity. Mm -hmm. This is where the Buckles report addresses the groupings of objections into that response theme. Mm -hmm. This is their grouping yeah, based, yes. on, based on the objections at the time. So in that yes. section, section D, mm -hmm. it makes a statement that it may cause a loss of visual amenity. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I suggest that is not the case. It will be a loss position. Mm -hmm. And in relation to specific clauses, and there are a number of clauses there. Mm -hmm. So I've gone at uh, 722, mm -hmm. 723, and 724, mm -hmm. and they're on page 14. Yes. And in that, on number two, I do not agree with the council with the council, sorry, mm -hmm. there's a re repetition there, when they say the new road improves visual amenity. Mm -hmm. In three, the Do wider promenade is noted. So, before you do, 
Can you explain that your reasoning process for yes, I, arriving I, at that view? Yeah, I, I was, I was in watching it. I do know the point about visual amenity and highway, and I know that it can be taken as not a right. But I wanted to just redress the theme mentioned in the Buckles report that they state there's no loss, and I'm, I'm afraid you really do need to walk the route to just to, to see the loss that's at play here. This is my opinion. See what you think. So I do not agree with the council when they Thank say you. the new road improves visual amenity, and I hold that one. Thank you. Um, and then you, uh, your two little Roman D. This yep. was again. There's been some evidence about this, and the the, the promenade, the existing promenade, as opposed to the wider promenade. Yeah. Um, what what can you re well read out what you say? If you yeah, I've, I've installed. I say the wider, the wider promenade facility is noted but believe the existing promenade of circa four to five metres mm. to be adequate and indeed I have concerns that the wider prom offered will encourage higher cycling speeds. Mm -hmm. um, and in relation to D little four? Yeah, again there's a statement made there and I believe that has no foundation when the existing privilege is there and the new arrangement will provide nothing like same amenity. I and that, that's the view you would get going down the local distributor road for all the... In, yeah, in my opinion, I've, I've, put in, I've put in a lot of roads and I know that uh, mm. highway amenity is not the strongest category, mm -hmm. but it's probably one of the most, uh, the one that gathers the greatest of empathy sometimes. And when, mm -hmm. you've, got a, when you've got a road like the existing Prince's Parade and you've, uh, you're replacing it through a, a diverted distributor through a housing area, I, I can't see that there's no loss there at all. Um, now, uh, just to re-emphasise the point, you, 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 your conclusion on that topic, you, you say you can't see there's no loss at all, just in terms of um, a harm or a, in the merit balance, what do you say? about that. Yeah, I consider that. I mean, the, the Buckles report does summarise each point by saying whether mm. they consider it a merit or a necessity. Yeah. I contend that what is a demerit and non-necessity. Yes. I, um, uh, just pausing there, of course, the Buckles report was the Council's statement of case yes. in May 2021. There's been an awful lot of evidence and things moving all the time um, it, in relation to the site and bits and pieces as it were. Um, has anything been said in evidence to affect your view in relation to that? No. Thank you. Um, 5e, reduced accessibility to the seafront for people with disabilities. Um, you, could you just read out your evidence on that? Yeah, that one's... Maybe slightly repetitive. repetitive. It, it, does, it does slightly overlap mm -hmm. with uh, 3C above. Yeah. Uh, but on this one I say disabled access to the RMC is noted, because th this is brought up. Mm -hmm. But have the council considered this as a betterment against the more popular promenade use, mm. as the existing RMC access tracks are, at times, not conducive to disabled use. I only mention disabled groups on this one. This is not the general use, because I think the facility is provided... Uh, in the new link in some areas for the RMC are better for parking. Again, I question disabled access there. Okay. Thank you. Um, now, you've dealt with your 6.F. Um, your heading 8H, noise yep. and air pollution, um, beginning with diverting vehicles, could you please read well, out that, your... That, that's the one I also removed, um, Mr Moyes. HH noise and pollution was the other one I was prepared to strike out. It was 6F and 8H. OK. Um, if we can turn to traffic impact on the highway network... Yep. Um, could you... Again, you will have heard what Mr Fitch... Um, had to say in evidence. You've heard what Mr Woodhead had to say in evidence about programme and timings of works, and there was this was picked up in some of the evidence from the ecology witness as well. 
Um, could you read out your 9i traffic impact to the highway network, please? Okay. The reports and addenda address the traffic impact in 2023. I've assumed that's the year of opening. I, I'm aware that's now been confirmed. But there appears to be no consideration of the uses in 10 or 20 years and effects on the local network. These factors are, in my opinion, critical as day of opening may be adequate but further growth will alter this balance without wider highway improvements. I am particularly concerned about dispersed traffic that would now choose not to go through a traffic calm corridor as is the national norm. Now, can you explain what you mean by that to the inspector? The inspector needs to understand yeah, I mean, this, your, your I, evidence. I, yes, I, I agree with Mr Fitch regarding the categorisation in terms of local distributor and, and I mm -hmm. accept that neither probably fit that criteria but you wouldn't normally put a through route like that. Um, it wouldn't be the norm to calm a road like that. And if you did calm a road like that, for a number of very good reasons, you would not expect the same traffic flow. Now, you can model um, different scenarios and loadings for dispersal. You know, a proportion uses the road, a proportion doesn't use the road. I just speculate that uh, that wasn't done in depth. But I did hear Mr. Fitch talk about there could be, it could be looked at future years, and that may have been addressed in the local plan. I don't know. Can I ask you, there was a criticism, I think that's how one would characterise it, of your suggestion that um, modelling into the future for the period you suggest, 10 or 20 years, um, was unnecessary because that's something which would be picked up in the local plan. That was the sort of thrust of... That, 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 can, that can be the case, but if you're promoting a scheme, you could have done five or ten mm. just to appease the element where you could see a scenario of an attractive corridor to a non-attractive corridor. Mm -hmm. I accept that in promoting it, they will say it's the most attractive corridor. I'm here to say other. So I, I would say that I would have looked at that dispersal element and I'd have looked at elements for dispersal along the 259. The mm. 259 in sections, whilst it used to be the trunk road, throttles down quite alarmingly, and it wouldn't take a lot to lock that up. Um, now, you can, as it were, one, it's possible, as we know, to extinguish a vehicular right-of-way um, under statutory authority, it's possible to divert a right of way, a public vehicular right of way, by transposition of that existing vehicular right of way onto a proposed new route or a proposed new road. And we've seen drawings of that road, yep. pictures of the existing situation, etc. Um, but you can't force people to uh, follow a particular no. route, can you? No. So what's your... And both Mr Fitch and Mr Woodhead maintained in their evidence that, no, no, not a worry, there will be no displacement. The four... I think it was accepted by Mr Fitch, the four and a half thousand vehicles that the modelling that has been done suggests that will be, or it is proposed will be required to go down this new route, if I can put it in those terms. Um, you can't force people to do that. What do you think is a possible scenario that could occur here, assuming the order is made. Well, it's easy to say that all the traffic will not be using the new road, but the proportion, um, Mr Moyes, is a difficult one to assess. Mm -hmm. That said, I'm not talking about small percentages. Mm -hmm. You get down to subtleties of choice here. Mm -hmm. And if people find it unattractive to drive down a traffic calm corridor with double parking or parking alongside the road, mm -hmm. I accept there's parking on the other road, I think you'll look at, you will see dispersal. This is just human nature. I don't like rat running. I don't like designing for rat running. 
but uh, that is what will happen. You cannot force people to use a road that they don't find attractive. Hmm. Um, in relation to the safety aspect, um, if you've got Mr. Fitch, his document, his um, the, 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 the proof of yes. evidence, his written work, um, he has a table in there, and you may you were watching it. I've streamed, I asked him some questions about this. The, ac the accident record of the existing Prince's Parade, do you recall that? It's I, at table 7.1, December 2015 to December 2020. Yes. And he reports, this is data that, um, it, it's been updated since the TA, um, but so you guys have a page number for that? Sorry, please. sir, big pardon. Th page 33 of 51. 33 and 34 of um, Mr. Fitch. Um, oh, 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 and we looked at these eight recorded um, accidents over this five-year period, and those which were had, had occurred in the part or on that part of Prince's Parade, which it is proposed to be stopped up, um, and it, in fact, is four, as opposed to the totality of eight. What's your view about the safety of Prince's Parade as it currently stands and the yeah, safety record? Yeah, I'd, I'd, certainly in developing schemes in the past, I would be, would have to look at accident records and the like, particularly in terms of promotion and uh, improvement. This is a low record. Uh, and I note the points made about that some of these are not in the section involved, but this is a low record not a high record. That said, I wouldn't want any accidents to happen on a highway. But uh, I'm, I, I don't believe that uh, we're removing one risk and putting it, you know, we're putting it on the, onto the other road and the like. So this is a, this is a low record. Thank you. Um, I asked a similar question to Mr. Fitch that's asked at you um, as well. Um, yeah, is, is there... Um, how do you come to that conclusion? Is it against comparators to other similar roads? Yeah, if you were, it, it's, I recall the other day they were talking about whether this, w this road would be taken from a 40 to a 30. It would normally be a trigger based on a number of factors. Uh, Mr. Fitch is quite right, sometimes it comes down to money. But if you do have a high preponderance of safety issues and accidents, and, and that, that, that level increases over a number of years, you would have done, you would have carried out measures on the road. All of these are unfortunate. As you say, some of these are to do with um, pedestrians. I wouldn't want any incidents, but this is a low record. Thank you. Um, now, you, you continue with um, In, in, in your professional opinion, the Secretary of State needs to be satisfied on the following matters, and, and then could you continue with um, your proof, your written proof, please? Where have you restarted oh, sorry, that? Sorry, I beg pardon. So we've just looked at your um, NI, traffic impact on the highway network, and in, in you say in your professional opinion, the Secretary of State needs to be satisfied yep. on, on the following matters. Yep. Could you carry on with your I can. written evidence there? Although please? I accept some were addressed the other day. I will okay. go through them. Well, yep. you can explain that as you go. Okay. It is unclear how the existing Sandgate Junction mm -hmm. uh, will perform to incorporate variable flows, mixed use, pedestrian and cycle safety, and access egress to the new road. Um, I've seen slightly more detail to this one now. So, so I'm less concerned, but I was still very concerned about that, the alignment and how that will integrate with the new road. Um, my next point, it is unclear Six. if any traffic signals are planned here. I wasn't clear on that. That has been confirmed by Mr. Fitch. There aren't any. I was so just to go back to that first mm. point, why are you still concerned? My concern there was when we've, when we've spoken about yeah. journey times, and that's the same reason I make the second point about signals, that anything that would uh, inhibit the flow, again, makes the road less attractive. And I'm just trying to 
to make a point that if journey times suffer further, this would be a less attractive road. The junction at the Sanger end by the garage is a very unconventional uh, arrangement. Um, again, it doesn't take a lot to lock it up, particularly if you were heading back towards Folkestone. Again, you might want to look at that when you have a wander around. It's not a pleasant junction, and the new road will depart just slightly, uh, what would that be, east of that point. Uh, I was concerned about signals because, again, it would impinge on journey time. I'm glad they're not being put in. So I said it was unclear with the new traffic road calming how our journey times assessed and how is redistribution to the old 259 be considered. We've just gone over that point. I think mm -hmm. a full design line traffic model created should have been, should have been created. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry about that repetition there. Okay. Again, that would have been along the 10 to 20 year period. Mr. Moyes has just asked me about that. I mean, 20 years, I will agree, is high for a road of this nature, mm. but 10 is not. But 10, 10 is not, and it wasn't done. Um, what's the, in your view, the industry norm, if there is such a thing? Mm. There's a lot of, uh, well, you, you, you can perhaps explain, and Inspector no doubt is familiar with some of the methods and modellings, visims and various bits and technical equipment, but, um, how, how difficult is it, would it have been to have done a 10-year modelling exercise? It's not that difficult to do. Um, it's, you need to look at the loadings, you need to look at the future. I think Mr Fitch has mentioned Tempro. You'd, mm -hmm. have, you'd have loaded the model and looked at the dispersal scenarios mm -hmm. in the local junctions, junctions like Twist Road, mm -hmm. the, the A259 and the like. Mm. I noted his points about being in capacity. There is capacity there. Mm. I just speculate in 10 years that may not be the case and again it seems like it's been modelled that everything will use the new road and I just speculate that that would not be the case mm. and it's it's modelled to 2023 yeah that's that's mm. that's not uncommon on year of opening and that was my assumption anyway but I would have loaded for a future scenario growth Um, as the council, the, the scheme envisaged the um, new local distributor road, the, the new road, um, those the assumptions were made in relation to, um, perhaps I'll put it a different way, is it surprising in your view that as the council scheme envisaged the new road, that there wasn't some future modelling done in relation to flows of traffic. It, it's it's it was, uh, it's it's why I asked the question, Mr. Mm. Moyes. It's um, I I listened with interest to what Mr. Fitch said. He's mm. not incorrect. It's just to state everything we'll use in the new road was the was the one that really bothered me. It's not the norm with a traffic calmed corridor. Mm. They just. It's, 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 a, it's the right setting to calm it for the residential use around it, and I'm not trying to stray here, but to calm that as a distributor and then say all oh, the traffic will use it, that, that one, that's a difficult thing to prove. Mm. Oh, I accept they'll say it's a difficult thing to disprove, but mm. I can assure you that, that, that in my experience, Diff people tend not to go out their way to drive through um, traffic calmed areas. Mm. And in, in, if one re just reflects on the chronology for a moment, so. The, the planning application, um, as we know, it's the council that's the applicant, um, put for, may, was made in 2017. The, the planning permission itself was, was granted um, in, in 2019, July. Um, so the transport assessment was, was back in 2017, and, and here we are in, now in 2021. Um, Does that chronology um, affect your thinking on what could have been done in relation to modelling? I think the scenario towards the year of opening of 2023 is a good starting point. I maintain the point I'd have gone further with the dispersal. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, 
Now, if you could continue with, from it is unclear how Sutcliffe, yeah. please. Yeah. It is unclear how, how our cyclists routed in the new arrangement, as separate routes are not clear in the highway corridor section shown. I do appreciate that there have been some amended plans now issued, so that's, that may have addressed that. Picking up on accidents, the accident record on the print, existing Princess Parade is low, but if all the current traffic flow is now directed through, but if all the traffic, current traffic is now directed through a residential area, I am doubtful that a low accident record can be maintained. The new alignment has a number of sharper radii, but I'm unclear on the design speed if the existing 40 mile an hour were maintained and presents a further safety concern. I, I note, uh, sir, that they're now 30, so that reduces my concern. Reduces your concern? Reduces. Reduces. Not removes. Reduces, not removes. Yes. Details are unclear and site on, on, and sites stopping and visibility display spaces need accommodating and formal design departures would need to be sought and agreed with KCC. I did hear that none are required, which is a good thing. I note formal vehicle control barriers, which are called VCB, are to be installed at the recommendation of the safety audit team, so they are clearly concerned regarding speed and the high level difference to the RMC. In such roads, these barriers would be a last resort addition and are not to be construed as a mitigation for substandard alignment. I will qualify that statement in that it's now 30 mile an hour. That's mm -hmm. a different subset. The radii would be different. The concern on speed would be different, sir. Yes. Yeah. And, of course, appreciating that the physical, that the planning permission exists to build the road yeah. and the physical way in which that is implemented is a matter of reserve matters conditions. Yes, I, 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 I was aware. Various yeah. agreements and lots of details and yeah. other regulatory codes. But um, <clears throat> the inspector, of course, is focusing upon the um, effect of the diversion in the sense of the yes. Yes. number of Understand. vehicles going down that road. Um, does anything, does your evidence, you've, you've made the qualification about the 30 miles an hour, knowing the narrowness of the focus of the jurisdiction, i.e. the use of that right by yes. the vehicles, does that cause you to um, express anything there slightly differently or wish to clarify it or is it, is it your evidence? No, it, it's, I, I'm probably going towards reserve matters there, but it was a concern in that if it were 40, I would be concerned about that type of alignment. Uh, it's a good thing that it's 30. I still have reservations. Thank you. Um, and you refer to the road safety audit. We, things have moved on yes. um, as we as have been spoken about. Um, in your paragraph before your conclusion, please. The last one. I see. I yes. see these aspects as. Yes, a, okay. I see these aspects as a further demerit, and completely refute the no traffic impact statement by Buckles. Okay. On what basis this statement can be made when so little detail is evident and a stated increase in traffic generation? is a certain and stated scenario. Okay. I say that because there is growth and I just cannot see our statement that no traffic impact would be made. Okay, thank you. And then your conclusions, please, Mr. Um, Wickenden. Okay. So just before we move oh, back, sorry, sorry. Um, so just above that paragraph, you mentioned uh, <coughs> the Design South East document and yes. high risk matters. So is that something you're still relying on? It's, it's, it's a document that, that I think is worth referencing. It's CD one one one, and there are there is a table in there where, you know, the the council did um, engage with Design South East regarding um, the scheme. But I don't want to stray too far. That's a, but that 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 report's worth worthy of note. They they don't recommend the road being there, but I don't want to be accused of straying here. Thank you, sir. 
Um, and then, in conclusion, in your conclusions, yeah. please, Mr. Wickender. Thank you very much. Okay. In my professional opinion, I see several highway-related matters that remain unresolved nor fully challenged, particularly against the retention of the existing highway alignment. The case for the stopping up and proposed diversion <coughs> is, in my opinion, flawed. To this end, I urge the Secretary of State to consider the manifold detriments of the new alignment, the new aligned, that should say alignment, mm -hmm. and consider the harm to outweigh the benefit, and so the order should not be confirmed. Thank you very much. And you've put your professional, yes. um, and it, it, professional body's expression of um, the evidence being um, your true and professional opinion there. Thank, thank you very much indeed, Mr Wickenden. Thank you, sir. That's you. the first witness on behalf of Save Prince's Parade. Thank you very much. And I have, I have no further questions, so I can turn over to Mr Honey. Thank you very much. Um, Mr Wickenden, since when have you been advising Save Prince's Parade? Only um, this year, Mr. Honey. So 2021? Yes. Roughly when? Month? Oh, gosh. Probably four or five months, sir. Okay. And who was it who arranged for you to appear at the inquiry? Uh, Save Princess Parade. A and um, who were you dealing with at Save Princess Parade? Uh, the, in the entirety of the body. I was approached, I'm a local. They knew I was a professional, so they asked my opinions. So who was it that was talking to you? A number of them. Uh, who? All of them. Well, can you give us the names of those that were... Why, um, is, that, why the, is that relevant, sir? Well, I get to ask the questions. OK. Who was it that was, as it were, arranging for you to appear at the inquiry? The two people in chief would have been Elaine Martin or Jean Baker. Thank you. Um, and are you a member of Save Princess Parade? No. Um, and you'd not been involved earlier than four or five months ago? No. OK, thank you. Um, you. You've told us you've been watching the inquiry. Had you watched the recording of the pre-inquiry meeting? No, I hadn't. And... Um, had you read the inspector's note of the pre-inquiry meeting that was published afterwards? I had. Okay. Um, and uh, before you came to write your proof, had you read the statement of case of Sage Princess Parade? Yes. Um, and the amended version of that? You have to refresh my memory, sir. It was the 4th of October, I think it was published, so very shortly before your proof would have been published. I'd have to look at the document, sir. Um, it is um, uh, one of those that's available, I think, under the... I imagine I would, I just can't recall it exactly. Yeah, Statement of Case heading um, on the website... Let's assume yes. Uh, well, don't want to be making any okay. assumptions. Is it a document I can look at, please? Um, I, I don't know whether or not a copy can be handed to you. Mr Moyes may have one. Um, so I, 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 yeah, I'd like to know exactly what this is as well. It's the amended statement of case. Right, is pardon, this uh, objection number one yeah, by certainly. one? Um, <coughs> it's... That one. Thank you. Thank you. It's being handed to Mr Wickenden. Thank you. Yeah. So, it, is, is so if you go to the final page... OK, I've got one. Okay. Okay. Not the picture, so I should... Yeah. Text, uh, text, so text is definitely the amended There shouldn't be a picture attached to the amended statement of case. OK, I've just been watching just what I've been just... Uh, no picture attached to the amended... Thank you. One. Yeah. I'm well, asking sorry, about the amended thing. So it says amended 4th of October 2021. Yeah, okay, good. Okay. So had you seen that before you issued your proof? There are a number of versions of proofs issued. On the 4th, I'll assume yes. I asked earlier for you not to make assumptions. Um, can you say whether you had seen that before you issued your proof of evidence? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, were you briefed on the scope of Save Princess Parade uh, and their case 
that you were giving evidence to support in terms of what should be covered in your proof, or did you decide what to cover in your proof for yourself? No, no. I was, I was told what, to, what we could and couldn't, couldn't address. Uh, and who was it that told you that? Again, that would be the Save Princes Parade uh, uh, group, but, but also Mr Moyes was engaged by that time. So Mr Moyes told you what you could and couldn't address before you finished your proof of evidence? Yes. And anyone, I mean, you mentioned earlier Elaine Martin, uh, Jean Baker, were they involved in telling you what you could and couldn't address in your proof? No, by that time we had Mr Moyes engaged. So it was just Mr Moyes? Yes. Only him? Yes. Thank you. Um, so you've amended, uh, withdrawn parts of your proof of evidence. I'm assuming, though, that you had mentioned in your proof everything that you thought was significant? Yes. Um, thank you. And I'm not going to cross-examine you about some issues. I'm going to cover it with other witnesses, uh, attempting, as it were, to identify the people who are most appropriate. So, for example, on parking, I'm going to deal with that with Mr Morgan, because he gives more evidence I in terms of that, lines, yeah. and the alignment of the road, and then, for example, on issues like wildlife ecology, tranquility, Royal Military Canal, yeah. deal with that with um, Martin Wybrow and Chris Farrell. So, just to be clear, we're not accepting your evidence on those topics, but to avoid repetition, I'm not going to ask you questions about that. Right. Okay. Um, so visual amenity, you appreciate, do you, that it's only a minority of Prince's Parade that's affected by the stopping up and diversion order? I do. Yeah, so there will be no change to the visual amenity from the order for 60% of Prince's Parade? For the existing length, yes. Um, when it's roughly 60% yes. that is not affected by the stopping up and diversion order? Yeah, I accept that. Um, and pedestrians and cyclists will be able to use the widened promenade as well as the new road, won't they? They will, although there was some contention by yourselves that cyclists wouldn't use the new road, which I would suggest not. Well, I, I, don't, I didn't say that in opening, otherwise I don't make contentions other than in opening and closing okay. submissions. Um, so your concern about visual amenity is for motor vehicles only, is that right? Yes. And those who are driving those motor vehicles ought to be concentrating on the road rather than enjoying the sea views. That's your opinion. Well, I'm asking you the question. Do you agree with it? No, I don't. So that drivers, your evidence is drivers should not be concentrating oh, on the road. Come on, that's being silly. Well, no, I put that, that's the question I put to you. Ask me again then. Okay. Drivers should be concentrating on the road when they're driving rather than enjoying the CV. Yes. Thank you. So the concern relates primarily to passengers, is that right? No. Why then does it not, when you've agreed, drivers should be um, concentrating on the road rather than enjoying the sea views, why then are they going to be affected? It's probably why amenity is a lower quality worth in highway alignment. I'm well aware of the categorisation of highway of visual amenity. My view remains that it is a loss. Yeah, I'm not saying that it is... Well, that's all I'm saying, really. So it is um, primarily, then, the impact will be on passengers. Can we agree that? No. Why is that not we'll, we'll the case, given what you've just said? One, we'll go around in circles on this one, sir. No, well, you ought to be asking, uh, answering the questions that I am asking. Otherwise, we will be here all day. I have put to you, in light of what you've accepted, that the concern must rate, relate primarily to passengers. No. And can you explain why? No. So you're refusing to explain why? No, I'm not. I think your question is obtuse. Well, I, you don't get the opportunity well, to discuss the questions. You get the I opportunity either to answer them or refuse, and you've just refused to my, answer my that My view question. is, if you drive that road as a driver, a driver, would you or would you not look out the window at the sea view? You, would you? You don't get to ask okay. me questions. All right. All right. Well, I'm, based, I'm, uh, I'm batting. I'm batting. Mr. Wilkinson, based on your initial response, um, yep. well, based on your response just now, you've said that the 
drivers should be concentrating, concentrating on the road. road. I agree. So the word should. Okay. So is there is there no distinguishment for you between passenger and driver appreciation of amenity? If it helps us move on, let's say it's for the passengers. Thank you. And some vehicles won't have passengers. No. Um, and there will be, do you accept, a distinction in terms of the extent to which the amenity matters between people who are simply driving from A to B to get through and people who may have chosen to go down that road? Yes, I agree with that. Um, and I think it is the case that you accept that a highway does not come with a right to I, a view. I do agree with that. You've called it a privilege, I yeah. think, in yeah. your proof. Yeah. Now, do you agree that the inspector needs to consider amenity for all users and in the round? I agree. Um, so it is not just about visual amenity. Yeah. Uh, and it is not just about people who are in motor vehicles? Not just. Yeah. Um, and when doing that, it's necessary for the inspector to take into consideration the improvements in visual amenity as far as pedestrians and cyclists are concerned from diverting the vehicles away from the seafront. But pedestrians and cyclists would still use the seafront, wouldn't they? Yes, but the vehicles wouldn't be there. And that's what I'm saying. It would be okay. better okay. for them in amenity terms. You accept that, I think. Yes. And the inspector would need to take that into account as okay. part of okay. considering it in the round, yes? You're not, I think, but please do explain, you're not suggesting that the inspector should prioritise the views of car passengers or car drivers or motorcyclists over other users no. of Princess Parade. No. Um, and you appreciate that the design of the new widen promenade will include a four metre wide cycle path as well as the six metre pedestrian element to it, yeah? Yeah, I wasn't aware of the segregation until the other day. So you hadn't seen the, um, the planning design and access statement? No, I wasn't aware that you were segregating, but it was expected, to be honest. So my question was, you hadn't seen the planning design and access statement before preparing your proof of evidence? I hadn't appreciated that you were se segregating that bit. I must have missed that bit. So had you seen the planning design and I access statement? I believe I did, yeah. I believe I looked at it, yeah. But you hadn't spotted that part? Not, no, right? not that. I, wasn't, I must admit, perhaps I wasn't looking for that at the time. Okay. I figured that you would be doing so, and it's a detail matter. It's what I would expect on somewhere like that. Um... But, but that was, um, okay, so what we're talking about here is an order that diverts the traffic from Prince's Parade to the new road, yes? Yes. So uh, we are talking about the diversion of traffic that exists both currently and in the future. Yes. Um, if there is an impact um, from diverting the traffic further north, um, that is an impact that will be removed from the seafront. Yes. Um, it is also the case, isn't it, that not all traffic which will be using the new road will be diverted from Princess Parade. Could you ask that again, please? OK. Um, so let, let me try it this way. Some of the, the traffic that's going to be using the new road arises because of the new development. Yes. So not all the traffic that's going to be using the new road will be diverted from Princess Parade. Yes, yeah, so I tried to stay on just the new tra the traffic that is going on the new road. Yeah. I so tried to stay off the development. Um, but the, the the diverted traffic, the experience of it will be on top of the development yes, traffic on the agree. new road, yeah. and that development traffic is going to be making. Um, noise and making emissions to air yes. as well as the diverted traffic. Yes. Okay. Um, 
And do you accept our evidence that the proportion of the development traffic would be about a quarter to a third of that on the new road, depending on the time of day? In terms of the way you've dispersed it, I think that's about right, yeah. Um, and that traffic impact, the quarter to a third, is the consequence of the development and not the order? Yes. Um, and that only exists because of the development? Yes. Thank you. Um, in your um, scenario where you think that there will be dispersion of traffic in the future away from the new road, yes. the proportion of development traffic um, fraction would be higher. Of development traffic? Yes. Again, you'll have to explain that to me. Uh, the, uh, we, our case in a nutshell, as I think you've explained, is that um, all of the traffic that uses the existing Princess Parade is going to use the new road. You say, yes. Yeah. Your position is that some of that will divert onto the A259. Yes. If that is right, the proportion of the, new, the, the traffic on the new road that is the development traffic will be higher than the quarter and the balance, third. The balance would change, yes. Yeah, yes. and it will be higher. Yes. Thank you. Um, now, just so I can understand your position, you are not now giving evidence in relation to noise, is that right? No. Um, I will pick that up then um, with another witness. Um, question, slightly different point, in relation to KCC, given your experience. Um, in your professional experience of highways development, is it the case that all new highways in Kent are constructed by Kent County Council? No. Um, Kent County Council um, were consulted on the planning application for the development here. I saw that, yeah. Yeah, and they will be consulted on the discharge of conditions that are relevant to highways. Yep. Okay. They, um, they can build the road. It's most unlikely you'd be a developer, but they would do a technical audit. That's the norm, I would expect. And just so I understand, that, that is in relation to them taking it on as highway authority. If it's going to be adopted, that would have to be the case. Yeah, so yeah. that's in addition um, to, as it were, the planning Process. Yeah, that would be over and above. They would do a section 278 or a 38 along those lines for adopting the highways. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, and it's obvious uh, as part of that that they're not going to be uh, approving or uh, adopting a, a road that has a de deficient design, in their opinion. They shouldn't do, no. Um, uh, to, so can, I, can I qualify? There's design, the road, and there's design <laughs> as to what's on the road. What are you asking? Well, th th they are going to be taking it over as a highway maintainable at public expense. Yeah. I think we've just agreed oh, that. Yes, yes. Um, it, on that basis, they would not approve a, a road design that was deficient. Um, and they would also check construction as well, is that right? Uh, very much so on that side, yeah. Um, uh, it's the case, isn't it, that as far as this process for the stopping up order is concerned, KCC have not raised any concerns about the stopping up or diversion order? They have concerns, but not about the stopping up. So they, they've not raised any concerns in relation to this stopping up and diversion no, order no. process? No. Um, and in relation to... Um, the planning application, their position was no objection at the end of the process. There are reserve matters, but they have no objection. Yeah. And the reserve matters applications have not been made. No, I yet. noticed. Yeah. Um, so, your Proof, it may help just to get a copy of that. Page four. Um, 
It's roughly in the middle of the page. If you find the heading conclusion and go up two paragraphs, you say, I see these aspects. Do you, find, do you have that paragraph? I have it, yes. Page four. Page four of your proof. I, it starts with I see. I see. It's paragraph roughly in the middle. It's, if we're counting down, six blocks of text down on page four. I can't find it. It's two paragraphs above the conclusion subheading. Oh, right at the end. You might have it printed out differently. Uh, yes, right at the end. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. So do you see the paragraph that begins, I see these aspects? Yes. And then in the final sentence, you talk about an increase in traffic generation. Do you mean there due to the development? I do. I do mean that the network would take, ultimately, you make the same point yourself, ultimately the network would receive more traffic. That is a fact. Yeah. So as far as the stopping up and diversion order is concerned, though, that won't create traffic? No. Um, then, I suppose, leading up to that point, um, w you've set out a, a series of... Um, queries, matters that you were unclear about. We've gone through some of those already, and I'll try to avoid picking up um, those um, where we've clarified matters. You were, at the time of writing the proof, unclear on the design speed and whether it was going to be yes, 40 yeah, miles that's an a, hour. Yes, that's a significant change. Um, and can I just check, as it were, what you had considered when writing your proof. Um, before you wrote your proof, had you um, reviewed the transport assessment? As much as I can, there's modelling in there that is not in my gift to analyse. Um, because that says it's going to be 30 miles an hour. Did, yep. you, did you see that? I didn't, I did, which, is, which is why I raised the element about it maintaining 40. But I have seen, subsequently seen, other references, so this is my mistake. Okay. Uh, had, you, had you looked at the environmental statement main report before yeah. writing your And you're going to tell me that said 30 miles an hour? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that said 30 miles an hour. So you didn't see that? I didn't, I didn't, which is, again, poor. Had you um, reviewed before writing your proof the stage one road safety assessment of the designer's response to it? I'd seen the designer's response. I hadn't seen the main audit. I'd seen... There's some, some of the documents were not easy to access, I have to say. I'm not making any excuses. No, well, that, that response appended to it mm. the original Stage yeah. 1 road safety audit. So if you'd seen the latter, you would have... If you'd seen the response, mm. you would have seen... I saw the summary. I, I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Um, and you didn't see the reference in there to no. the 30-mile-an-hour no. limit. It's expected, and uh, I have to say that's why I've rescinded a number of the points, because if it's... If it's not 40, it's 30, it's a lot. It's a better scenario. Um, uh, and did you, did you look at the officer's report to the planning committee on the application before writing your proof of evidence? No. Um, so you hadn't seen that at all? It's there, but I haven't seen it. Um, uh, um, when you had these... Um, list of matters that you were unclear about when coming to write your proof. Um, did you attempt to contact the project team, the highway engineer, um, in order to try to find out the answers? Which, what, Mr Fitch? No, the, high, the project team through the council that, that is carrying out uh, no, the I didn't. development. Um, and you've told us that you were liaising with Mr Moyes in the preparation of your Evidence? Did you suggest that, that any inquiries should be made through the inquiry process to try to find out the answers? Now, in raising it as I did, it was a point I was going to take out. I was expecting it to have changed. That's why I'm saying. So you wrote your evidence expecting the subject matter yes, of it I didn't, to change. If you see the way I've worded it, I haven't tried to set the hairs running there. If, it's, if it were 40, I've said that. If it were 40, it's not. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, P 
picking up then those issues, we've done the um, speed limit junction performance, the Princess Parade and A259 junction. No additional traffic through that eastern Sandgate End junction is going to be caused by the stopping up and diversion order. By the, just the stopping up traffic? The stopping up and diversion order. We're yeah. talking about the impacts of the order at this inquiry. And I'm putting to you the proposition that the order will not cause any additional traffic to be going through that junction. Yeah, I would agree with that, because I think, I think it'll go elsewhere. But in any event, even the traffic that continues to use the new road that has been diverted from Princess Parade will not be additional traffic being caused by the order. No. Um, and the order will not cause any change, for example, in the mix of traffic through that junction. Shouldn't do. Um, how much of the, the, the modelling um, in the transport assessment did you look at? I, mean, I don't want to ask you questions about things that's, that you've not looked at. But that's, a, that's a difficult one because it would have been, uh, no doubt, they'd have done a traffic model, which I haven't got access to. Okay. But I looked at the way the tables were and I could see the way the dispersal had gone and I could see they'd looked at the key junctions and the way they'd loaded it. It, all, it, has, it has been done. I have no issues with the way it was constructed. Um, so let's, I'll ask you some questions, and if it relates to things that you've not seen, then do say so. It's not not seen, I may not be able to interpret. Right, okay. Um, the, 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 the TA modelling included all the development traffic and all the diverted traffic, yes? Yes. Um, and the modelling at that junction showed a maximum three vehicle queue and an RFC of 0 0.76. Yeah. Uh, and that is an acceptable level of performance, yes? That is. That is extremely low, I have to say. Um, traffic signals, we've dealt with that. I think there's none planned. Um, there was a point um, where, where you had said in your proof, and I don't think this was covered in the examination in chief, in terms of additional clarification, but do forgive me if I've missed it, but you said it's unclear what form of traffic calming is proposed in the new yeah. highway it, it was more the detail of it, sir. I've, I've looked at the plans, I've looked at the BAM plans, CD 88, 89, 90. It's clear, I just wasn't sure what form it would take, the final form, that's all. I accept that's a reserved matter. You've got speed tables, you've removed the chicanes, you've introduced 30. These were concerns I had regarding how you're going to attenuate speed. And they're, they're concerned, those ones that you mentioned are concerns that have been removed now. Yes. Um, and you told us that you'd also seen the response to the designer's response to the road safety. That one I had, yes. Yeah, and they, they, they talk about the same, they're looking for details, but, that, but not at this stage, of course. Um, the cyclist routing point, you say it's unclear how cyclists are routed. We established earlier they could use the four metre wide cycle path on the new promenade if they're going from A to B. I would expect that, yep. Um, they could also, if they wanted to, use the new road. It's just it was stated that they wouldn't. That I was just surprised because they, they, they could use the new road, they could use the amenity of the canal, they can use the prom. I'm just picking out what was written down. I was surprised. Well, if, you, if you're going from A to B... There's a whole panoply of routes you could take there. Yeah. If you're going from A to B along the Princess Parade route as it exists at the moment, um, and you were a cyclist, if you were to continue straight on, you'd have the benefit of a segregated four metre wide cycle path and a straight line from A to B. Yep. Yep. If you were going through from A to B and you were um, a cyclist, taking the new road would require a longer route, I think 39 odd metres, something like that, um, it's a more tortuous route. And it wouldn't have the segregated cycle path. Yeah. Yeah. But cyclists could use the new road. I agree. And they would know that if they did, there would be the reduced speed limit uh, compared to the road as it exists at the moment. 
Um, no, but they'd be on the prom, wouldn't they? So your view at the moment... They ride on the prom. And what proportion, in your experience, and I'm not asking for anything exact, of cyclists that are going along the front, to use a neutral term from A to B, would use the existing promenade rather than the road? Oh, dear me. Well, you've got the challenge at the moment there is you've got people using the towpaths as well at the bottom. So there's, there is a, a host of routes, and it depends if you want to go off-road and the like. I, no, I don't see too many cyclists use the road, the existing Princess Parade. They use the promenade because it's safer. That's the point you're making. Would they or could they use the new road? Of course they could. Again, I speculate, would they choose to? I'd say no, unless they were residents. Yeah, so those cyclists are in those circumstances, avoiding the vehicular traffic, but they're mixing with pedestrian traffic. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and I had, a, I had a concern about that as well. I do like the amenity prom that's proposed, but uh, greater amenity creates greater speed. I'm not just saying that for the, for the sake of it. Yeah, but if they are, if the cyclists are... If they say in their segregated route, yeah, and, and of course, people will have to cross that cycle lane from yeah, that, time that, to time. That's where I was coming from. Yeah, but they will have the opportunity to check if there's any cycles yeah. coming. It's, it's no more than there is at the moment. I find that the four to five metres at the moment self polices a little bit. People can disagree with me. That's just my opinion. Um, and there is also, we've got on the promenade... Um, a few benches, at least. Not as many as proposed in the new, but there there's, are... Mm, there's quite a few, and the wall is low enough to sit on. And there are... rubbish bins from time to time, some railings and that kind of thing on there. There's a few on the, on the wave wall. There's none on the splash wall, but yeah. So those are things as well, which in terms of um, mixing the pedestrian and cycle traffic would cause, you know, little bottlenecks. I mean, I'm not trying to overstate this, but that it's not a clear width all the way through, let's put it like what, that. What, you mean now? Yeah. No, it's not, no. no. It's, it's, it's hindered, but as I say, in a way, that polices the speed. Everyone says people cycle at city speed. You must have heard such daftness over the, over the years, but uh, it self polices at the moment. But the new amenity is a, is a, is a good thing. I'd just be worried about speed. Um, but not in the separated cycle lane. Segregated is better. Enforcing it is an extraordinary challenge, I can assure you. OK. Um, need for departures, we've agreed none. There's a point, and again, forgive me if I missed this during your examination in chief, there's a, a point you make... Um, on his page four of your proof is about three paragraphs up from the one that we struggled to find earlier, where you say it is unclear how the new road is to be supported. Yep. Is that an element that you um, accept relates to the construction, um, and should we strike that part through? I, I was only concerned about the element of support in the medium you use. It is to do with construction, but if it were an exposed medium in any way, I had a safety concern, that was all. And this goes back, does it not, to what we were talking about earlier with KCC, both through the planning conditions process yeah. and as yeah. highway it, authority. It's, it's me merely that if you were reinforcing the, the banks, which you will be, it's the medium in which you do it, that's all. Yeah, so this is, A, something that is construction. More reserved than... And B, KCC have got it, basically. Uh, they should do, yes. Yeah. Um... So just for the sake of clarity, is this something that we should put a line through in your proof as well, that two-line paragraph? No, I'm happy to leave it. But you accept it is accept, not relevant? I accept it's more construction-related. Well, not just more construction-related. We're talking about the construction of okay. the embankment. So you accept it's construction-related? I do. Um, but you're maintaining that element of your evidence?
I don't know. Mr. Moyes, what do you think? <laughs> I'm afraid in cross-examination you don't get no, no. the opportunity. Sorry, if you want, you know, Mr. Moyes can ask you in re-examination. Okay, let's go there then. Yeah. Um, I'm giving you a get-out-of-jail-free card for that one. <laughs> um, so, uh, visibility displays, I think, were also mentioned. We're at the top of page four on my copy of it, at least. Yep. Um, they were shown in the addendum yep. to the transport yep. assessment. I know I've seen them. It's just I was just making sure that they were adequate. It's it's a concern that you can show a splay, but um, maybe my colleague will pick it up. And uh, I know you have an ecologist, but it's very important to keep those splays clear. That means they're not planted. They're kept kept clean, and they're a maintenance issue. I'm just concerned that they're clear. The two radii around the sports centre are quite sharp. Uh, if it were 40, if, I would have been more than concerned. They're not. It's just an element where you need to maintain them. Uh, you could have, and I'm not going to be too dramatic, blind corner scenarios there if you don't maintain them. And it would be KCC, is the highway authority, that would be maintaining them? It would have to be, yes. Yeah, you you, you would have to build them to be sterile, but yeah. they'd have to maintain them. Yeah, and no issue has been raised by KCC in relation I know, I noticed that. to that. Um, now, another element of your proof where I just need to know whether or not you're maintaining it, and this is something that you were asked about, the ins uh, asked about by the inspector, um, was the reference to the Design Southeast yes. document. Yep. That's on the same page, I think a couple of paragraphs yes. down. Just so I can understand your position on that, you're, you're not withdrawing that part no. of your evidence. Um, uh, 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 were you aware, um, uh, uh, maybe you weren't, because you, I, I think you said that you hadn't watched the video of the pre-inquiry meeting, but you, were you aware that at the pre-inquiry meeting, the inspector said in terms that this inquiry could not reopen the issues that had been raised by the design panel? I wasn't aware of that. Um, and those people briefing you in terms of what to cover for your, um, in your proof of evidence, which I think you told us earlier was only Mr. Moyes, that wasn't drawn to your attention? Not specifically. Okay. Uh, well, n not no. at all, if you didn't know. No. Okay. Um, Thank you. So, um, the, the year of assessment then, um, the transport assessment uses 2023, that's clear. Um, you accept, I think, from your evidence, but just to be clear, that the new road is going to be built and the diversion is going to happen in phase one of the development. That's what it says. Yep. Um, so the, the diversion is planned to have happened by 2023. It looks feasible, yeah. Um, and in terms of the inspector asking the question of what difference the stopping up and diversion order um, is going to make, 2023 is the best single year that could have been chosen. As, as it stands, yeah, and based on some of the evidence I heard yesterday regarding durations, yeah. Yeah, and um, we need to remember, of course, that what we're talking about is a stopping up and diversion order yes. inquiry, not an inquiry into the development. Have you been involved in an inquiry like this before? Specifically on stopping up, I have addressed it, but not in isolation on stopping up. I've dealt with a number, but not, an, not on this nuance. So you have not come across before, for example, any comparable practice where you'd be able to say whether or not um, any modelling had been done at all for yes. any kind of inquiry. No, no, yes, yes. yes, of course I would. I'm talking about an inquiry just for stopping up. I've had where it's addressed CPO, SRO, land issues and that sort of thing, with stopping up as well. Stopping yeah. up is a normally intrinsic part. Where I've done bypasses and the like. You stop one, you build another. Yeah, so you're not able to say that, you know, as a matter of common practice, any traffic modelling should be done for an inquiry like this? Yes, it should be. Ah, for just the stopping up? Yeah. That's difficult. I don't know. Yeah, OK. That's Thank difficult. You. Um, I would, sorry, can I qualify that? I would expect it to, because you have to justify the road, if the road, 
the road. So if you're justifying the road, you would have to have a volume of traffic, and that begets a number of other factors in the build and the construction. You wouldn't be doing it otherwise. But, so you don't know if it's normal practice or not, but... I don't know, but I would expect it to be. I would want, I would want to make that clear, yes. Yeah, and we have it here. Yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. Yeah. yeah. I haven't said you haven't. No. Um, any traffic growth after 2023 is not going to be caused by the stopping up and diversion order? No. Um, if um, if there is further local traffic growth in the future, I think we can assume there, there will be. be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that won't be a consequence of the stopping up and diversion order, yeah? No, my contention is where the traffic goes, but yeah. Yeah, so if, that's, if something comes forward post-2023, this new arrangement of the new road with the diversion over it, if the order is made, will be part of the future baseline for anything yeah. post-2023. Yeah, you'd have to, that would, that would be part, Mr Fitch was correct, that should be part of the local plan. Um, so if a development comes along which causes a problem on top of the post-2023 baseline, yep. Yep. you would expect that development to be responsible for mitigating that problem. Yeah, there would need to be some amelioration somewhere along the line, yeah. Yeah, but it would be that development that was going to... The knock-on would be their responsibility. Yeah. Um, and as far as if you were putting in, um, let's say, rather than 2023, we'd, uh, which was five years, I think, on from the time the modelling was done, if it had been 10 or 20 years rather than five years, um, there would be additional um, traffic growth during that period on the local road network, but it would not change what the stopping up and diversion order causes to happen. No. Again, I maintain it's where the traffic chooses to use. That's my only contention here. Okay. Can I just understand one nuance? Um, I understand the points that you're both making about future developments. Um, but with regard to natural growth in traffic from existing people driving more or yeah that, more that, that would have been factored into the model there would be a natural growth there's a, there's okay. a normal there's a series of factors that, are, that would have been established so there will be planned developments factored in local developments that you know of and the national growth scenarios would have been plugged in okay. I have no doubt they weren't they would have been plugged in okay thank you um, so I'm just conscious that we're at 11 o'clock. I'm not sure when would be an appropriate time to take a break. Uh, how much longer do you think you'll be in cross-examination? I, I would have said half an hour is my best guess. Okay, um, then possibly now would be a good time because we're an hour and a half in. If that feels okay for you in terms of where you are in terms of the Yeah, I'm, it, 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 I think it's a convenient enough mm -hmm. point, sir. Okay. okay. Um, thank you. Uh, I need to remind you, Mr. Wigginer, that you are um, under PERDA, so you can't talk to your team during this break. Okay. Thank you. Um, it's 11.02. Shall we return at 20 past 11? Is that okay? Okay. Thank you. The inquiry is adjourned and will resume at 20 past 11.
Okay, welcome back, everybody. Uh, the time is 11.20, and the inquiry is resumed. And I'll turn back to Mr Honey. Thank you very much. Um, Mr Wickington, I'm going to ask um, about your point in your proof of evidence. Perhaps we could have a look at it. It's on page three, about the middle of the page. Is, is that the text I've removed, sir? Uh, no, it's in section 9i, which is a section I think you can... Uh, yes, 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 yep. Um, and it's the sentence where you say, so it's the second block of text under that heading 9i. Do you say, I'm particularly concerned about dispersed traffic that would now choose to not to go through a traffic calm corridor is the national norm? Yes. Yeah. So uh, as, I, uh, as I read it from that, the basis for your view about traffic dispersal is the traffic carpool, is that right? It's a number of factors if you read my evidence as one, but that's one of them, yes. It's so what are the other factors? Well, the, the alignment of the road, the, the fact you've got to detour where it is, you, you make a point about visual amenity, I would say there are those things all act together to make the Prince's Parade a more attractive route. I'm saying there, they would choose not to go through a traffic calm corridor. That's I was picking up there on traffic impact. Okay, so uh, you've identified, I think, just to be clear, three things which would feed into re redistribution of traffic. Traffic calming, the alignment of the roads and the amenity, is that right? Yeah, amongst others, yeah. So what are the others? No, no, stay with those. So those three. Um, and... If you were to rank them in order of um, importance of contributing... The calming. So, uh, and um, that's the main factor then, is it? Yeah, but hand in hand with alignment, but uh, it'll be the calming more than anything. It comes down to the element of inconvenience to people, sir. Okay, so it's the element of inconvenience. Um, and... If that's right, calming on the existing Princess Parade would have much the same effect. That's an if, but yes, it would. And if you were to turn Princess Parade into a shared surface, yes, that would have a much greater, calming. much greater. Um, I don't think you mention. Um, shared surface in your proof of evidence. I, no. Is that because you think that is something that won't happen or is a non-starter or what's your view on that? So my personal opinion, I was aware that it was mooted before, I wouldn't have mooted it. So it's not, not even something that should be considered? I think it's a, I, 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 I think you should, I don't think I would go there. I, I, I installed the one in Ashford, and I don't think that's a different... That's a totally different scenario to where we're talking about. Yes. Um, so just to understand the, um, the traffic that you have in mind for dispersion, is that through traffic, traffic that's going, as it were, between Hyde and Sandgate? Yes. Um, and that traffic, which is, if I could use this phrase, liable to dispersion, yeah. currently chooses Princess Parade over the A259. As you're aware, yes. So um, your scenario for the future is that that traffic that currently chooses Princess Parade over the A259 would in future choose the A259 over the new road. To an extent. And um, to what extent? That's where it's difficult, you see. But I would, I would you, you've, you sort of, you've been trying to get a, or you were asking me about a percentage, I've been giving it some thought, but it's a very difficult one. Your, your colleague, Mr Fitch, would say that. But the norm for constructing a carriageway like that, you, you have to make it more attractive. My, my position is you've made it less attractive. So for any traffic that, that would in future reroute, yep. it would have to be a driver yes. who would currently choose Princess Parade over the A259, but who would in future Go the A259. choose the A259 over the new road. Yes. Yeah. And 
that is in circumstances where I think we agreed earlier that 60% of Prince's Parade is unchanged. Yeah, that's got nothing to do with the routing, but go on. Well, it is, because if you're going, if we're talking about traffic going between Hyde and Sandgate... You're talking about the proportion of disruption, if you will. Yeah, so what, when I refer to Prince's Parade... The whole. Because we've agreed that we're talking about traffic that goes from... Um, yeah. from Hythe to Sandgate, maybe on to yeah. it they'd have to use the whole length of Prince's Parade. Yes. And 60% of that would be unaffected by the stopping up and diversion. Well, I maintain that people would then choose not to use Prince's Parade. No, but it's fine if you say yes or no to my question and then give a qualification, but it's a lot quicker oh, right, if okay. you say yes or no. <laughs> so what we're talking about is um, rerouting from a length of road where 60% of it would be unchanged by the order. That is a fact. Yeah, thank you. Um, and essentially, as I understand your point, it is that, that drivers would have to think that the new road was worse than the A259 in the future. Less attractive. Less attractive. Less convenient? Yes. Um, but it is traffic that currently chooses to use Princess Parade rather than the A259. Yes. So there's lots of evidence from objectors about how bad the A259 is. Currently, the inspector will be able to read that. The inspector will also, won't he, be able to go out and experience and judge the conditions on the A259 for himself? Yeah. There are certain times of the day when it's particularly bad. School times aren't, aren't great around Seabrook School, and certainly the same sort of probably AM, PM peak around the Twist Road and, oh gosh, I'm trying to remember the road, parallel to the golf course. I'm afraid I can't recall off the top of my head. Okay. So the inspector will be able to see on the A259 the traffic lights at the roundabout there, yeah? Yep. And he will be able to judge whether he thinks a significant number of people would make the choice that we've just been talking about. Um, you've you've modelled it, and with respect to the inspector, he will make a quick judgment, but you will not do it in a snapshot, will you? But you will see the areas where it throttles down, yes. Um, so the inspector has got to report to the Secretary of State on the issues in the inquiry. Yes. One of those issues in the inquiry is your opinion, as you know, with your professional qualifications, that there will be dispersal of traffic. The inspector is going to have to make a judgment call on that yes. and write in his report something to inform the Secretary of State about it. Yep. Yes. Um, and he will have to, given how difficult it is, as you've explained, uh, make a judgment call about whether the comparison we've made is so much less convenient that a significant number of people will reroute in the way that you fear they might. Yes. Um, and when doing that, the inspector will be able to consider the current road design drawings, the BAM GA drawings that we've got in yep. the inquiry, yep. Yep. Um, and um, there is um, the evidence that we've got about the additional distance and journey times to consider as well, yes? Notice that, yes. Yep. Um, and there's no evidence from you in relation to uh, distance that differs from the distance that was measured by Mr. Fitch, and no evidence from you. No, the distances yeah. were, were okay. I mean, the fact it's calmed over a uncalmed road would affect journey times. Yeah, and the calming is to enforce the 30 mile an hour speed. Yes, limit. yes. But it will attenuate the speed down, and you've had that statement, I think, as well made by KCC. But that's all part of the mechanism to to try to establish or maintain a 30 mile an hour. That's part of your scheme. Yes. Um, so the inspector will have to consider the estimated journey times that Mr. Fitch has put forward. Yes. Um, uh, and um, he will also, the inspector, be able to consider and experience the conditions on Prince's Parade as they stand at the moment for himself. Yes. Um, and it is, as far as Prince's Parade is concerned, in one sense, out of season, because there's not seaside visitors. Yep. Um, but in terms of um, 
the peak issues that you raised earlier about the A259, it's during term time at the moment, for example. You'll pick, you'll pick those up. They're not seasonally affected. Well, I mean, in a sense... Well, you could, have, you could have tourist traffic, as you say. Yes. So it's out of season as far as tourist traffic yeah. is concerned, but not out of season as far as um, normal, the school traffic. Normal local traffic. Yeah. And they are effectively, to an extent, out of sync, aren't they? Because the holiday times are the opposite of school term times. Mm -hmm. They can be. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I appreciate that it depends on how warm it is at Easter yeah, and how warm yeah. it is in October, yeah, but it's, it's a been, general it's, proposition. Yeah, very much so. And it, it, is a, it is a popular section, and people do, if you live down here, you'll see how many people do drive down here. But at the moment, you won't see as much of that. Yeah, I'm not allowed to give evidence and tell you what my experience is. No, I know. Is, I know so I, know. I will <laughs> resist, or, and indeed also the shared surface in Ashford. Um, yeah, do resist that. Um, the current Prince's Parade, given the parking spaces that are there, provides, I think, five and a half metres for the carriageway. Is that That's, your understanding? It's what's left. Bearing in mind it's not always parked, but yes. Yes. Um, so I appreciate that there's variation with the use of parking. You say it's not always parked. Well, it's always parked up, is it? as you make, you make the same point yourself. Yes. Seasonally. Yeah. Uh, so the, the parking is essentially seasonal, is that right? Uh, no, but you said about how busy it was. No, well, I'm trying to ask you, sorry, when I oh, okay. put I'm a proposition to you, <coughs> it's I'm five, asking it's, you to agree or disagree. Or... It's five and a half metres wide and there's parking. Yeah. Um, so there's not always parking there. No. What is your experience of the pattern of parking? Oh, it's, that's, that's a difficult one, because when it's weather like this, you won't see too many down there, but on any day with sunshine, I would say, and obviously the installation of parking metres doesn't help the situation, but, yeah, it's fairly full. So at the, the a majority of length is impinged. It's a five-and-a-half-metre road, then, if that's where you're going. Um, and do you find, in your experience, that there is, as it were, clumps of parking yeah. when it's used? Yeah, it's, it's, it can be all the way, uh, but yes, it can be uh, clumped, as you put it. Uh, they do tend to frequent, uh, I think Mr Fitch picked up on this one, to some of the areas where the gaps in the wall are. I mean, I think there should be more gaps, but there we are. So it is concentrated at the gaps in the wall? Uh, it's where it clumps from, but it's very often all the way through. Yeah, now I'm trying to understand, so if it's parked all the way through, uh, and you've seen our parking survey. Yeah, it's very tidal, so I'm just, I'm just pointing it out. It's, it could be different one day to the next. Yeah, now I'm trying to understand what your experience of, um, and forgive me if it's not the right word, clumping. I traffic. quite like it. It's, it's a new one for me. And that tends to focus on the gaps in the seawall, is it, that right? It would radiate from that point, yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, and the inspector will be able, he's obviously going to be able to see where they are, and he will consider that in both parking terms, yep. but also the impact that would have on the use of the carriageway, if there was clumps of parking like that. So the new road, by comparison, is going to be 6.75 metres wide in terms of its carriageway. Yep, I noticed that. Um, and n no on-street parking because the parking bays are set off the road. They just, yeah. I, I call it on-street, but they're not on the running lane. That's, that's the point. Yes. Yeah. Um, and as I understand it from your proof, um, there's a concern that um, you have that you think there's a risk of cars speeding on the new road, notwithstanding calming. Do I say that? I'm asking the question because... I don't think I say that. OK, so what you say, and it's the, on my version at least, page four, second paragraph down, where you refer to the barriers... Oh, the barrier element. Only the barrier element, sir. Um, if you were running at 40, <coughs> and sometimes if you install a barrier, it would be a last resort amelioration. It would be a last resort mitigation. In that you're running at 30, um, I'm prepared to drop that element, as I've said. Okay. 
it's only it was only in that context. So the traffic calming in terms of maintaining the speeds you expect to be um, effective. I expect it to work. I expect it to reduce the average speed through there. I would expect it to be probably lower than 30. Depends how you straddle the islands. People work their way around these things. Yes, and indeed what th there will be different speeds at different parts of the road as you approach a table yep. and as you yep. um, go between yep. tables. It's yep. just that it's just I'm not against traffic calming, it's just the perceived inconvenience to certain users, that's all. As yeah. a through route. If you live there, you live there. Um, and th th those people who are using it as a through, through route to get from Hyde to Sandgate and on, um, a good proportion of those will live in the local area. Yes. Um, and they will have experience of the A259 and indeed they will have experience of the new road. Yes, yes. yeah they will. Um, thank you. Um, so at the moment on Prince's Parade, um, it, you will sometimes, drivers will sometimes need to slow or wait to allow vehicles to pass. For example, when there is um, badly parked cars on the side of the road or vans parked that stick out more than cars, for example. It's, yeah, traffic calming by stealth, but yes, that does happen. Yes, um, and you would also need to slow or wait, for example, if there were people getting in and out of um, parked cars with their doors open. Yep. Um, and also, drivers would have to slow or wait when um, somebody is executing a manoeuvre to parallel park into a space if they come along at the same time. Yes. Um, it is, uh, I think, based on what you said, not controversial, um, given that I think you called it traffic, traffic calming by stealth, that Prince's Parade, as it exists, will not always give you a clear run through. No. Um, that those um, issues will not exist, though, on the new road, will they? The constraint from parking would not would not narrow the road, as you say. It's a wider facility. You'd still have car doors opening, though I accept your spaces are quite wide for parking, which is a good thing. I still contend that that's not an ideal situation, particularly for people stepping out. But, yes, it's, you do provide a wider surface. But as far as those spaces are concerned, people would be able to step out from at least one side of the car yes. onto the pavement. Yes. Whereas the situation at the moment is... Um, you can't get out on the promenade side. The existing you, situation has challenges, for sure. Yeah, yeah. but you can't, or at least I can't, um, get out on the <laughs> promenade side. Um, yes, I agree. Yeah. Um, and the only interruptions to traffic flow, therefore, that would be experienced on the new road were those that, that, that have been designed in. Yeah. Um, and as far as you're aware, it's the case, isn't it, that Kent County Council has never suggested that there would be any diversion of traffic off the new road onto, for example, the A259. I haven't seen them state it, and, I'm not, and I've looked at everything they've done, but to be honest, they, they, they seem happy with what you've submitted, yes. Yeah, OK. Um, thank you. So I think then... Um, in terms of safety of the new road, the phrase that you used, and we're now on um, the fourth block of text on page four of your proof of evidence, um, you said there that safety matters appear to be at large. Well, they just weren't, they weren't all resolved, but I will say that things like the 40 to 30... Um, from my professional point, ameliorate a number of those measures. The fact that you are now putting in at 30, and I, I apologise for my omission there, yeah, that does help the situation. I still don't think it's an attractive route. I maintain that position. And um, you refer there to the council's own road safety audit. Yep. 
Now, I think you told us earlier that you hadn't seen that. No, there's, there's the element where the council did a safety audit, and I think you're referring to the... Um, you had an independent one. Yeah. And then you've had, you had the Kent one back. I've seen that one. And that they were maintaining the same points about... They maintain the same points, I think, as reserve matters regarding visibility, foot, foot sight stopping distances, that sort of thing, suggesting that you will do those things. They are the statements they made. So you don't here refer to the designer's response to the stage one no. road safety no. audit. No. Um, you told us earlier that you had seen it before you wrote your proof. Yeah, I, I, could have, I could have put that in, but I didn't pick up on the 30 mile an hour point you make, that's all. They, they have made statements and they've said, I, I can't quote it unless you want to look up the document, that they're satisfied at this stage, sir, and the element they would want to see is details, and you're doing that at the moment. Yeah. So just so I'm clear, um, you had seen the designer's response. I'd seen a statement from Kent. Uh, I think it's an email as opposed to a formal statement. I think there's uh, some of these CDs, there's emails from Tony Jensen regarding it. And I think they, again, park these as reserve matters. They're waiting details. And um, just to, to, to finish on this point, you told us earlier that you'd seen the designer's response to the road safety audit. I believe so. And um, that is not mentioned in your proof. No, OK. Um, why hadn't you mentioned it in your proof? I would just have to say that's an oversight. Oh, there was no intent meant in any way, sir. So when you, as you say, these safety matters appear to be at large, Yes. Refer to the road safety audit, but don't refer to the designer's response. Well, then I should have done. Okay. Um, and as far as the Kent County Council representations are concerned, what do you say they are um, wanting to see by way of detail that um, you mentioned a moment ago? Well, they are, they are going to seek final clarity of the section, which I think you're already working on, a standard road width, that is. They'd want to look at radii, they'd look at sight stopping distances, they'd look at visibility displays. I imagine all of those you will furnish. So is there anything, as far as the inspector is concerned, that, that is, as it were, outstanding, that the inspector needs to worry about? Not in that context, no. I maintain the accident record that has been stated as high is not high on the existing road, and I maintain that the new road is less attractive. Okay, well, I'm not going to go no, back no. over matters yep. th that we've already covered. Um, the designer's response to the road safety audit addressed all of the points that had been raised in the road safety audit, didn't it? Uh, yes, it, it awaited detail, so it made statements without detail. They, they always do at this stage. You're an outline stage, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, part of the road is within the detail, but I'm not going to have that debate with you. Um, and Kent County Council's comment on the designer's response to the road safety audit was that it was appropriate. That's all yeah? that. And Kent County Council have not raised any highway safety concerns themselves? No. Um, and that is an issue that they would have raised if they had any concerns about them? Yeah. Yeah. They, okay. they await details, as I've said. But the, the details that you um, talked about were, just so I'm absolutely clear, radii, vision, Visibility displays the width of the carriage. The standard, the standard fare that they would be after, yes. Yeah. So th they'd want to, they'd want a risk assessment from you at some stage on the barrier, things yes. like that. So that is, I'll come on to that in a moment. But there's n nothing else that relates to highway safety which is outstanding at the moment. No. And that, um, the, the the road safety audit did not itself recommend the installation of barriers on the road? No. Um, you, I, think, 
I think the RAP is mentioned in there. Yeah, it recommended yes, it did. Yeah. Uh, a road restraint risk assessment yeah. process yeah. rather than saying you need barriers. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, there's a, you carry out the process, you may or may not need a barrier. I, I accept that. Yeah, and the position of KCC as um, it stands in relation to that is to say that barriers may be required. Yes. And that is controlled by the planning conditions and um, will be subject to KCC approval. Yep. Um, thank you. As far as then the um, accident record of the existing road is concerned, um, I think that, as you repeat in your oral, oral evidence, you say the accident record is low. Yes, this For, is, over a five-year term. Um, but th that, what five-year period are you talking about there? Well, the one you've quoted. There's, it's quoted in the table, isn't it? The period. So that's Mr Fitch's proof of evidence. Is that what you're referring to? Oh, well, yes. Yeah. So th that was only information that was published after you published your proof of evidence because they came at the same day? Um, no, I've seen this before. I've definitely seen this before. That's not just come out. So Mr Fitch is table 7.1? I'm pretty sure I've seen that before. Quoted before. So where do you think you would have seen I, that? I can't recall. Sorry, sir. I'm pretty um, sure that's not the first time you've quoted an accident record. No, but what I'm talking about is the... Um, the, the days, or the years rather, of it, because um, this covers the period um, December 2015 to December 2020, yeah? Yep. Um, so for your note, we're looking at page 33 of Mr. Fitch's Yeah, I've got, proof. It, got it open here. Um, and if you look at Mr. Fitch's proof at 7.3.3, .3, he refers to the accident data in the TA, which was for the three years prior to December 2015. Yeah. So what he has done in his proof... He's brought it up to date. He's brought it up to date. Yeah. So where else had you seen that five-year period? Well, I thought I saw it in the TA, I have to say. Possibly not. No, well, the, the well, application... No, I, I, ex I accept what you're saying. I thought it was the same period, I have to say. OK. So there is, in total, then eight years of traffic data before this inquiry. Yes. Um, and um, when you wrote in your proof about the accident record, you had not uh, had this data from 2015 no, to no. 2020. When, when, when it was interrogated the other day, I was listening with interest regarding the point you made earlier about where, which section it was in. That was of interest to me. Well, I, I don't think I made a point about No, you didn't, but it was brought up in the... Uh, yeah, so um, you didn't have that five years worth of traffic. Yeah, probably not accident. that one. No, no, no. I, I, I apologise about quoting the date. I may, have, I may have just looked at the other one. No, no, you see, this is important because I need to be clear, okay. and indeed the inspector does, yes. and the Secretary of State in due course will need to be clear that when you expressed your opinion in your proof of evidence on the accident record on the existing Princess Parade is low, what accident record did you it have? It would have been the data in the TA. Okay. So that was the three years prior three years, to 2015. Um, and can we agree um, that um, when you're considering accident records, you're not just looking at the number of incidents? No, you know, you need to look, yeah, Mr. Fitch was right, you need to look at the severity, the incidents, the, the conditions, everything. And one, the, one, one really serious one could beget a number, number of other things. Yeah. yeah. And you look at the, the nature yes. of the accidents, because in a sense, you're trying to see what we should learn from them. Yes. Um, and we have, and I don't know whether you've still got that open, the Table 7.1 from Mr Fitch's The, the current one, yeah. Evidence. Um, we have there... Um, uh, 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 an example of, and this is the penultimate um, line in the table, a collision with an open car door, yes. yeah? Yep. Um, and we also have there two separate accidents, both 
involving vehicles colliding with two pedestrians at once. Yeah. 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 That one was that one was of note. Um, but there were two, I think, two where two pedestrians were hit at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the the, the last one on page yep. thirty three. And, and on the previous previous page. Uh, and then on page thirty, maybe we're doing the yeah, other way around. Yes. On page thirty four, it's the second one down yep. in that table. Um, and even for other accidents, there's repeated references to um, parked and parking cars being involved in the accidents. Yep. Yes, A contributing factor. Yes. Yeah, uh, and. Um, and indeed, re repeated references to pedestrians being hit in the carriageway. Yes. And those are all um, matters that the inspector is going to need to take into account. I agree. Um, and they are all factors which are going to be removed from the new road. You will be changing factors, yes. Yeah. So you would hope not to repeat this, wouldn't you? Yeah, so those factors will be, and we've gone through this already, but you're not going to have um, car doors opening into the carriageway to the same extent, if at all, on the new road. Not to the same extent. Um, you're going to have people exiting onto the um, pavement, um, and when there's pedestrian crossings, there's raised tables to control speed, and the design is set out to ensure that people will walk through routes from that parking to the military canal. Yes, it's, or more, to, it's, it's more designated, yes. Yeah, and, and people will use the walking routes, which will take them over those tables. Okay. Yeah, so all of those factors which we've just drawn attention to will not exist anymore with the new road. Agree. Yeah, and as far as the scale of the risk, we know there's going to be um, a reduction in the number of on-street parking places. It's going to go down to the 43. Yes. So even if you're right that there will be still a risk of a car door being opened into yep. a carriageway, the number of parking you've, spaces... You've, you've reduced the probability element of it. Yeah, yeah. OK. So thank you very much. Those are all the questions I have for you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yes, we turn now to re-examination, please. Thank you. So just two or three matters, if I may. Um, Mr. Fitch, just pick it. Oh, big pardon. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Wickenden. <laughs> I can make Mr. Fitch if you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just picking up on the um, traffic assessment document and the personal injury data at Appendix Seven, which I think your evidence was that's what you yes. had in mind. Um, I need access you, to quote exactly, but go on. Um, if you got appendix... I uh, don't. Ah, oh, but um, don't. could um, program officers it? assist? It's, it's, um, it? Thank you. It's CD uh, 18. 18, I think, yeah. It's quite a late, large it's a document. Significant appendix document. <laughs> 7 is the per personal injury data. Um, if you have that to hand. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Um, so you know section that. 7. Do you, do you need a yes, sticker right. to oh. would it assist? I don't know if you can. No. I'm only going to take you to a couple of pages, but Go on, if you need it. So <coughs> if you work your way through this lengthy document to Appendix 7, we've got personal injury accident data, um, and we've got a, a map from Kent County Council as the first item. Do you, have you got oh, your... Yeah. Oh, I've got to find it first. It's, yeah, sorry. It's, um, let me see, it's not paginated, no. unfortunately. Um, <coughs> Roughly how far through? It's about that far through the document. Okay. Yeah, about so, a third, a quarter to a third. Great for sir. This is all flows and counts. That's six. I've got appendix six. Bear with. Seven. Seven. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Surveys again. Nearly there, I think. Keep going. There we are. There's normally a map. There we are. That's, That's it. it. Yep. yep. You're, you're there. Yep. Um, yeah, this, this one picked up a wider area as well. I do recall it. It, it, it did, didn't yep. it? Yep. Yes. Um, so there, there are dots 
green dots for slight and a rectangle blue square even for yeah, serious. That's, that's for serious. Yeah. And unfortunately there is a symbol for fatal and that's the red triangle. Now if we look at the Prince's Parade um, road, you see it there yep. at the bottom and we've got the red line that effectively is the site, the right hand or bit, the yes. red line encompasses far more than the site. But you can see the site um, and you can see the footbridge that divides the golf course from the site. Yes. Yep. Yep. Now, if one looks past one's eye down the carriageway, going west towards the Hotel Imperial, um, can you see how many accidents? Yes, yeah. Yep. Uh, how many accidents? Well, there's three there, or four if you take the, uh, the break as well. Four. Yep. Well, if I'm looking at the same map yep. as you. Yep. Thank you. Now, that is the part of the carriageway that is, pre is going to remain yes. in situ, assuming yep. the stopping up order is made. There, there are only a couple in the other section. And there, there are a couple on the other section, the part... Well, there's a, there's a, a, a dot... Um, you can see a second dot, and I can actually only see one... No, there's, there's one right at the junction, but to be honest, that's outside the scheme, I would Correct. say. Correct. So there's one dot, in yeah. fact, within yeah. the proposed diverted part of Prince's Parade. The other one is probably an accident. I think it is an accident as they exited the car park there. Mm-hmm. So, four accidents in the part of the carriageway that is precluded from being stopped up and is going to remain. One accident in the part of the carriageway that is to be. Yeah. Um, is, and, and that. This is why I said low, you said. 17 report, and if one turns over the page to the data behind the diagram. One finds period 1st of January 2013 to 31st of December 2015, 17 reported crashes and injury. And then there's some details about where, where those crashes were. Um, it, it, and if one works one's way through, you get to number seven before you yeah. find... Because um, they're, they're outside the area, aren't they? Outside of Prince's Parade. It's a broader area. But when one's looking purely at Prince's Parade, one finds 7, 11, yeah. 12, 13 and 15. Um, so one finds 5 out of that survey, which um, records 17 crashes in three years, yeah. it's, it's 6 per annum in the surveyed area. And when one returns to the drawing, one sees that one accident was on the part of Prince's Parade that it is proposed to be stopped. Yeah, that, that one was just a click wing mirror as well. It's not severe, but uh, no. there are, obviously there are others along the same route. Mm. And that, you say, was what you were basing your yes, expression yeah. of opinion on, that it's... Yeah, it was interesting to see the later, the, you know, the, the more... The, the greater data, and, it, and then it was interrogated the other day. That was some of that was news to me. Mm -hmm. Well, when the, when the evidence came in, and and and, and to, to what extent does that later data, the updating that was done by Mr. Fitch, and the five-year period, um, to, to what extent does that cause it's, your view to? It's not a dissimilar pattern, uh, mm -hmm. sir, but um, I would still maintain having built a number of schemes. It's low. If I was contending some of the other areas shown here, that's mm. different that we're talking about. Sorry, so if you could tell sorry, me. Yeah. I, you I'd, be talking, I'd be talking differently, but if we're talking just about the section of Prince's Parade, mm. I maintain it's a low incident rate. Mm. Thank you. Now, you were asked a series of questions about the visual amenity of driving down... Prince's Parade as currently exists. Do you, do you recall I do, that? I do. Um, and there was a series of questions about whether um, the thrust of it was drivers should have their eyes on the road 
and yes. should not be enjoying the sea view at the same time. And that would be an unsafe practice. Um, assuming, and, we, and this idea was introduced earlier in the inquiry, let's assume a sunny day, an open top car, someone driving along Prince's Parade. Does such a driver, is such a driver capable, is it possible to have peripheral vision and enjoy a sea view and still drive safely in your view from time to time to enjoy the sea view? It was, it's along the lines that the point I was trying to make. Mm -hmm. I accept the questions I got earlier, but um, I accept your point as well. Well, that, um, that yes, you could enjoy it and still maintain a degree of safety. Thank you. Everyone does it, whether it's right or wrong. I'm not here to decry that. Thank you very much. Um, now, the get out of jail free card that my learned friend referred to, um, if you could just turn up your paragraph. I'm sorry, it's. Um, as regarding the supporting of the highway, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Um, now, let me put it to you in this way. You, you, your, your, your written evidence, which has not yet been um, disavowed, as it were, it is unclear how the new road is to be supported, in inverted commas, and protected given its proximity to the canal, but also ease of access to children, dogs, wildlife, etc. Um, bearing in mind, the, as we've had a lot of questions, um, to seek to clarify this issue, um, that the physical construction of the road, as you know, yes, is right. part yep. of yep. Um, the planning permission that exists. There might be a debate about whether part of it is within, you've heard the references to the way the plans work, the way the description works. That's a, a sort of side issue in a sense. Um, given that um, the, f the physical structure upon which this new route, um, public vehicle right of way will be exercised over um, is something that's governed by the planning permission and other regulatory and statutory regimes yes. um, would you like to consider whether in fact that is a concession or a, that evidence or in fact yeah, I, I is have, outside the jurisdiction I have reflected on that and I will remove that text Thank you very much. So that was all in re-examination of Mr Wickend, and thank you very much. I'm oh, sorry, sorry, I don't know if you had any questions. Uh, no, I've asked all my questions. Thank, thank you very you. much, Mr Wickenden. Thank Wickenden. you, Mr thank Wickenden. You. Um. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, if you'd like so, to call your next witness, Yes, certainly, please, sir. So, um, it's time to hear, for the inquiry to hear from Mr Roger Joyce. Um, just, Mr Wickenden just vacates the witness table. Um, thank you. Right, Mr Joyce, do, do step forward. Thank you very much. Just settle yourself there. Yes, can we just wipe down the table? Oh yes, yes, of course, it's a wipe down procedure. Settled there, Mr. Joyce. I'm ready when you are. Thank you very much, sir. My say, Princess Parade second witness, Mr. Roger Joyce. Um, Mr. Joyce, you are a you hold a um, diploma in architecture, Cantab, a diploma in conservation from the Architects Association. You are a member of the Royal Institute of British Architects. You are a member of the Institute of Historic Building Conservation, and you are. You hold a um, diploma in building conservation from the Architects Association uh, and you have been in practice since 1971. 
Is that is that um, correct? That's correct. And also, you've served on committees in relation to Diocese of Rochester in Canterbury, and you were an architect assessor for the Civic Trust Awards and have been since 2008. Is that correct? Correct. And you're interested in the civic society movement throughout your professional career? Yep. Yeah. Is yeah. that that's correct? That's right. Thank you very much. Now, um, Mr. Joyce, you um, are giving heritage um, evidence to the inquiry. Um, you've prepared a um, proof of evidence, um, and I think there's one or two points in your evidence where, having reflected on the nature and scope of the jurisdiction and the issues before the inspector, you would wish to qualify or disavow parts of your evidence. I think that's fair, is it? That's fair, yes. Yes. Could, could we just look at those paragraphs so that the inspector has the opportunity of um, making his own note on which bits are not being relied upon or where the difference in wording comes and um, that opportunity is presented to the, the applicant as well. Um, so, will we start at paragraph 10? Is that where you... That's the first one. Yep. yep. So, you say there, secondly, but even more importantly, the Secretary of State for Transport, in my opinion, to consider carefully the harm that the proposed realignment of Prince's Parade would do to the SAM and to the setting of the monument. Um, how, how do you wish to clarify what you mean by that? Well, so because we are aware we are focusing on the question of stopping up one road and diverting it to another site, uh, what I propose to say is that I consider the harm that the consequence of the proposed realignment okay. and the uh, passing of circa 4,500 4, vehicular movements along it. Thank you. The harm that that would do to the scheduled ancient monument. All right. <clears throat> so if you could start your evidence from your paragraph two, please read that for us first of all. Thank you. Well, the district takes great pride in its military connections and history, and I have strong interest in the story of the defence of our coast, especially during the Napoleonic era, mm -hmm. uh, the late 18th and early 19th century. We're very fortunate to have a distinctive collection of heritage assets from this period around the outfall of the Royal Military Canal at Seabrook. Do you want me to go on? Yes, please. Sorry. In, yes. In my proof of evidence, I intend to concentrate on the heritage aspect of the case and on the impact of the stopping up and diversion of the realigned road mm -hmm. on the setting of the canal, a scheduled ancient monument. Mm. And it's important Carry to on, understand. Yep. You want me to go on? Yes, please. It's Do. important to understand the nature of the monument, mm -hmm. why it was built, and the way it was intended to function. As the only military canal of its kind in the country, it's no exaggeration to describe it as unique. It originates from a time when sea battles raised in the Channel and when from Shorncliffe, the huge encampments of the French invasion force were clearly visible on the Boulogne Hills just 20 miles away. Mm -hmm. The fears of imminent invasion at their height work on the Royal Military Canal effectively a great defensive ditch began at Seabrook on the 30th of October 1804. Mm -hmm. The canal was built to defend the flat coastal area stretching from East Sussex to its outfall here in Seabrook. It's designed with a series of enfilade kinks, each intended to be manned by a cannon. In addition, the militia garrisoned at Shorncliffe, above the outfall, and at various redoubts and towers along the length of the canal, would be mobilised and dispatched along the military road. That's the road on the north side of the canal. Mm -hmm. Taking up their positions along the banks on the south side, I said, but actually it's the north side, which would act as their firing step. Sorry, just where was that correction? Yeah, there, the there is a correction there. Yeah. It's, the Should bank the is not on the side. south side, it's on the north mm -hmm. side. The firing step, yep. This would act as a firing step. Mm -hmm. If the enemy landed, the first defensive strategy would to pick them off in what's already been described by several witnesses as the killing fields. Mm -hmm. 
Now, this can be best appreciated at this particular site as the relationship between the canal and the waterline is at its narrowest. Until the site was filled with domestic and commercial waste, the relationship between the levels would have been even more obvious. Just, just pausing there. Um, to what extent does the fact that in the 1960s and 70s the council used the site for depositing refuse and waste um, which obviously has adjusted the levels um, and made the ground higher in contrast for example to the golf course um, to, 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 to what extent does that impact upon the way in which one considers the heritage aspect of the um, Royal Military Canal in your view? Well it cannot be denied that the original alignment and, and profile of the canal has been altered. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't say beyond all recognition, because if you didn't know differently, you would still look at that as the, the setting, the open view between the military road on the north side, the firing set which exists, and that clear vision right across to Prince's Parade and the beach. The only difference is that it's at a different level. Um, we'll return to the canal, but to keep it in, in your order, um, paragraph six, you, um, if you could read that. Shall please. I read on? Yes, please. So it's equally important, in my opinion, an opinion shared with many senior conservation specialists and in the opinion of others who have lodged objections, that Prince's Parade itself is an important piece of history and it merits being designated as a, as a non-designated heritage asset as defined in the NPPF and the Folkestone High District Local Plan. The parade was opened by the then Prince of Wales in 1881 and provided a straight and spectacular link between Seabrook and Hythe. A tram operated on this road until 1992, 1922, and the original seafront tram shelter remains at Sea Road Bridge to testify to this use. Um, we don't need to ask you about the needs test because that's accept accepted that um, the proposed should government I, Should I not engages. read that bit? So if you could carry on with your, from the point of view of the merits, please. All right. From the point of view of the merits of stopping up the road and providing an alternative alignment, in my opinion, there are a few. Mm -hmm. so, so let's if, explore what they are, if you could right. carry on, please. So firstly, by taking away the eponymous Prince's Parade, mm -hmm. its significance would be lost. It will no longer be possible to understand its original intent and the subsequent function as a tram route. There's also, a, I make reference to a depot and tramway stables in Hythe, in Red Lion Square. Together they tell a story that is celebrated in, among other places, the Sangate Society HQ, where pictures of this tram in operation can be seen, mm -hmm. a piece of local history. It would be wrong to rename the Esplanade as Prince's Parade, as it would not be that original carriageway and the shelter, at the time of writing this, would be lost in an unrelated and meaningless position somewhere along the proposed housing estate. I think we've heard subsequently that it's now going to be in a square mm. at the front. We can come back to that if you wish. Yes, detail. could you offer your professional view to the, opin um, to the, I beg pardon, to the inspector, now that we know um, from a witness called by the council um, yesterday that, in fact... The in current intention is to um, keep that tram um, in, in the central square area. You, you, you heard the evidence either in person or on the um, web stream thing. Yeah. I did, yes. I heard that evidence. Yeah. Yeah. So can you help the inspector with your view on, 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 on that? I can, sir, yes. Uh, I don't know when that plan was produced, but I haven't seen the detailed plans, the very small details on, that can be uh, accessed on the web. But mm. my understanding is there will be a square somewhere in the vicinity of the original tram shelter, and mm. that tram shelter will then be removed and recited mm. somewhere in that square. Mm. Um, do I need to go on about the fact that it's not related to the original route? Well, it... it, it 
if, if that's your opinion, that's what we're, we're after. It's yeah, your well, I, 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 yes, I have only one opportunity to say that, but I feel very strongly that if you're looking at a heritage asset, non-designated or not, the way to appreciate it is in its original position. To pick up bits of heritage and move them around um, as little ornaments amongst the development, to my mind, makes no sense whatsoever. Um, so it's, I think, really important that if we're going to talk about one of the reasons for not stopping up Prince's Parade as being the heritage reason for not doing so, then it's really important that it retains and remains as that straight line mm. that can be seen with the tram shelter in exactly the right place. Now, you heard evidence from um, the heritage witness the council called about the um, the fact that there was this strong visual linear relationship and that that wouldn't be lost completely. There'd be some, to some extent it would be maintained by the fact that the part of Prince's Parade will remain, roughly half, um, in situ uh, before it diverts and snakes its way around on its proposed course and then re-emerges. Can you help the inspector with your professional view on that issue? This is the mongrel point, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, I just think that, my professional opinion is that if you approach from the west, you have the original alignment, as has been stated, for about 60% of Prince's Parade. You will then be confronted with a bend in a road, a bit of planting, and from what we understand, a wave splash wall, which will be actually within that carriageway, therefore on the route of the tramway, and the buildings, I think, will also impinge upon that route as well. So the true physical alignment of that road will be confused at that point and it will not be as readable as it is now. Thank you. Now, m m moving on to um, the Royal Military Canal, um, if we can pick up with your um, paragraph 10, um, and you've given one point of clarification, um, if Perhaps the way to deal with this is if you read your paragraph 10 and then... With, make, with the uh, amendment. With, with your proposed clarification of your evidence. Please yeah. do. So, secondly, even more importantly, the Secretary of State for Transport ought, in my opinion, to carefully consider the harm that the consequence of this proposed realignment of Prince's Parade and the moving of around 4,500 vehicles per day onto it Mm -hmm. the harm that this will do to the scheduled ancient monument and to the setting of the monument. Mm -hmm. As set out in some length in my opening comments, at present it's possible to read the monument mm -hmm. and to appreciate its setting and therefore its function, mm -hmm. especially when viewed from high ground. This is where Sir John Moore, our hero, and those who conceive the ingenious set of fortifications, such as Rennie, I think was the engineer involved, would have been able to see the whole complex from his redoubt at Sean Cliff. And I've deliberately misspelt that because it's called Sean Cliff for a very good reason. Mm -hmm. The military canal can be appreciated from the north side walking along the military road with the backdrop of the glasses created from the spoil taken from the canal, the firing step and the, the line of musket fire and the protection for the troops moving along the landward side from enemy fire. No road was intended on the south side, so to site one there on artificially raised fill, and I may add to plant it as well, would confuse the historical authenticity of that monument's appreciation. Now, just pausing there, we know that the planning permission exists for the road um, and that there was some discussion about what historic England's view was or was not in relation to the proposition that the redevelopment of this site would involve diverting the road round the back of the 
proposed development and alongside the Royal Military Canal. Um, can you help the inspector with how you regard the state of play, if I can put it like that, on that debate that we had with the council's witness? In terms of historic England's view, mm -hmm. it's true to say that there were extensive pre-application uh, discussions going way back, I think, 2016. I can't remember where it all started. Um, probably got a long a copy of their long letter somewhere. 17, May 17. Mm -hmm. um, it's true that Historic England have been consulted about the development as a whole. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, there's no reason why they should have been asked to comment about the road itself as an entity, and that's what we're talking about now. We mustn't talk about the rest of the development, must we? Um, clearly, they were concerned about the effect of building on that site. And a consequence or a concomitant of building is the road. Therefore, if they're con expressing their concern about the effect on the setting of the development, it infers or implies it includes the road, in my view. And I, I do know that many alternative routes for the road were talked about during pre-application. Mm. Um, any, any one of which, I'm assured by my contact, uh, that um, any one of which would have caused harm. And of course what they're weighing up is the less than or no harm or less than substantial harm or substantial mm. harm or greater harm and all of that kind of thing. Mm. So they were talking about all of that kind of thing during their discussion. Okay. Mm. So. Um, now, you've got the plan there. We've had the latest um, drawing mm. yeah, of the proposed carriageway with the Royal Military Canal shown. It was put in yesterday, a very up-to-date drawing from one of the council's witnesses. This is the one that was incredibly difficult to read on the, yeah, the evidence, it was wasn't it? Very, very small until it's printed Indeed. out, unfortunately. But now, we've, now you've got it there, yeah. you can just um, consider it, it's the cr cross-sections through the, through the site. Um, now, remaining conscious of the fact that what one is considering is the four and a half thousand vehicles each and every day going up and down that road as we can see it there we've heard about some planting and the idea that it's a buffer the road is a buffer between the built development and the canal ha what's your professional opinion and evidence to the inspector um, on the idea of it those vehicles somewhere creating a buffer and Well, it depends on what you mean by a buffer to mm. what, because we're not allowed to mention the effect that the buildings will have on this setting mm. of the canal, are we? Um, but the fact, the fact that... Um, I don't know they've given us a horizontal document, a, a dimension on here they might have done. Um, the first four metres of this cross-section is the original towpath. Mm -hmm. There then would have been a glacis which has disappeared under the fill, and you've got about 14 metres or so back uh, to the southernmost uh, curve of the road. Mm -hmm. um, is that a buffer? Well, well you're filling... You're filling well, hmm? Sorry, it, perhaps I, it's no doubt my fault. Perhaps I'll seek to ask the question in a more precise way. Um, wh what is the consequence of the effect of four and a half thousand vehicles each and every day going along that road, as we can now see it, as proposed, on the setting of the Royal Military Canal at this particular end of it. I get your point, okay. If you're trying to appreciate 
the monument from the northern road, mm -hmm. the military road. At the moment, you have a gentle vegetated bank, which we admit shouldn't be there, so some harm has been caused mm -hmm. to the setting of the monument, historically. Mm -hmm. The fact that what you will be now witnessing will be a treed screen, which Martin Mackay, I think, said would come to nine metres high, but that would be shortened by sea action. If the trees are lucky, they might be a darn sight higher than that. So a huge bank of trees. And then you'll have cars, lorries, vans, possibly buses, coaches, I don't know, but all sorts of vehicles uh, travelling up and down, which will do nothing to help your appreciation of a scheduled ancient monument. It will totally confuse anyone looking at it, in my view. Thank you. And by the way, we haven't mentioned things like crash barriers. I know that's been mentioned, but you may have crash barriers there as well. Uh, can I go on or not? Um, shut up, I think. <laughs> no, let, let, let's not go into the physical elements that of the, the, of the makeup of the actual carriageway, please. Okay. Um, and if you can read your paragraph 12, please. Certainly. Setting. It's described in Historic England's Good Practice Guide Number 3, Appendix A. I was offered a precy by the former Chief Inspector of Monuments who did most of this negotiation with the then Shep Register Council, I have to say. He remained a friend. All, he all heritage assets have a setting irrespective of the form in which they survive and whether they are designated or not. The setting of a heritage asset and the asset's curtilage may not have the same extent. The extent and importance of setting is often expressed by reference to the visual relationship between the asset and the proposed development and associated visual or physical considerations. Although views of or from an asset will play an important part in the assessment of impacts on setting, the way in which we experience an asset and its setting is also influenced by other environmental factors such as noise, dust, smell and vibration from other land uses in the vicinity, and by our understanding of the historic relationship between places. As an example, buildings that are in close proximity are not, and are not visible from each other may have a historic or an aesthetic connection that amplifies the experience of the significance of each. Mm. Shall I go on? Um, yes, please. <laughs> the, the contribution that setting makes to the significance of the heritage asset does not depend on there being public rights of way or an ability to otherwise access or experience that setting. Mm. That contribution may vary over okay, time. Thank you. So, returning to the particular from that advice, um, in respect of the Royal Military Canal, we know there is a public right of way along the southern bank. Um, you've talked about the um, impact of the domestic and commercial waste um, in regard to the levels being made harmed, for want of a different word. Um, can you seek to draw the threads together and express your view on to what extent should the fact that there has already been some harm from the raising of the levels, um, to what extent does that change the analysis in your view in relation to this proposed realigned road with the four and up? The traffic going down this proposed rear line. No, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, so I haven't expressed it very well, but yeah, thank you. This could be described as less than substantial harm in the jargon of the MPPF and the guidance, um, which allows the harm to be outweighed by the public benefits of a proposal. Mm -hmm. um, less the substantial harm already caused by past activity 
doesn't necessarily mean that a further wrong doesn't make it right. Mm -hmm. The level of harm doesn't ha override the other MPPF advices set out above. Cumulative harm must enter the equation. And whether any harm can be minimised or avoided by the adoption of less harmful alternatives and deliver the same public benefits, mm. such as leaving the road where it is. Yeah, but we bear in mind that we're not putting forward an alternative proposed Indeed. development. Um, if you... Read on with your paragraph 14, please. Well, in my professional opinion, I consider that great harm will be done to the non-designated asset, asset, the mm -hmm. existing historical Prince's Parade, and to the Schedule Monument by altering their setting and their legibility. Now, a level of protection is afforded to the non-designated asset by the uh, legislation. Mm -hmm. But there is no greater protection afforded to a scheduled ancient monument short of designation as a World Heritage Site. Mm -hmm. And therefore, in this case, that great harm should be avoided. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you use quite a strong phrase um, in your paragraph 11. Um, if you just read out your paragraph 11 and see if you need to refine it a little bit. Uh, as a consequence of the proposed, as is redacted here, as a consequence of the proposed rerouting of circa four and a half thousand vehicles mm -hmm. onto the road, which I have acknowledged is needed to facilitate the building of a housing estate and a leisure centre. Well, the physical construction of the road. The physical construction, mm, yeah, the... is part of the planning consent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we acknowledge that. Mm. The appreciation of the setting of the monument would be severely compromised. In effect, the scheduled ancient money would become a meaningless ditch snaking around the back of the houses. Mm. Now, if we purely focus on the vehicles themselves, the diverted vehicles themselves, um, in the context of the setting of the scheduled ancient monument, is that phrase, does that phrase still apply in your opinion or is there a different way of expressing it? Or do you... I'm not entirely clear what you mean by that. Okay. Um, the, the setting of the monument would be severely compromised mm -hmm. by four and a half thousand vehicles passing up and down by it, if that's okay. what you mean. Well, it's... For the last sentence where you refer to the meaningless ditch. When I said it would become a meaningless ditch, yes. Um, There is no doubt that it, it has been described as, as the, being in a ravine. It's a pretty wide ravine, I have to say, and it's not very high. It's not exactly the Khyber Pass in military terms. Mm -hmm. um, the meaningless, in my opinion, is the removal of the legibility and the understanding of the monument. It's meaningless in that terms. You know, all you've got is, all you've got is um, a road a vehicular road on one side of it, a pedestrian road on the other side of it, and a bit of water in between, a canal in between. It's no longer legible as the fortification it was intended to be in the first place. And in, in terms of the significance of this particular end, the, the, fight, the, <laughs> the beginning, in a sense, of... Of, uh, of the actual um, Royal Military Canal, the 28-mile canal starts and begins here in Seabrook. Um, and we had some evidence about the number of elements, historic elements, that are actually sharply focused on this particular end. Um, to what extent does that affect the way in which you view the, the harm that these vehicles going along this new road would cause? Uh, 
as a cumulative group of monuments, uh, they are extraordinary. They are unique. It doesn't happen anywhere else. Um, and the effect of the vehicles passing along there would have the same difficult to express what I mean here, but it would have the same cumulative effect, whether it's uh, affecting the scheduled ancient monument of the Royal Military Canal, mm. or their cumulative meaning uh, as a group of monuments, all of which were associated with the same function of defence against Napoleon. Mm. Um, now, I don't know if I've answered the question. No, then. that's fine. Now, um, I'm sure if you haven't, it was my fault for not phrasing it correctly. Um, now, in relation to the, the, the Seabrook Road, one point that was made by the, one of the council's witnesses was, um, well, it's pretty noisy at that end anyway because it's quite close to Seabrook Road. Do you think that's a valid point? What weight would you give to that evidence? I think I give a lot of weight to it. I think I think uh, someone is going to talk about the tranquility, but it is a very quiet and peaceful place. Mm -hmm. And it cannot be denied that whatever you try and do to plant it or whatever else you do, there will be traffic noise. Uh, someone said that by reducing it to 30 miles an hour would make it less noisy than it is along Princess Parade. Um, I'm not an acoustician, but I think, I knew that was going to happen. I do apologise, sir, but I've got a false... Oh. What's name in here? Um, a, a bridge which is about to be replaced, and the damn thing fell out this morning. <laughs> so I shall now go piratical, if I may. Um, I won't try and push it back in again. Um, what was I saying? That's uh, complete, completely thrown me now. No, no, it, it, <laughs> the noise, yes, the yes. noise, thank you. If you're walking along Princess Parade at the moment, and, and the promenade, and the esplanade, as people have done for over 100 years, of course you're aware there's, a, there's traffic there, but you, you take it in your stride, literally, because you're walking along a well-known promenade, and there are cars. Um, the noise of those cars, however, as I say, I'm not an acoustician, but I know for a fact, look at the day we are today, it's dissipated by the openness of that, and the breeze and all the rest of it that goes on, and the fact you're hearing the sound of the see on the shingle beside you. you. I don't think you're particularly aware of the noise of traffic when you walk, and I walk along it a lot, have done for years. If you're walking along the military road on the north side of the canal, and someone has said it's now in a chasm, and I know we're not allowed to mention it, but there will be buildings that will be refer rever reverberating this noise, you cannot avoid the fact that the noise will be greater. I don't care if it's 30 miles an hour, therefore less acoustically. There will be more noise, in my opinion, I think. Does that answer it? Thank you very much. Um, can't smile now. <laughs> yes. Um, Your paragraph 15, please. I think there needs to be some... Um, it's a little bit of refinement on the way you express your evidence. If you could clarify that to the inspector, what you mean at paragraph 15, what your oral evidence is at paragraph 15. What I said in paragraph 15, sir, is that others will add that physical harm may also be done owing to the realigned highway and the circa four and a half thousand vehicle movements um, to the canal and from the disposal of surface water from dust, fumes and lighting. But I've concluded by saying I leave the inspector to take a view on those issues along with my stated heritage points. And, um, okay, thank you very much. Um, and then you've given your um, expression of professional opinion and then your final Concluding paragraph, please. The evidence I prepared, that one? The one after. Mm -hmm. the, the, the last paragraph, what your summary view is. That is 15, isn't it? Unless my thing's not printed properly. Okay, let me... There's something over the page as well. 
Oh, rats. Okay. Well, it, don't, don't, don't worry. I'll put... That hasn't printed properly. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about no, that. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> you've heard the opposing heritage case um, from the council witness. Yeah. Um, does that cause you to change your conclusion in relation to the harm which would be caused to the Royal Military Canal if this proposed stopping up and diversion order was made? No. In a nutshell, what can you characterise what the level of harm, in your view, that would manifest were the stopping up and diversion order to be made? Well, the legislation has various um, definitions of harm, does it not? It does. They're quite tortuous, but yeah. No, that's right. All right. Um, you know, this greater partial, more than harmful, and great harm. Mm. And I'm afraid I have to stick to my professional opinion yeah. that by placing this carriageway and the traffic that goes on it mm -hmm. so close to the ancient monument, you can cause no greater harm. It is the greatest harm that can be created, in my opinion. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, um, on that last point, you earlier on were talking about less than substantial harm. So how does that relate to the greatest harm possible? Sorry, could you repeat that, sir? Uh, earlier on, you were mentioning less than substantial <coughs> harm to uh, the heritage asset when we were talking about the infill, and then, on, and then also less than substantial harm in, in relation to the, the proposed traffic on top of that and how that should be where you get the public benefit, sticking it to the MPPF. Thank uh, you, thank you for that clarification. Just, just yes. now you said the greatest possible harm, which would be more than that. Correct, right. Uh, the less than substantial harm was a reference made to the infilling by the waste. That is the view taken by Historic England at the time, Okay. that it must be admitted that less than substantial, it could be claimed that less than substantial harm has been uh, created historically, but we're now going on to do another action, mm -hmm. which, in their opinion, and it shared, I share that opinion, will be great harm. Okay. Um, that's everything for me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Although, before I turn to Mr. Honey, just to, just in terms of how we deal with these uh, redactions to statements, because um, I'm making handwritten notes. Um, I'll turn to both of you. Um, would, would the best way either to be for revised statements to be uploaded as documents or for this to be dealt with in your submissions at the end? I think I'd like something definitive in writing to make sure there's no confusion as to what's definitely been redacted. Uh, but I'll just turn to both of you to see how you would like to deal with this. Yes. Um... Or you could just accept the, the notes that we take from, from the cross-examination, but um... I'll turn to you. So obviously we'll be guided by you um, and subject to what my learned friend says, if, if you think it would assist the inquiry that we actually do produce amended versions, um, that is a, is, is, is a piece of work that could be un undertaken and done um, reasonably quickly. Um, the alternative view is if you're content that you've been able to um, mark up the evidence that's been disavowed, for use of a different word, I think Mr Honey's no doubt done the, the same, um, then I think it's something that could just be simply picked up in closing submissions. I'm happy with it in closing, but I'll, I'll just check the, mm. the party. Yes, I think, sir, there's a difference perhaps between the approach that was taken by Mr. Wickenden, perhaps, which is simply to line mm. through complete sections. There can be no doubt about that. Um, Mr. Joyce was taking a different approach and just changing some words, but without actually changing the conclusions that then mm -hmm. follow from that. That brings with it, I think, more 
danger of misunderstanding. So what I would want, if there were amended versions to be produced, something that included the original text but struck through, and then added the new text, because it will be important, so in due course, not only in relation to procedural matters, but also the substance of the evidence, for you to be able to judge whether what has been said in that amended text actually stacks up when you read it with the rest. So I think that um, certainly, and we'll need to see perhaps what the other witnesses do, but it does seem to me there may be a difference in the approach to be taken between the two that we've had so far. Um, but if we can have an amended version which includes the original text struck through as well as any insertions, then I think that would be acceptable. Essentially a track change. Uh, if it can be done that way, I'm happy for it to be done in manuscript in terms of just <laughs> simply lining through and inserting. Um, but, but I think it's just important so that we have clarity about the words that have been inserted because it's not just striking through as well as leaving in in a single document so we can see what was originally said. So that I'm certain that we can arrange for that to be done. It may be that certain people don't use track change, mm -hmm. that sort of level of technology, and um, Ms Han has indicated that the manuscript is satisfactory. Um, we, we will um, seek for the avoidance of doubt and for clarity to have the new evidence as given okay. um, in written form. Okay. Uh, as I understand it, sir, the... Um video recording is being retained so that we'd be able to double check that the words inserted in manuscript mm -hmm. is precisely those that were spoken by Mr. Joyce, uh, because that, in a sense, we need to be sure that what we're getting in the manuscript amendment is exactly those words that he spoke orally. Okay. Um, if perhaps I could ask that that is conducted uh, as soon as possible, so that yes. if there are, there's, the inquiry is still open at the point that they come in so that we can discuss if there are any considerations that need to be. Of course. Well, mm -hmm. in terms of the, so in terms of the timing, yeah. I think we're still on course to mm -hmm. um, finish everything by Friday, all mm -hmm. the evidence, so we then have the half-term break. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of time before we come back on mm -hmm. the 3rd of November. Uh, uh, and so if you, I mean, for example, if Mr Moyes wanted to send them to me in advance, then I'd be able to just check, as it were, we're happy with them, and mm -hmm. then they can go to you as an agreed document, which that would be won't take very long, but mm -hmm. at least will not burden you with any debate about whether there's any need for any additional amendments. Okay, that would be, for, for my that would be that would be very helpful, thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, um, and also before I turn over to cross-examination, um, because I'm conscious of the time, um, would you, I suppose this to both witness and yourself, would you prefer to have lunch now and come back with cross-examination as one uh, period, or would you prefer to start now and then break during it? For my part, so I'm in your hands. Um, so, but, but, you know, we are only, what, 12 minutes away from when we were intending to break, and it would mm -hmm. require Mr Joyce to be in Perda. So really, so I'm entirely in your hands on that. Um, I think I, as you say, we're nearly there anyway. I think it makes sense to have lunch now, and then we can come back with just uh, your cross-examination of one block. Um, and as I say, it avoids the need for you to be in, in full Perda as well. Thank you. Uh, so if that's the case, it's 12.48 now. Um, so if we have lunch and then resume at, uh, is uh, at 1.40 or 1.45? One 1.45, one yeah. It's a, it's a nice weather, so why not? Yeah, yeah so my only slight hesitation was, hesitation was in relation to the timing of sandwiches. Oh, okay. Um, but hopefully lessons will have been learned about that from <laughs> yesterday. Uh, and, and, yes, and it's 1.45, so that, that will... They will be ready at worst by one, I would imagine, so that's still a chance to do it. <coughs> okay, thank you. The inquiry is adjourned and we'll resume at 1.45. Thank you, sir. I stay here.
Okay, if you could take your seats, please. We'll be starting again in a minute. Okay, the time is 1.45 and the inquiry is resumed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Mr Joyce. Um, Good afternoon. Uh, are you a member of Safe Prince's Parade? I am. Um, and since when have you been a member? Oh. It must be in excess of five years or so. I, I can't remember to be exactly. Okay, five, over five, five. years. Um, and what's your involvement been with Safe Princess Parade over that period of time? Attending meetings, um, discussing the issues, um, just a general attendance as a member. Uh, and who arranged for you to give evidence at this inquiry on behalf of Safe Princess Parade? That's a tricky one. Um, we were really involved all the way through, looking at the issues involved, and it kind of naturally emerge that I would be happy to help where I can and you know give assistance where I can. Uh, and who was it that you were liaising with from Safe Francis Parade about the inquiry process? I know where you're leading to and um, the members, the membership secretary is Elaine, I guess I was talking to Elaine, many others, many of them. There was no specific request. Um, uh, and who is on the Save Princess Parade committee? If I'm honest, I have no idea. I know one or two of them, but I don't know the composition of the committee as such. And who are the one or two that you do know? I know Elaine as membership secretary. Um, I don't know their posts. I believe that Jean might be. Um, Jim Martin various other names, but I just merged them all into, they're all residents at Seabrook concerned about Seabrook, uh, uh, Princess Parade. So is it fair to say that the only committee member that you're sure is a committee member is Elaine Martin? No, that wouldn't be accurate. So who else would you say you were sure or were committee members then? Uh, Jean, possibly. Jean, and, no, I shouldn't say possibly. Jean, Jim, uh, <coughs> various others. Excuse me. <coughs> but what, what I'm asking is who you're sure are committee members. You've told us that you're sure Elaine is a committee member. Um, are you sure that Jean Baker is a committee member? Yes. Um, and are you sure that Jim Martin is a committee member? Yes. So you are... No. You are sure, Mr Joyce, that Jim Martin is a committee member? No, I'm not sure. Um, you just said a moment ago that you were. It would be because I've had lots of dealing with, but um, I have no reason to know who exactly are the committee members at all. I well, no it's important, sorry. When I ask you if you're sure of something, yes. and you say you are sure, yes. please do not say you are sure if you are not sure. Okay? Because the, the reason for me asking if you are sure is so that the inspector can write down that you are sure of something. And this really matters of to course. the inquiry process. Um, were you present at the pre-inquiry meeting? I'm pretty sure I watched it on Zoom. Whether I was physically, I wasn't physically present, but I watched it. So you watched the video. Was it after the event or live? After the event. Um, and did you read the inspector's note of the pre-inquiry meeting? I did. Um, and you read that before you produced your proof of evidence. Yes. Um, before you, let's use the word, published your proof of evidence, had you seen the amended statement of case from Safe Princess Parade? Yes. Um, and that was the one dated the 4th of October. You're sure yes. about that? Um, and uh, had you seen um, the email that Mr Moy sent to the programme officer on the 4th of October before you published your proof? 
Can you tell me what the content of that email was? Because I had several emails, so I have no idea what, what the content is. Okay, well, it's on the inquiry website. Um, so I don't know whether you've probably not got access to no. that. Um, is there a CD number? It's not a core document, mm -hmm. so it was one of those that went in um, as... It's Objection 151, and on the website, under Statements of Case, it's the first Save Princes Parade document, which is the email from Clive Moyes, 4th of October at 1718, to the programme officer. So it's down as a Statement of Case, sir. Um, shall I just read out the relevant bit to please, you? Please, yes, please. Um, please. Uh, hopefully a copy will be coming your way. But this refers to the amendments made to the statement of case, OK? And it says the aim of the amendments is to make it clear that SPP does not seek to invite the Secretary of State nor his reporting inspector as part of his Section 247 and 252 jurisdiction, one, to reconsider whether or not to... I assume, whether or not planning permission should have been granted, two, to consider alternative development proposals, three, to consider the engineering or construction aspects of the proposed Realign Princess Parade. So it looks like a copy is coming to you. Is my name on the copy list? No. Then I wouldn't have received it. So you hadn't been sent that by the time your proof was published? No, I don't recall seeing this one. But you were, you had seen what was attached to that email by the time your proof was published, which was the amended statement of case. I've seen the amended statement of case, but not attached to this email. I've seen it in some other context. No, but you had seen, but I asked you if you'd seen the amended Save Princess Parade statement of case before you published your proof of evidence, and you said yes. Okay. Yeah. That was issued on the 4th of October. This one, yeah. That the amended statement of case was issued on the 4th of October. Right. H how did you get to see that without seeing also the covering email? I can't answer that question, but I've, I've seen the amended statement of case. I'm sure I have. So you're sure, and you're sure you saw that, as you told us earlier, before you published your proof of evidence? I think, I think you've got me slightly confused on dates here, because uh, my proof of evidence, I don't know when I first wrote it and circulated it for comment. Um, the likelihood it is it was before this, because we were asked to get everything ready, I think, for the 5th of October, is that right? Is that the date by which we should... Well, certainly the date that you have handwritten on to the proof was the 5th of October, mm -hmm. and that was the date they were due in. Yeah, and I would have been refining it and drafting it and writing it and all that sort of thing long before that, I yeah, guess. That's I wouldn't have done it the night before, would I? No, that's why I was using the word published. I see. Your proof of evidence. Right. You told us earlier that you were sure that you had seen the amended statement of case of the 4th of October before you published your proof of evidence, which you dated in manuscript the 5th of October. Yes, yes. Is that still your evidence? I don't quite know where your questioning is going, but it seems from the series of dates there that that would appear logical, that I would have seen it beforehand, yes. Are you sure that was what you said earlier, that you were well, sure? Well, you can say, see from my answer that I'm not exactly sure, because the dates are all jumbled in, in my mind as to what happened in what sequence, exactly what happened. Yeah, you see, day. I was trying to, to be as clear as possible about this. I asked you mm. earlier if you were sure about it, you said ne yeah. yes, but now you're saying you're not sure. I think it has to be recorded that I am not sure, yes. And um, do you recall ever seeing that email of the 4th of October, which is now in front of you. I've never seen it. So you've never seen that. OK. Um, did you decide what to cover in your proof of evidence, or did someone um, 
brief you, to use the word neutrally, on the ambit of Save Prince's Parade's case for this inquiry. It has been made very clear to all of us what the ambit of the case is, the stopping up order, what the issue of the order is. And I read the order for what it's worth, just to check for myself. Um, but nobody, uh, well, to say nobody guided us. Obviously, we were taking advice on what we should include in our, in our statement of case. And I'm asking you about your proof of evidence, not your statement of case. Right. What I want to know, and I'll ask the question again, did you decide what to cover in your proof of evidence, or did someone tell you in advance what was the ambit of Save Prince's Parade's case? It was made clear to me before I wrote my evidence what the issues were. Whether I got, who I got those from, I couldn't positively swear. What I knew was it was a section 247, and so I looked it up for myself and checked. Uh, you've accepted in your examination in chief that you got that wrong about the scope of the inquiry. <sighs> what I admitted in my evidence in chief not that I got it wrong, but I slightly amended the wording of it so as to focus on the issues that were at stake. The so movement your, of the traffic. it was only a slight amendment of the wording to your proof, is that right? It is. So, to return to my question, you did not decide for yourself what issues to cover in your proof of evidence? Of course I did. I looked up the Section 247 Act and judged for myself what the issues were. But you told us the a moment ago that it was made clear to all of us in advance what the issues were. As well as doing our own research, yes. People talked about it and we were advised. Yes. So you were advised on the ambit of Save Prince's Parade's case before you wrote your proof of evidence? Yes. And did you include in your proof of evidence all you thought was significant in terms of heritage impacts? Yes. And your position here, which I think you've um, confirmed in examination in chief, but let's just check, is that the order, the stopping up and diversion order, would cause great harm to the setting of the Royal Military Canal. Is that your position? And harm to the non-designated heritage asset as well, yes. And I think you say in your proof that the harm to the Royal Military Canal is the most important heritage impact of the order. Is that still your position? Of course. You, you're um, a local resident, I think. Is that right? Oh, I am. Um, and... Is it fair to say that the impact uh, on the setting of the Royal Military Canal is something you care about personally? Passionately. Strongly? Strongly. And you objected to the order yourself, I think, back in 2018, yes? I think I did. Mm. And you raised in that objection, did you, everything that you thought was important? No, it was a very brief holding objection. And what then did you use as the test, as it were, for deciding what to cover in your brief objection? In the 2018? Yes. What did I use? You, you told us you put in a brief holding objection. I did. How did you judge what to mention in it? Uh, my knowledge of the conservation issue of the protection of the monument. And that monument um, is the Royal Military Canal, is that right? Indeed it is. 
because your objection didn't mention the impact on the setting of the Royal Military Canal at all. Could you remind it? me what I said in 2018? You said, I am totally opposed to the closure of Prince's Parade Hyde. This is a beautiful cut through to Hyde and acts as a relief to the sometimes congested A259. It also provides a wonderful amenity for the users of the beach and the Royal Military Canal who can park along this road. Keep it open, exclamation mark. I recall. That's what you said. I did. You did not mention the impact on the setting of the Royal Military Canal Monument then, I did, did you? I did not. Thank you. Your approach to considering the effect on the setting of the Royal Military Canal, um, I think it is, it's fair to say, is it not, that you need to understand how the Royal Military Canal was intended originally to function. Yep. And you need to understand the relationship between the Royal Military Canal and the beach across the site. You do. You do. Um, you refer in your proof to Historic England's guidance. Yep. And Historic England, of course, is the government's statutory advisor on the historic environment, and so provides authoritative advice, yes? Indeed. Um, do you agree that the inspector should give great weight to Historic England's analysis of the setting of the Royal Military Canal? I do. And give great weight also to their analysis of what in this uh, scheme, to use a neutral word, would affect that. Yes. Uh, they wrote, Historic England wrote a series of advice letters in relation to the planning application on the development, yes? They did. And that development included the realignment of the road, yes? Yep. And uh, included the construction of the new road. Yep. I'm wondering if they talked about the construction of the new road. No, well, I'm asking you whether the development included the construction of the new road in my question. Oh, indeed, of course. Yeah. Um, uh, have you read those letters on the development from Historic England? Those that I could access, I have. Um, uh, do you recall those which you could access? Yes. And which were they? I haven't got them in front of me, so I couldn't tell you the dates of them, but there were several. I'm not sure I've got... I don't think they're in the evidence pile, are they? Well, I'm not going to ask you at this stage to try to remember something you can't remember. Could I, could I just... I have a copy of one that I found, which is May 25th of May 2017. Pre-act. Yes, well, we'll look at those. Okay. Um, you didn't refer to any of those Historic England letters in your proof of evidence, did you? No. Um, that's not, though, because you disagreed with them. It's not because I disagreed with them. Um, you didn't mention them. Why didn't you mention them? One explanation could oh, be because you disagreed with them, but not you, at all, you no, agree no. with them. Uh, of course I agree with them, and, and my proof of evidence is my professional opinion. Yes. Not the opinion of Historic England. No, but it seems to me a little bit odd, to say the least, that you would refer to generic guidance from Historic England, but not the specific advice that Historic England had given in relation to this scheme, which includes the construction and use of the road that we're here talking about. I take your point. OK. So now we're going to look at some of the Historic England letters. Um, we'll start, please, with the one of the 13th of April 2018, which Could is CD41. Yeah, I think the best way... Actually, I suppose I can probably try to tell you which we're going to go to. So, Please do. Um, we will need in total, I think, CD3, CD7, CD40, CD41 and CD103. Can I ask, sir, if they're all available on the folks in the High District Council site? Yes, they are. They are, good. Yeah, and hopefully the programme officer will be able to provide. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I've even got a little post-it note which I can hand you if that would assist, sir, if you'll allow me to I'll do that. Mm -hmm. 
so that was C three seven forty forty one one oh three. Thank you. So I was going to ask you first, please, to look at the um, letter from Historic England, which is CD41, which is the letter of the 13th of April 13th of April? No, it's 13th of April. It's a letter from Historic England. Got it. Okay. Which is, I think, five pages? The actual letter is what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the actual letter is five pages. If you say so, yeah. Well, I'm just trying to check we've got the same yeah, document. Uh, yeah, I've got five. Yeah, yeah, OK, yeah. so I was going to ask you to look, please, towards the bottom of the second page. The penultimate block of text begins, we think that. Yeah. And it talks about the significance of the heritage asset and how it is currently appreciated. Do you see that? I do. And it says the role of the canal as a division between... Uh, developed and undeveloped areas is essential to an understanding of its conception as a fortified barrier. Although much has changed since the early 19th century, the fundamental components of the beach and the open land before you encounter the canal remain. This experience would be badly compromised by major developments seaward of the monument. Do you agree with that assessment? I do. And then over the page... Page three, um, it, it talks about the development and about ten lines down. It says, for example, um, the development will harm the legibility of the canal as a barrier to an invader arriving from the sea. And then refers a few lines further down to canal will appear as a strong linear feature with, an un with a meaningful distinction between a built-up north side and a largely undeveloped south side, that's obviously the current position, um, they were concerned about the harm to the legibility of the canal as a barrier to an invader arriving from the sea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that is an analysis that you agree with as well, that part. I do. I also agree with the sentence that starts when walking by the canal along the towpath, etc., it will harm the legibility of the canal as a barrier to the invader arriving from the sea. Yes, and so the, it, it, the it they're referring to is the proposed development, yes? Yes. And they begin by saying the on that, the top of that page, the proposed yeah. development will feature large in views westwards along the canal. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the buildings they're talking about there, yes? Yeah. Thank you. Now, CD40 which is October 2017. Um, 26th of October 2017. Do you have a copy of that letter? I do. I have a copy here, yeah. yeah. So second page there. They have a paragraph, I think it's the fourth block of text. 
amongst the factors that are critical to the ability to appreciate the significance of the RMC at the East Eastern End is the largely undeveloped nature of the land between the canal and the beach. They refer to the change in topography, but say even so, with the beach and the canal close to each other, it's easy for people to understand how the RMC would have formed a substantial obstacle to the progress of an invading French army. And then it goes on to consider the impact of the proposals. Mm -hmm. And towards the end of the first paragraph under that heading, um, they refer to the experience of moving between the sea and the landward side of the canal. So that's going from the sea across the site to the landward side of the canal, yes? They also say we agree that its general conclusion, that although compromised, the open seaward setting of the canal makes a substantial contribution to its understanding and appreciation. Yes, so you I agree said. with that, do you, that it's the open seaward setting of the canal that makes a substantial contribution to its understanding and appreciation? I think I, that's what I said in my, in my statement, I think. Yeah, and then we can see it talks then in the next paragraph... The impact of the proposed development would be to divorce the canal from the shore to a much greater degree than currently. Were the canal to become a linear feature between two substantially developed areas, appreciation of its historic role as a barrier would be undermined, and with this, the ability to understand its design as a fortification. You agree with that analysis? I think it's what I said in my evidence. Okay, good. Thank you. So, um, there's then other representations and I think we can look now at the letter of the 25th of May 2017. Now that is before the inquiry as part of um, the planning design and access statement which people will have as CD7. Are we allowed to revert to this letter a bit? Since you picked bits out of it can I? Well if there's anything you wanted to draw attention to well, I've just, you I've had just... your opportunity to do it in your proof of evidence. I think, I think, I think you're being selective picking out bits that well, if there's suit anything your in argument, particular, so why can't you think... I pick out bits that suit my argument? I'm sorry. Well, you, you had the opportunity to do that in your proof of evidence, so well, you didn't I... refer to the letters okay. at all. If I... there's any particular bit you think it's important to draw to the inspector's attention, you get a second chance to do it in your examination in chief. You didn't do it then either. Well, I'm not trying to cut you off, no. but no. I just want to make clear that you've had two opportunities to inform the inspector of what's relevant. If you think you need a, a third, that's fine. OK, what I did, Mr Honey, if I may say, I'm sorry, sir, if I may, is I picked out the information from these letters and the advice I got from the author of these letters. Yeah. My evidence, which I wanted to make short, concise and to the point. I could have had a, an evidence such as Mr Fitch's, which I think is about four inches thick, if I'd have gone into every single little detail and picked every single letter and quoted every single thing that Peter Kendall said, or that the... That the um, He's the author of the letter. Uh, or the um, legislation says, what's the point of doing huge, great, long reports like that? It's not how I work. I prefer to get, drill down to the point, put it in. That's what my evidence says. Sorry. No, no need to apologise. It's all right. Passion um, makes me a bit angry. Um, your um, letter of the 25th of May 2017, the Historic England letter you referred to earlier, that's at page 230 of the Planning, Design and Access Statement. I was going to ask you to look at that letter. Oh, that's what this is. Okay. Yeah, well, you can, if you've got it separately, you can look at it separately. Which letter, sorry? It's 25th of May, 2017. CD number? It's within CD7. Okay. CD7. Oh, right, CD7, yeah, what I was about to do. You told me the page number, could you tell me again? 230. Thank you. So th this is one of the pre-application letters, yeah? That's the one I referred to earlier, yeah. Exactly, yes. And um, that uh, second page of that, um, similar language to what we've seen hmm. earlier, um, second block of text on the second page of it, refers to the surroundings of the monument making a crucial contribution to understanding and appreciating the significance of the heritage assets, and then refers at the end to the ability to appreciate the relationship between the canal and the shore that contributes so much. Correct. 
uh, and you agree that it's the relationship between the canal and the shore that contributes so much in terms of the understanding the significance of it. I do. Um, and then under the heading of impact on the proposed development, it says, by substantially reducing the degree of openness on land to the south of the Royal Military Canal, and through the introduction of new buildings of an overtly modern form to areas that have never been built upon, the proposed development would have a major impact on the experience of visiting the canal and the ability to appreciate its hi historic significance. You would agree with that as uh, well? I think that's what I said, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. So. Just to be clear, you are not seeking to persuade the inspector that Historic England's analysis of the setting or what causes harm to it is wrong or incomplete. I'm not seeking to, no, I'm not seeking to uh, persuade him thus, no. Thank you. So then, if you go to the next letter in that document from Historic England, which starts on page 235, I think, dated the 22nd of September 2016. Do you see that? Yep. Um, second page again, last block of text. They talk about two different options. Do you see that? I do. And they say a significant difference between the two options presented to me was the alignment of the coast road with both existing and realigned options. Um, and they consider that, and over the page, the bottom of the first block of text on page 236, they, they refer about four lines up from that block of text. South of the canal, there was historically a towpath, and a footpath now remains. Do you see that? Sorry, whereabouts are you? Which paragraph? Um, towards the end of the first block of text on page 236. Yeah. About four lines up, it refers to historically a towpath and now a footpath remains. Yeah. Um, then it says the raised land levels make it likely that users of this path would not experience a realigned road unless they were able to hear it. Use of the RMC by the public is mainly a daytime set for activities and darkness is not a major contributor to its significance. Do you agree with that? I do. Um, and then in the next paragraph, they say there is, of course, a cost implication in moving the road, but we also talked about possible benefits if it was to create some form of buffer between the RMC and the start of the new buildings. If the latter were to be set back from the seaward side of the canal by the width of a new road corridor, and then the development would step up in a southerly direction towards the sea, this might assist in restricting any views of them from within the canal zone. Um, do you agree with that assessment there? Personally, I don't. But so, I agree that what he's written down here is what he's written down here. So let's take it step by step. Historic England saw a benefit for the Royal Military Canal setting in realigning the road. He uses the word might. This is a discussion document, I think, isn't it? And they're trying to mitigate the harm. And this is extended pre-application advice, and they're looking at all the different options. I think it's normal practice that they would not exactly obstruct the applicant and just say, no way, you can't do it. They would discuss ways in which it could be done, and the less than substantial or substantial or great harm could be weighed up. And I think that's what the author of this letter is doing at this stage. Yes, and they were saying there that if the, the development was laid out, so the road was um, to the north rather than to the south, to use generic terms, that would provide a buffer between the Royal Military Canal and the start of the new buildings. That's right. And that is how it is now proposed, yes? Indeed. And they clearly thought that it would have at least possible benefits. Sorry, yeah, that's what they thought, yes. Yes, so um, possible benefits. You don't agree with that? 
I don't agree with that, but I'm in a privileged position that I'm not historic England, and I don't have to work with the applicant as a statutory undertaker, a statutory consultee. His, his responsibility is to try and get the best he can out of a bad case. Yeah. I don't have to do that. I can say I don't agree with it at all, can't I? Yes. Which is my position. If you're asking me, that's, that's where I stand. However, go on. You, you want me no, to no, I was, I'm just trying to understand, because I'd asked you earlier yeah. whether you agreed with what Historic England had said. And you said yes. Yes, I do. But now we get to this part, and you say you don't. <laughs> very good play of words. Um, very good, yeah, excellent. Um, look, they have, they, they have not withdrawn their objection to this scheme. They've objected all the way through. Having said that, the scheme has consent. It must therefore be deemed such that Historic England are content. They're not happy, but they may be content about it. And about the road and its position in particular, they were discussing here, and I accept the word possible is in there, but they were considering that that could be beneficial. That at least it would mitigate the, the great harm by making, it, making the development slightly further away from the canal. There yeah. is still great harm, however. I'm not sure whether he puts that in his wording, but... I'm sure that, well, I know that's his position, as it happens, but anyway, go on. Yeah, so do, do you <clears> agree <throat> that, the, that the road has that mitigating effect? I have to agree that it could be worse, could it not? If the, if the road were not there, as one of the witnesses, I think Mackay probably said, you know, the leisure centre in particular would loom large over the canal, which would be horrendous. So putting a nine metre barrier in its way makes it a bit better, but... So it is, so I don't think you're that far away from what was actually said in the letter then. Well, you are putting words into my mouth and I, I won't change my view that this is, this is great harm. However, go on. Uh, yeah, go on. No, no, I guess I ask you questions and yeah, you yeah, reply. Yeah. It's not a game, I'm not trying to trick you. I, oh. Um, I'm attempting to understand, in light of your answers as you give them, exactly how, to what extent do you disagree with what Historic England says? I understand how, where you're going. Go on, carry on. Yes, yeah, so I'm trying to understand the extent to which you disagree with what Historic England said there about the possible benefits. I disagree wholeheartedly, right. personally. You told us a moment ago that it could be worse if the road was not there, and putting the road there makes it a bit better. Is that still your position? Well, that's what, that's what Historic England is saying. Yeah, uh, but that was your opinion that I was asking you about a moment ago. OK. And you're not changing what you just said. No, whilst it cannot be denied that putting the, bu the buildings nine metres further away from the canal has got to be a bit better, I don't have to particularly agree with that, do I? I'm still vehemently opposed to it. I think it's a dreadful thing to do, however... That's not what we're discussing at the moment, are we? So, yeah, so I've written down what you just said, is putting the buildings nine metres further away from the canal is a bit better. Yeah, but you didn't put the rest down, did you? Then I said I still think it's horrible, but never mind, go on. Yeah, no, I don't think... Uh, uh. <laughs> yes, I disagree wholeheartedly was the words I used. Uh, what is it that you disagree wholeheartedly with? Well, we're not supposed to talk about the development, are we? But my view from the very start is that this piece Hang of on. land should not be built on at all, period. If I may just modify that slightly, save for the previous policy that was in the local plan, TM8, that would have done nicely. I've been ag against this development from the start, and you won't change my view, Mr Honey. Whichever way you twist my words, I won't change my view. It is the development that you're describing that has the harm that you're opposed to. The road is part of the development, is it not? Um, the construction of the road is part of the development. It's the buildings in particular that have the harm that you're concerned about. We're not discussing that today, are we? We're talking about a stopping up order. So we should focus, which is what I tried to do, which is why I redacted my evidence, if I may say. We should be talking about the harm that the changed highway is doing and the movement of the traffic is doing. We shouldn't be talking about other stuff. We shouldn't be talking about these buildings. You shouldn't try to be drawing me into a No, that's a, wrong a trap. with respect. And it's not Go a on. trap. 
there are two different things. Yeah, go on. Uh, just to be, uh, just to try to help you. Be, it was so grateful. The inspector needs to consider what are the direct consequences of the stopping up and diversion order. Those are the Correct. impacts that he can consider. Correct. But those impacts will take place against the backdrop of the existence of the new road and the development. So that's part of the baseline for considering the impacts of the stopping up and diversion order. You don't ignore the buildings and pretend they're not happening, but they have already been permitted. That is why they're not a direct consequence of the stopping up and diversion order, because they're part of the planning process. No, you I don't ignore I understand their existence. where you're coming from, but in that case, why, why were we advised to carefully omit lines from our evidence that did not mention the development. Well, I'm not... Did not mention the war. You know? I'm not going to start asking you about Well, come what. on, you know, you can't have it both ways. No, no, I'm not going to ask you about what legal advice you've had. I'm simply not going to... I'll try and calm down. Carry on. Um, were you aware of that letter from Historic England of the 22nd of September 2016 when you wrote your proof of evidence? Which one's that? The one we've just been looking at? Yes. Um... I was aware of the content of it, uh, but the physical, actual letter I only downloaded the other evening when I was checking my proof of evidence. So I knew the contents. All of this, all of this information that I've been using here has been dribbled to me by the author of these letters. Therefore, I've been taking advice from you know the Fountainhead. Therefore, it's going to accord with this, isn't it? So, if you knew the content of that letter that we've just looked at, did you not think you ought to draw it to the inspector's attention? No, because I knew it was in the evidence. It's here. Why do I need to repeat it? I was asked to give my professional opinion as to the harm that the stopping up order would cause, and that's what I've tried to do. I've tried to make my evidence concise, not time-wasting, short and to the point. I can't see the point of repeating everybody else's evidence. Maybe that's the way you do things in law, but I don't. That was directly relevant to the issue the inspectors got to consider here, which is the positioning of the traffic on the road. The positioning of the traffic on the road? Yeah. Yes. And that's what I've concentrated on. Uh, but you didn't draw that letter to the inspector's attention. I didn't feel it necessary so to do. It's in the evidence. It's here. And it, we can assume, can't we, that Historic England are, are clearly well aware of the realignment of the road as part of the development. Yes. And um, we can assume, can't we, that if they were really concerned about it, if they thought it was a significant point, they would have drawn attention to it in their representations. With respect, sir, they were asked to comment at pre-application stage, and you have all the letters here. They were asked to comment on the planning application, and you have all the letters here. Their evidence has been weighed up with the planning application, and the planning authority decided to grant consent. With respect, they have not been asked specifically about the stopping up order and the effect of the road. Yeah, that wasn't and that's an issue, I think. If they were concerned about the realignment of the road as part of the planning application, they would have mentioned that in their objections. I think they do. I haven't gone through this letter with the fine-tooth comb that you have, but I'm sure we've just read a couple of bits, I think, about moving the road. Yeah, but that was in the context of it being a possible benefit. I'm asking you about whether, if Historic England were concerned about the realignment of the road, they would have mentioned that. Not, it being a ben not in the context of it being a benefit. In the context of it being the best of a bad job. If we're going to compromise the setting of the monument... Let's do it in the least harmful way we can. And I think his wording, if you look at it that way, he's saying, well, I suppose if you put a buffer in there, it'll make it a bit better. But that's a compromise. It's not saying it's a benefit. It's not a benefit. No, I'm not suggesting it is. But they said, 
at the pre-application stage that it was a possible benefit if they had changed their mind after the planning application was made and thought it was a harmful element of the development, they would have said that in their representations, yes? I'm pretty certain the expression harm and greater harm is probably peppered through these letters, if but you care to look for them. Not in relation to the road. The road is part of the development. But they're referring to the buildings, not, no, they're not. where they're the alignment the whole of the road development, is. And they mention the road specifically. But where they mention the road specifically, they refer to it as a as possible a benefit. benefit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They never mention the alignment of the road as a negative aspect of the proposal, do they? To be honest, I don't think we'll get anywhere with this argument because... Well, would you like to answer the question? They never, yes, mention, yeah. Go on. They never mention the road and its realignment as a negative aspect of the scheme in their representations after the planning application was made. Yes, they did. Can if you... they talked about the development being a negative effect on the Royal Military Canal, the road is part of the development, ergo, they mentioned the road. They didn't use the word, they talked about the development, and the development contains a road. That, that's not how it works. We've seen the letters. If there is any element of those letters that were submitted after the planning application was made that refers to the realignment of the road, please tell me. Could you repeat the question? If there is any element of Historic England's letters that they sent after the planning application was made that refers to the realignment of the road, please tell us. I would argue that it's wrapped up in their comments about the development. They're looking at the proposal before them from folks in High District or Shetway District Council as was well, a proposal which contains buildings and a road. That's what they're commenting on and that's what they're objecting to. To pick out the road as an individual item wouldn't make sense. Well, the point, they, the point I'm putting to you is that before the application was made, they discussed the realignment of the road as a possible benefit. If Your they words. had changed their... Well, that's the words I've taken from the okay. Historic England letter. Yeah. If they had changed their mind and no longer regarded it as a possible benefit, but it was something that was a, a harmful element of the scheme they would have told someone they'd changed their mind. I think they stuck to their guns all the way through and they said that the positioning of the road adjacent to the canal is the best we're going to get out of this. Had they said, look, you know, you can't build on the first 50 metres from the canal and stuck their heels in, we wouldn't have a development. They were trying to get the best of a bad job, which is their job, weighing up harm, less than substantial, substantial and great harm, weren't they? And Historic England didn't object in relation to the effect of the development on Princess Parade, did they? It is mentioned uh, as a non-designated heritage asset in one of these letters. Um, and I'm not sure if they said don't develop on it, but they certainly mention it. Yeah, my question is, anyway, Historic England did not object to the planning application in connection with the effect of the development on Princess Parade. If you say so, I'm, I'm not sure if it's specifically mentioned. I mean, I know it, it is mentioned as a non-designated, and the protection that the non-designated heritage asset is afforded. I think there's common ground between us. Historic England did not object. I don't object. think there ever will be. Sorry. Uh, Historic England did not object to the development in connection with the effect of it on um, Princess Parade. Clearly, Historic England, whatever their objections were, are irrelevant because we've got a planning permission. So, in a way, you know, they've tried their best, but we've got a consent and we've got to accept that. And this side accepts that. We've said that all the way through. Everyone accepts that there's a planning is sent in place. That's not what we're talking about today. So do you accept that any effect of the stopping up and development order on Prince's Parade is irrelevant also on that basis? Repeat the question. Do you accept that any effect of the stopping up and uh, diversion order on Prince's Parade is also irrelevant for our purposes on the same basis? Of course not. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's what we're discussing today, and that's what my evidence says. I'm trying to tell you that it's entirely relevant. It's causing harm. So how is it not relevant that Historic England did not object in connection with the wider development, which includes the realignment of the road, about the effect on Prince's Parade? That's, what I'm not, that's not what I'm saying is irrelevant. What I'm saying is discussing whether or not their objections during the planning process is relevant to this inquiry is irrelevant because the planning permission exists. Can we leave it at that, please? And let us talk about this. The only objections, the only basis of objection you're getting is from a crowd of dragged-in volunteers here, and English heritage have not been asked specifically what their view is about the stopping up order. Yeah, and that's why we're looking at what they said about the realignment of the road in relation to the planning application, where they've written a whole series well, of letters, yeah. and they never objected to the realignment of Prince's Parade, did they? Let's leave it at that, shall we? Would well, you want to answer the question? It's not a question, is it? I thought it was a statement. I put it to you that they never objected... Yes, they did. Um, ..to the realignment of it's Prince's Parade. Oh, no, no, they did not object to the realignment of Princess Bray. You're, you're right. Thank you very much. So the, the concern about the Royal Military Canal that you've set out in your proof of evidence is that it would become, this is paragraph 11 if you want to look at it, a meaningless ditch snaking behind the back of the houses. The houses you refer to there are... Are they the new houses in the development? Of course, if it's sneaking around the back, of, yes. Yeah. So that is the impact of the development you're referring to there. It is. Um, the analysis that you include in your proof of evidence, paragraphs 10 and 11, um, relates to... We can see it. Second sentence, the pro uh, second sentence of paragraph 10, the proposed realignment of Prince's Parade. First line of paragraph 11, proposed reciting of the road. The, the analysis that you set out there relates to the realignment of the reciting of the road, yes? I need to correct you, really. Paragraph 11 now reads the rerouting. Yeah, I'm asking you about what you had written in your proof of evidence. Oh, I'm sorry. OK. Uh, and it related to the realignment and the reciting of the road, yes? Yeah. Which was a reference to the physical road. Yeah. There's no reference at all in your original proof, is there, to traffic? No. Nope. Um, the only references were to the construction of the road. I think at the end you will see a reference to disposal of surface water from dust, fumes and lighting, which can only come from a road. Yes, and that's the construction of the road. No, from a finished road. Drainage of a finished road, dust from a finished road. Yeah, the, con the, the, road the construction lighting. of the road is a physical entity as opposed to its use. But what causes the dust and fumes? The cars. So that is your references in paragraph 15. Is that what you're referring to? I am. So it's only paragraph 15 that refers to um, the impact of traffic. Correct. And that is where you talk about what others will add. That's not in your evidence, is it? No. Um, in your examination in chief, you referred to traffic as including, that there was going to be using the new road, lorries, vans and coaches. Do you recall saying that? I do. Um, it, it's the case at the moment that HGVs are banned on Prince's Parade except for access, yes? I understand, yep. And um, that will continue to be the case for the new road? Yep. Yep. 
So what is the source of the lorries and the vans that you were referring to? I don't think small lorries and large vans are HGVs, are they? Okay. I'm not a, I'm not a traffic regulation bod, but anyway, that's my understanding. I'm not talking about pantechnicans or 40 tonners or anything like that. I'm talking about fairly large vehicles. And if you walked along there, you witnessed them yourself. They're there. So they are, you're simply referring there, are you, to um, the lorries and vans, small lorries and vans that yeah. are using the existing road? Yeah. Um, there will be lorries and vans that will be serving the new development. They will indeed. Um, but you'd ignored those. We're not supposed to be bringing the new development into this, are we? Uh, again, I'll try and explain. You can't be complaining about the impact of the development, but you must accept that the development forms part of the baseline against which you consider the impacts of the stopping up and diversion. You don't pretend that there will be no development traffic using the road. You don't pretend that there will be no houses, no restaurant, no hotel, etc. No, I'm not, I'm not pretending it. I'm no, sorry, no, I'm, I'm trying, trying to, to avoid wasting your time on the issues about the development because we're being told we mustn't do that. Yeah, but there's a difference between you can't complain about the impacts of the development okay. as opposed to you ignore the, the development completely. Okay. Yeah? Okay. So you accept that when you're considering any impact that there might be on the setting of the Royal Military Canal, you need to take into account any of the traffic that will be using the road associated with the development. Excellent. And that is not a consequence of the stopping up and diversion order. Is it not? It's the development traffic. It's the consequence of the development. Okay. It's not being diverted. Okay. Yeah? Okay. So when you gave your evidence in chief about the impact, it's clear, isn't it, that you were imagining the road only being used by diverted traffic and not ever being used by any of the development traffic. That is what we are advised is the nub of today's inquiry or this inquiry. Yeah, and I'm not asking you about what you've been advised. I'm asking about what well, you no. had in mind when you said those words in your examination. Indeed, chief. I, yes. And yes. when you said what you said at examination in chief, you were thinking only of the diverted traffic and ignoring any traffic on the new road from the development. Is that right? Did I say that? Well, I'm asking you no, what you had in mind that. when you said that. I don't think I did. So you I'm not thought... Sure. No, but until we had our exchange... Just wondering where this is going, go on. Until we had our exchange, you appeared to think that we had to ignore all the development completely. Yes. You've repeatedly said that's irrelevant. Yes. So when in examination in chief, you were describing the impact of the traffic, I had assumed from what you said you were leaving out of that the impact of the development traffic. Which is and why I mentioned circa 4,500 cars twice, I think. Yeah, so were we you leaving out of account in your explanation of the impact, the development traffic? Yeah. Okay. Um, that development traffic, though, would be using the road in the scenario that we're talking about. Are we talking about the, the traffic to build the development or the Traffic that emanates from the built development. The traffic that emanates from the built development. Yeah, yeah, of course it will. Yes. Yeah. So that needs to be taken into account by the inspector. Okay. Excellent. So the concept, the, the, let's be, just try to be clear about this. The context for considering the effect of the diverted traffic should include, should it not, the existence of the built development under the planning permission. If you say so, yes. Well, no, I agree. Yeah, good, good, okay. good. Yeah, excellent. And that is as you've described it in your proof at paragraph 11 before it was amended. Yeah. Yeah. The context for considering the effect of diverted traffic needs to include also, does it not, the existence of the new road? Yeah. And 
the context for considering the effect of the diverted traffic needs to include also the existence of the development traffic on the new road. Yes? Yes. So what the inspector needs to consider, does he not, is the effect of the diverted traffic on top of all that. Excellent. So the inspector, when asking, you know, what is the impact of the diverted traffic, has to consider that in the context where the buildings exist, where the road exists, and where it's being used by development traffic, yes? Yes. And ask himself only, what does it matter if we put the diverted traffic on top of that? Yes. Do you agree with that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, where, in paragraph 14 of your proof of evidence, you refer to great harm. You wrote that, as we've established, based on the effect of um, the development, including the construction of the new road, being a cause of harm that you could take into account. Yes? Being a what? Being a cause of harm that you could take into account. Yes. Yeah. Um, but you have now accepted that those things, the construction of the development, the construction of the new road, the use of the new road by development traffic, are not part of the impact that is to be taken into account in deciding what is the harm of this stopping up and development order, yes? I'm getting really lost here. I thought you just said it did. I thought you said all the construction traffic has to be added on. No, it's part of the context. The context? Yes. Not the consequence? No. Uh -huh. That's the point exactly. That the existence of the development, the construction of the new road, and the development traffic becomes part of the baseline. And yeah. then you ask yourself, what is the extra over impact of diverting the existing traffic on top of all of that? And it's only that harm, that extra over harm, that the inspector can consider as part of the stopping up and diversion order. Okay, I, I fully understand that. So when you wrote in paragraph 14, that calibration of the harm as being great, you were measuring, if I could put it that way, the harm that came from all of the development and the construction of the new road, yes? No. So what was the harm there that you describe, you measure, as being great? The reason that I've three times, I think, mentioned the circa 4,500 vehicle movements is that that is what we're being told currently goes along Prince's Parade. I'm asking We're, about when you wrote your proof. When you oh wrote yeah, yeah, those okay, words. No. Right, well, yeah. that's what I believed. Yes. Because we would, you know, we were, it was made clear we're not talking about the development. We're talking about what goes along Princess Parade and what will go along the new road. And that's yes. what I wrote. I didn't make it completely clear, which is why I've been asked to slightly amend the wording to make it absolutely clear in the new version you will get, and the inspector will get, that that's what we're talking about. So, just to try to be clear about this, when you wrote that there would be great harm done to Scheduled Ancient Monument that we're talking about here, the measure of the harm as great was including harm caused by the development, including the construction of the new road. No, yes. that's not what I wrote. That's not what I meant when I wrote that at all. You put those words into my mouth. I've just told you, it's been made clear to us, we're talking about moving Princess Parade from there, extinguishing it, and moving the right to yeah. pass over I'm it asking to about there. when you With wrote this. your yes, proof. Yes, I know. That's been clear in our minds right from the start. But in paragraph 10, second line, you talk about the harm that the proposed realignment of Princess Parade will do. You have withdrawn and amended that evidence now. Paragraph 11, you talk about what are the consequences of the proposed reciting of the road. You've withdrawn and amended that evidence now. When you wrote in paragraph 14, the scale of the harm as being great, you were taking into account the proposed realignment of Prince's Parade, the proposed reciting of the road, weren't you? Yes. And you accept now, 
that those things are not part of the impact to be considered. I don't understand what you're getting at. In my mind, it is completely clear that we're talking about extinguishing one road and putting the traffic that's on that road, 4,500 vehicles, and we knew that before, I just haven't written it here, and putting them onto a new road. We were told not to think about, and I, I dread to think about, the, the, the effects of the development and the cars and the lorries and the stuff that will be coming out of there. But we're not allowed to talk about that today. But that's fact, isn't it? So therefore, you have to accept, Mr Honey, I'm sorry, sir, mm -hmm. you have to accept that what I wrote here <coughs> was in my professional opinion and honestly believing that we were talking about the rerouted traffic from Princess Parade to a new place. Nothing more than that. So y your evidence to the inspector is that the changes that you made to your proof make no difference to the calibration of the harm in paragraph 14 that None you set all. out? None at all. That is not no harm at all. That is no difference to the great harm yes, there are at all. You yeah. understand that, yeah. don't you? I just want to be clear. And was that also the case related to what you said, I think in examination in chief, about it being the greatest harm. I probably said that, yeah. So your position, just so that we're clear about it, is that you are saying, you're telling the inspector that your professional opinion is that it is not possible to conceive of greater harm being done to the setting of the Royal Military Canal than the use of the new road by three quarters of the traffic on it. In the context of this inquiry, yes. So if then that's right, it, it must follow from that that it means you think the construction of the buildings will have no adverse impact on the setting of the Royal Military Canal. I didn't think we were supposed to talk about that. But if you're asking me, of course they will. They'll have an enormous impact on the setting of the military canal. But we're not supposed to talk about that, are we? Uh, <laughs> Go uh, on. I've attempted to explain to you what can and can't be. I'm not stopping you from talking about anything. You can talk about whatever you want, subject to the inspector's control. <laughs> by telling us, though, that the use of the new road by three quarters of the traffic has the greatest level of harm, that necessarily means that you think the construction of the buildings would have no adverse impact on the setting of the RMC? Well, I think we should come back to a separate inquiry and talk about the buildings, actually. I don't think that's the context of this. I have a separate opinion about the buildings, but we're not talking about that. All these letters talk about the buildings. We're not talking about that today, are we? We're talking about the harm of stopping up one road and moving it and its concomitant traffic to a different place. End of. And I'm saying, in the context of that, you can do no greater harm to a scheduled ancient monument than doing that. That's my position. So that necessarily means that you think the construction of the buildings have no adverse impact on the setting of the Royal Military Canal, because you're saying that. there can be no greater impact... I won't answer that question. Than because simply... it's not part of this context. It's not part of this inquiry, I'm sorry. See you again at the next one. So you're refusing to answer the question? No, I'm refusing to be led down what I think is a, a spurious argument. I'm sorry, that's Mr Mackay's... I, I was cross that he said something I said was spurious. He doesn't say things like that. But anyway, um, no, of course the buildings will do greater harm. We're talking today, though, about the moving of one road and putting it somewhere else. And in the context of that, you can do no greater harm. But I know what you're saying. In legalistic terms, you can twist it round and you can say, oh, build a, a shard on there, that would be even worse, won't it? Of course it will. Well, I am but we're not talking about that today. So no, but, but you need to judge the impact of three quarters of the traffic on the new road using the new road. Yeah? Yep. And you need to judge that against a baseline. Yep. And... You need to judge that against the baseline 
the, the buildings are there because they've got planning permission. Okay. The, the road has been constructed because that's got planning permission. And the road will be used by the development traffic, which makes up a quarter or a third of the traffic. Yeah? Yep. And if you are saying that no greater harm can be conceived than from the diversion of the traffic, that necessarily means no difference is made by the presence of the buildings, by the existence of the road, or the use of it by development traffic. I am using the Historic England Guidance Notes definition of harm, substantial harm, great harm. And in the context of this, I'm saying great harm. Yeah, I know what you're doing. You're leading it on to say, "Oh, that means that you can build all the buildings then. It won't do any." Won't make any I'm not going to say well, that. We're not talking at about that all. today. No, what you need to, to measure. I don't know why we're talking about this? We should be talking about a road. I'm sorry. I think what I'd like to understand. Well, sorry, sir, sorry. Could you, uh, could this you, is. Could you stop this in the argument? <laughs> so, <laughs> I think it's the difference between the word "great" and "greatest." Ah. Unless I'm misunderstanding that Mr. Honey is uh, focusing on. Okay. Because greatest does imply nothing possible higher. In fact, it does imply that even if you did build a shard there, there would be no higher harm. Okay. Um, whereas great, there could be further grades of great beyond great. I think that's Th what, thank I you. Would, what I need to understand for my Thank purposes. you, sir, for your explanation. I can see that I'm, I'm, I'm letting my passion override my common sense here, my, or my mm -hmm. understanding of what you're talking about. Let us say then, can we, and I don't mind amending the evidence I have just given, to say that great harm will be caused by the diversion of that road into that position. Great harm in the, in the context of the guidance. And as far as the scale of the harm is concerned, do you use any published benchmark that identifies what is great harm? I do. I use the historic, in, in, historic England, historic environment, good practice, advice and planning. Note, note three where harm is defined. And where does that refer to great harm? In the document. I haven't got it tagged anywhere, but it's that's what... So is this a... Uh... Is this a core document? In the core documents, it would be in here somewhere, won't it? Let me see if, if hang on, I don't know if he's given me a, a paragraph number here. If anyone knows that it is, they can just shout it out. NPPF 199, I think. Possibly. Hang on. Uh, this could be it. Um, it says, when considering the impact of a proposed development on the significance of a designated heritage asset, great weight should be given to the asset's conservation, and the more important the asset, the greater the weight should be. This is irrespective of whether any potential harm amounts to substantial harm, total loss, or less than substantial harm to its significance. So may I use the word substantial harm rather than no greater harm? So you, just to understand, are you, um, are you seeking to amend your view from great harm to substantial harm? Yes, please. And that is... Um, substantial harm then you are taking from um, the NPPF is that right? Correct. Paragraph 199 199 and substantial harm is, um, if we look at paragraph 201 of the NPPF, which is your appendix B, it refers to substantial harm or total loss of significance. Is that the... the um, 
the sense in which you are using it. Yeah, I haven't quoted uh, 201. Um, I've got a note. Could you go back to 200 then? Which is what we're talking about today. All harm needs clear and convincing justification. And also then 195. If we're going back over old ground and we're now discussing the planning consent, which it seems we are, the local planning authority needs to seek to avoid and minimise any conflict between the conservation of an asset and any aspect of a proposal. That could include the road. So just to be clear, because I'll need to make submissions about this in due course, your genuine professional opinion is that the impact on the setting of the Royal Military Canal from diverting the traffic, which is going to be two-thirds or three-quarters of the traffic of the, on the new road, will cause substantial harm to the setting of the Royal Military Canal. Yes. And um, the inspector will be able to, as it were, calibrate your professional opinions against that. Yes. Because um, it is um, a recognised term where there's you know, been case law, for example, referring to what substantial harm is. Yeah? Yeah. Um, and if the inspector thinks you've got that calibration of harm wrong, that's something which applies across the board to your evidence, does it? That's entirely um, in the inspector's remit to do. If he disagrees with what I've said, he can disagree with what I've said. Yeah, absolutely. But if, because what we've got now, because you've changed from great harm, which is not a phrase used in the English Heritage Advice or in the NPPF, you've changed to substantial harm, we've now got a recognised benchmark yep. for the amount of harm that you say would be caused by the diversion of the traffic. Yeah. In colloquial terms, if the inspector thinks that's over the top, then your, the calibration of your approach is something which applies across the board to what, everything that you've said in your proof. I accept that. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, so, we've seen, I think, reference in one of the English um, heritage letters to the towing path and how it's now a footpath. Do you recall seeing that? I do. Um, so I'm actually conscious of time. I was going to move on to a slightly different topic. Now may, might be an appropriate time to break if that was um, something you were minded to do in terms of the flow of the topics. Uh, yes. Um, yes, I'm happy to break if you are. I was just going to ask whether Mr Honey would be able to give an indication as to how much I'm going to go to the witnesses a tooth get, fell out. Go and get two no. um, <laughs> <laughs> Whilst he was giving us evidence in chief. Um, and I just wondered if there was any indication as to how much longer this kind of episode. Yeah, I, I, it's, given the way this has been going, it's difficult to judge how long it's going to take. Because um, I can ask the questions, but we need to um, account for Mr Joyce's part of the process as well. I would be surprised if it's going to be less than half an hour. Um, and it may be three quarters of an hour left to cover those topics that I need to cover. OK, in that case, we should have a break now, because it would be too long for you and you won't go. Um, you are still in Perda, of course. Understood. Thank you. Um, so if we break now, I'm going to turn at 20 past three. Thank you, sir. OK, thank you. The inquiry thank is adjourned. I'm going to have a cup of tea, sir. Uh, <laughs> yes, as long as don't speak to course, someone will get you. Someone get you. <laughs> cup of tea and a bit of cake.
That one's on internet only now, so it shouldn't, but... <laughs> so I just have that one instead, okay? Yeah. yeah. Cause it means I can't get them to anything that's um, being sent through, which is not a problem, I can always catch up. Did you get a cup of tea? Yes, I did, thank you. If you want any of their statements, mm -hmm. let me know. Okay, thank you. Okay, if, if you could take your seats, please. We'll be starting in a minute. The time is 3.20 and the inquiry is resumed. Um, before I turn back to the witness, I understand there's a gentleman in the room who wishes to speak. If they could make themselves known. I think he might have left the room. Okay, well, we'll return to that if it happens then. Uh, we'll return to... There was one brief, brief procedural okay. matter. Mm -hmm. um, during the um, short adjournment, um, Mr. Joyce took a phone call, um, which was pointed out to me. I hadn't spotted it myself. Um, and so I did ask him and reminded him that um, he, he was in Perda, and he informed me that that was somebody who was phoning him um, to discuss an issue in relation to a no neighbourhood plan. He hadn't recognised the number, so he'd phoned back and answered that um, call that he had received. Um, so I just put that on the record because, as I say, it was observed that he has in fact taken a mobile phone call during the break. Okay, I'm happy with that explanation. If no, uh, Mr. Apologies Honey is. That too. Mm -hmm. I no idea of the protocol rules. I did suggest actually to the programme officer if we do this again, it might be a, a good idea to send out some guidance notes to folk like me because I didn't know that was a rule. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you very much. So um, we were going to. Um, Look next, please, Mr. Joyce, at CD 103. That's one I mentioned earlier, so hopefully that's been brought up to you. Uh, one, oh, yes, I have 103. Um, which is the archaeological assessment from June 2021. Do you see that? I do. Um, if you could go in there, please, to page 39 which is figure 21. Did you say page 39? It's numbered page 39, yes. Ah. And it's marked figure 21. I'm with you. Um, and that is an OS map from 1898. Yep. It is. Uh, and we can see on that map um, a towing path marked. Yep. Yep. And then, um, if we go back to page 31, there's a cross section. I think it's taken from some of the signage that's up at the site. And we can see a cross-section there that also shows the towing path. Figure 13, eh? Figure 13, yes. Yeah. Um, that is the towing path that Historic England was referring to when it said there was a towing path and there's now just a footpath, yes? Yep. Yeah. 
Thank you very much. Um, your proof of evidence, I think, at paragraph five, refers to the killing fields, indeed, um, and refers to the firing step. We can see that. Can we not from the parapet on that cross section? I can. And the killing fields, as you refer to them, would be, as it were, off to the left of that cross section where there's an arrow saying C. Yeah. Correct. And across the application site. Yeah. Um, and I hope we can agree between us that killing fields are neither quiet nor tranquil. Well, may I say, uh, Napoleon never came, so I imagine that they were tranquil from the day they were built, and they've never been used as killing fields, so they've never been... Because it's never been used for its intended function. Never been used for its intended purpose. Yeah. But the intended purpose was for that area of the site to be, as you've described it, the killing fields. That was the intended purpose. And had it ever been used for its intended purpose, it would have been neither quiet nor tranquil. I think it might have been quite chaotic, yeah. Thank you. Now, if we um, switch now to the other side of um, the canal, in this document, page 15, there's reference to Prince's Parade. So it's paragraph 5.1.5. Fifteen. Yeah, page 15, paragraph 5.1.5. Yeah. Just take a moment to find that. Yep. Um, towards the bottom says, um, Prince's Parade, formerly opened in 1881. Yeah. Is that your understanding? It is. Um, and it's referred to there as a Victorian seaside promenade. That was its original function and concept. It yep. was. Yes, it was. Um, within the document, page 38, there is um, then an OS map, and it's uh, 1898, figure 20. Where are we? 38? Yeah, page 38. Mm -hmm. Yep. We, we can see marked towards the bottom of that... Um, the tramway and Princess Road, as it's marked there, yeah? Do you see that? Yep. Um, and then page 40, it's 1898 again, slightly different stretch towards the eastern end. We can see again there the mark tramway and Princess Road, yeah? Sorry, it's page 40, Sorry, figure 22. Page 40. Yeah. So we can see from that how Prince's Parade was in 1898 with the parade and the tramway, yeah? Yeah. And that was roughly 18 years after its opening, 17, 18 years after its opening? In 81? 1881, yes. 1881 so this map is... would be 70-something years after 1804, wouldn't it? Oh, you mean uh, the opening of, sorry, the opening of the Prince's Parade, a big part. We're yes. looking at an 1898 map. Yeah, 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 sorry. Which represents it 17, yeah. 18 years yeah. after it was formally opened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there is, uh, I think page 41 then has got a picture. It's undated. But figure 23 is a photograph of the horse-drawn tram. The toast rack. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and th that was a tourist attraction, effectively. Yeah. Yeah, a means yeah. of transport, yeah. Um, and the Prince's Parade was part of, is part of, the history of tourism and leisure in the area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
So, um, 1881, there were no motor cars. There were no? No motor cars in 1881. Were there not? Don't know. When did they? I don't know. Probably not. I don't know. <laughs> so you don't know? <laughs> Probably not. Okay. Um, th there wouldn't have been, I'll put to you as a proposition, motor cars common <laughs> no, no, for quite. decades no, no, no. after 1881. No, no. The first experimental motor cars might have been talking yeah. about the place, but yeah. So no motor cars on this road. Um, Prince's Parade would have been used by pedestrians and cyclists long before motor cars were common on Prince's Parade. Yeah. Um, and it was not originally conceived or built as a road for motor vehicles. Correct. Uh, it became a tramway, sorry, it became a road when the tramway closed. Is that right? That is my understanding, yes. Yeah, so the function of it changed to a road when the tramway closed. Yeah. It changed away from its original function at that point in time. Yeah. Yeah. To become a road for motor cars. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, good. Um, so I'm going to ask you now to look at the plans in the design and access statement, um, so, which is the bigger of the documents you've got in front of yourself. Oh. Um, if you want to break at any stage, um, do say so. Thank you. No, I was just conscious that um, I don't want to be asking you to juggle too much at once. Don't want to be asking me what? To juggle too much at once in terms of paperwork, <laughs> for example. I see what you're saying. Okay, no problem. I have all the documents in front of me, I think. Good. So um, I was going to ask you to go to page 98 of the Planning, Design and Access Statement, which is in section 5 of it. 98? So what we can see on here is the, um, the new widened promenade that is proposed. Yep. Illustrative design approach, yes. Yes, and this is part of section five of the planning design and access statement. Yep. Uh, 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 yeah. And it's covered therefore by condition six on the planning permission. Yeah. Good, thank you. Um, so we can see the road entering from the west onto the site, yeah. We can. Um, and we can see then the promenade. Now the promenade is a straight linear feature, isn't it? It is. Um, which is going to have a leisure use, yeah. Yes. So what the plan entails is the road redirected to the rear of the site, yeah? Yes. Um, and the cars removed, therefore, from that stretch of the front. Yeah. Um, most, I think, of the carriageway is incorporated into the new promenade, isn't it? It is. Um, and the alignment of that continues on the same line that the Prince's Parade Road, as it stands today, uh, goes, yeah? Yeah. Uh, so if you were standing on that new promenade, it would be um, an environment that was, I think it's 11 metres wide, is that your understanding? Yep. Oh, I haven't got a scale in front of me, but yeah. Sorry. Well, there is... You say it's 11 metres, it's 11 metres. Yeah. I don't think that's controversial between us in any event. Um, and we have a situation where the promenade, the widened promenade, is only going to be used by pedestrians and cycles because the modern vehicular road has been re redirected to the rear of the site, yes? Yeah. 
that will be closer to the original function of the Victorian promenade than the current modern carriageway for cars. I don't deny that. Your proof, though, says that as a result of the diversion, Prince's Parade will have lost all of its significance. If, if that's the wording I used, yes. Yeah, so it's um, paragraph nine yeah. of your proof. Do have a look at it. It says, by taking away the eponymous Prince's Parade, its significance is lost. It will no longer be possible to understand its original intent. Yes. And that is still, as it were, part of the professional judgment that you're offering to the inspector. Yes. And that is, again, is it representative of the approach that you've taken in your proof? Yes. So, I mean, essentially, you've taken the same outlook, the same approach to heritage impacts throughout your proof? Yes. So the inspector can again calibrate your judgments on heritage impacts by reference to deciding whether or not um, he agrees with what you say there in that paragraph nine. Calibrate the whole of the report based on what I say in that, in that paragraph? Your proof of evidence contains a series of judgments. Indeed. Um, and, uh, and we were talking about one of them earlier, where you've changed to substantial harm. If the inspector thinks you're going over the top, to use a colloquial phrase, in how you've yep. described it in paragraph 9, that's something which carries across to the other judgments and conclusions that you've reached in your proof, yeah? If you tell me that's what happens... Uh, well, no, I'm asking you. No, I, you I you've agreed yes. that yes. that is representative of the approach that you've taken throughout your brief. Yes. So I'm asking you, that therefore is a way of calibrating the judgment calls that you've made in your proof. If the inspector thinks you're overstating it there, then because that's representative of the approach you've taken throughout your proof, he can infer that you're overstating it across the board. <laughs> he could, yes, okay. he could. Mm. Thank you. In examination, Chief, you made reference to the tram shelter. I did. I think you said at the time you'd not seen a drawing of what was proposed. Is that right? That's right. They're, they're almost impossible to see on the uh, on the documents that we were given. But I, yeah. Uh, you, yeah. You, you described it as being in a square. Is that your understanding? Only from the evidence that I heard yesterday. It was described, I think, by Mr. Mackay as being within the public open space. He described a square with some, I think he said, some shops and stuff like that, and he said it would be within that square. I'm pretty sure that's what he said. Well, that's, uh, I checked my note following your examination, in Chief. That's mo not my note of what he said. But it, it is, in any event, going to be within the area of public open space, yeah? I bowed to you. Yes. Yes. It's, it's square, yes. Um... It, it is not being moved significantly from where it is at the moment, is it? That is not clear from these drawings. Uh, it doesn't show the existing position of the tramway shelter, uh, but it does show the proposed. Uh, Mr Mackay said in his oral evidence that it would be retained close to Prince's Parade. I recall him saying that. Um, and you don't know any better than that. Hmm? You don't know any better than that. You're not contradicting. No, I don't know any better than that. No. It'll be moved. It will remain beside um, the widened promenade. It will. Thank you. So, thank you. Those were all the questions that I had. We actually managed to get through mm -hmm. them all quickly. Thank you very much, Mr. Oh, thank Joyce. you. OK, uh, thank you. Um, uh, we can turn to the re-examination. Nothing in re-examination, okay. sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> um, um, is the gentleman who wish to speak here? OK. 
Thank you. Um, in that case, uh, it's time for the next witness, uh, please, Mr Moyes. So, certainly. Um, our third witness, please, uh, is Mr Martin Wybrow. Martin, if you come forward, take the witness. Mr. Thank you. Yes. Settled in and sitting comfortably. Thank you, Clive. Yes, sir. Mr. Weber. Thank you very much. Um, so, so Mr. White, Mr. Martin Weibrow is a witness called on behalf of Sir Prince of Great, um, dealing with biodiversity, one of the main issues identified by you at the pre-inquiry meeting. Um, and Mr. Weibrow has prepared a written proof of evidence, sir, which um, was lodged with the and is on the inquiry website dated the 5th of October to 2021. Um, Mr Wybrow, you are, say you're speaking as a resident in the ward in which Prince's Parade lies, and you're a Hythe Town Councillor yep. and a former Kent County Councillor for Hythe and Hythe West. Yes. yes. Wh when were you a Kent County Councillor? I stepped down in uh, May of this year, and I was uh, county councillor for eight years. Eight years? Yeah. Thank you. Now, um, if you could, um, first of all, we need to just do a little bit of housekeeping, if, if we may. Mm. So, um, the, in terms of the <coughs> scope and parameters of the Section 247 inquiry um, that the inspector's concerned with, um, you, you, you appreciate that um, we're simply dealing with the disadvantages or losses flowing from the proposed extinguishment of the public particular right of way. I do, yes. Yeah. Um, and in, in the light of that, I think there are certain passages in your evidence which you'd wish to um, have removed, as it were, and not seek to rely on in writing or orally as evidence before the inspector. Is that, is that right? Yes, that's right. Um, yes. Could you just, if we, if we run th through them, um, in terms of your second, sorry, your third sentence, among the clear detrimental effects considered in this statement is related to lighting from the, the road. What, what would you like to say about that? Uh, well, with regards to lighting, um, I have... Uh, basically listened to yesterday's discussion. Um, reluctantly, it seems to me, based on the advice that I have had, that the street lighting, sorry, the street lighting section is not within scope of this inquiry and therefore needs to come out. Thank now, you. I'm looking at it from a layman's term. Um, I listened to the pre-guidance advice and I probably did not interpret it as nuanced as I should have done. Okay. My so apologies. Do you assist strike out that sentence? So that is that sentence, and unfortunately it is also section 6. 6. Oh, so it is 6.1 6. through to 6.6, 6. 6, I'm afraid. Yeah. Okay. Not to worry, these things happen. So we, we remove the section 6 on street lighting. That's removed as evidence before the inspector. Um, now, um, just to deal with a little bit of additional um, housekeeping on the same point, you say in your s summary proof, well, perhaps just first of all read your summary, please. Right, okay. Uh, so my summary of um, my evidence is basically that I'm considering the likely impact of the road stopping up order on the Prince's Parade site mm -hmm. and adjacent Royal Military Canal. What I'm seeking to do is highlight species of local and national importance, including red-listed birds on the sites. Mm -hmm. Among the clear detrimental effects um, considered in my statement is related to 
the lighting from the road, and I now understand that that has to be limited to, uh, to traffic. Um, well, so close so, to the canal. Sorry, it's, it's even more nuanced than that. Um, it, we're dealing with the diverted traffic yes, from the rear lined road. You, um, you accept and understand I that, accept I think. and understand that, yeah. yes. So yeah. it's the car lights in relation to the, the diverted, diverted traffic. traffic. Yes. Thank you. Um, carry on, please, with that. Yeah. So in my opinion, uh, there is no adequate full environmental plan of mitigation. And this is sufficient evidence to justify the Secretary of State declining to confirm the order. Mm -hmm. Now, you've heard quite a lot of um, evidence that's been given in relation mm. to ecology from Mr. Andrews, who was here yes yep. yesterday. Um, and as I think there would be quite a bit of information or I'm sorry, evidence that was, has been given that effectively updates a lot of what you've said um, in relation to, so some of your, um, if you like, queries, um, for example, if you look at 2.5, <coughs> the fact there hadn't been a full preliminary ecological appraisal, um, that, 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 that was explained, um, I think, in, in, in evidence yesterday, the context in which that, um, you'd made that comment, and <coughs> we saw the documents, do you recall that? It, I do, yes. So based on yesterday's discussion, now I was going by the Lloyd Bohr 2021 okay. report, which Bohr. is the ecological method statement, okay. where it said that there had not been a full preliminary um, ecological appraisal. Okay. I understand from listening closely to yesterday's debate that that was something that I misconstrued from actually what seemed to be a fairly black and white point in that uh, 2021 report. And so I think 2.5 falls as well. You're, you're, you're content that that's being attended to now? Yes, indeed. Yes, thank yes. you. So if I could ask you please to read um, from your <coughs> 1.2. Yes, yeah. Well, although I am a resident and uh, a local council, I think probably the most relevant reason that I am here is that I've spent over 25 years um, basically on and around Prince's Parade on almost a daily basis, as in fact I did this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, usually with my binoculars around my neck, um, because it's always proved an interesting site for wildlife. Mm -hmm. So I've recorded um, sightings over those years, as have many others. It's a well-watched site. Mm -hmm. um, and so a pretty comprehensive picture has been built up of the, uh, the wildlife on the site, and also on the eastern section of the protected Royal Military Canal. Mm -hmm. What I certainly wasn't planning to do was obviously repeat uh, what others have said, um, so I was really just concentrating on the biodiversity aspect of, of what is proposed. Yes, and then you have a second topic in relation to mitigation, and you've accepted that the concern at 2.5 falls away in the light of Indeed. the evidence yes. from Mr yes. and Andrews yesterday. Um, can you deal with the your position now in relation to um, mitigation, because at 2.1 you said, mm. I believe that mitigation measures that have been secured in relation to environmental impacts relating to the stopping up um, of the road are inadequate. What, what, what's your current position um, my or opinion on that question? My opinion on that is unchanged, despite the clarification over the mm -hmm. PEA, shall we call it, for, a, mm -hmm. for brevity. Mm -hmm. When I look at um, essentially the mitigation that has been proposed and some of which is already underway, I do not believe that it is inadequate. Now the council team ecologist has got um, all of his uh, credentials. What I am sort of looking at this from is a layman's point of view, but with 25 plus years of longevity of looking at the site, and there are a couple of things that do concern me about the mitigation. So, uh, if that's so right, I would like to... Please give... This is your opportunity to clarify yes. and explain your evidence yeah. on behalf of Save Princess Bray to this inspector who's ultimately got yes. to yeah. report yeah. and recommend to the Secretary of State what is decided. Yes. So please Thank explain you. your evidence. Thank you. Well, to put it into context, what I did refer to in my evidence was the officers' committee report yep. so do you on want to read that the planning all? application, mm -hmm. which is CD 003. Mm -hmm. 
So I think fairly crucially, this says the ES, the environmental statement, identifies that the completed development would represent a fundamental change to the habitat status of the site, as well as introducing physical barriers to movement, lighting, human disturbance, traffic, and predation by pets into the area. Yes. Uh, I think that... Uh, the Buckle's response to the statutory consultation from May 2021, mm -hmm. uh, CD006, also says that the stopping up of the road is a fundamental part of that impact. Mm -hmm. um, to quote the Buckle's report, mm -hmm. it is accepted by the Council that the closure and diversion of part of Prince's Parade as it passes through the development will directly contribute in part to the identified environmental impacts for the development. Mm -hmm. So from my perspective, we've got there set out that there will clearly be an impact. Now, there was discussion yesterday about um, substantial compensatory habitat. That is one of my concerns because I have watched that site develop over the years. <clears throat> From my point of view, a habitat evolves. Mm -hmm. You cannot, in my opinion, compensate for an, uh, an evolutionary habitat. Um, it, planting trees that may be three metres high in five years, to my point of view, or other sort of mitigation, does not replace the habitat that is there. So from my 25 years of watching the site, I'm concerned about the impact on breeding migratory birds, and I set that out in my evidence. Yes, J just before we come on to yeah. that, um, could, could you seek to clarify um, or, or, or seek to refine your, your, your evidence um, before, before the inspector? Um, Buckles 2021, it is accepted by the council that the closure and diversion of part of Prince's Parade as it passes through the development will directly contribute to the identified environmental impacts mm. for the development. Well, we have to refine our consideration of this issue to the impact and effect in biodiversity terms of the realigned traffic that mm. will be using this new route new road in the location that mm. we can see yes. helpfully explained on the mm. um, BAM contractor drawings and we've now got the very latest um, cross-section drawing and yeah. it's there in front of you. Um, so if you keep in mind the focus being upon purely the impact arising from the diverted traffic, leaving out of account the physical construction of mm. the road and the traffic that will arise from the development. Um, can you continue with your evidence with that well in mind? I certainly have that in mind and mm. from my perspective the disruption from the displaced traffic will clearly have an impact, a negative impact on the, the breeding migrant birds. Mm -hmm. How, how, it, sorry, please. Well, essentially, it is an important site, I think, for local species of birds. We've got the white throats, black caps, chiff chaffs. From my perspective, one of the great joys of spring mm -hmm. is when the first white throat appears on Prince's Parade, establishing its territory, mm -hmm. establishing its breeding territory. Now, with regards to the diversion of the road, the traffic that will be on the diversion of that road, mm -hmm. that will be a much disrupt site, disrupted site, I would say. The other thing that I think is important is that this is an important site for a lot of local resident birds, as well as the migratory birds. And this is one of my concerns about the mitigation plan, mm -hmm. that there has not been a full winter bird survey. It is an important site from the perspective of starlings, of house sparrows, dunnocks, linnets, wrens, others. Mm. Now these are common birds, but certainly in the case of starlings and house sparrows, 
they are in steep national decline. Mm. Um, and in fact, the national decline in starlings and house sparrows has led to them being red listed in the most recent Bird of Con Birds of Conservation Concern publication. Mm. So the fact that there hasn't been a wintering bird survey, to my mind, is um, a major omission. If I understand the discussion that took place in this room yesterday, the basis for not doing that study was that there had been a, a look at historical records and therefore there was a conclusion that a wintering bird survey was not needed. Now, if I was doing a thorough look at that site from the point of view of wildlife, I would have done a wintering bird survey. Mm -hmm. I can't see any reason why not. Mm -hmm. um, it's also an important site for migratory birds in the autumn. And without having a look at the site throughout the course of the year, again, I think you are missing a part of the picture. It provides dense scrub, and it, as all locals know, is probably the only bit of that type of habitat for quite a considerable part of the coast. Mm -hmm. If you come this way, it is the, the, lead, the lower Lees Park, probably, where you first get um, habitat for migrants. If you go the other way, you've got Hythe, you've got the golf course, then you've got Hythe, then you've got the ranges, and so you're looking even further beyond. So for migrant birds that have just arrived in this country, or for migrant birds that are feeding up to depart from this country, I think it is an important site. Mm. And I have listed, and it's been a long day, and I know that there's other witnesses to come, so I won't go through no. sort of all of the species that I no. have listed in my oh, body of okay. evidence, but, but I have tried to bring them out. Yes. Um, but could you just seek to explain a little further how you, you said you, you if effectively you don't think looking at historic data is good enough in relation to the survey which you say should have been done in relation to wintering birds in your view um, how does the how do these concerns um, how are they impacted or how do they manifest as a consequence of the use of the diverted road by the vehicles that will be going up and down it? Well, the vehicles that will be going up and view. down the diverted road mm. are basically going to be traversing a site which at the moment does not have anything like that amount of disturbance. Mm -hmm. So you have got the noise, you have got the air pollution, you have got the headlights. That essentially changes the nature of that corridor. Mm. Now, at the moment, it is a dark corridor. It is a relatively undisturbed corridor. Uh, putting 4,500 uh, vehicles per day onto that site, um, from my perspective, will have a big impact on those birds. And certainly, I would hope that the impact is fully understood by doing a full study of the site. Yes. Um to what extent, this is the baseline point that's been put to other witnesses, yes. to what extent if you have in mind the fact that there is, pursuant to a planning permission, um, the ability for the council to build, and they're moving forward, mm. obviously, um, the new leisure centre, the new houses, the new road, etc., that in itself, one would imagine, is going to cause a very significant impact in all sorts of ways upon um, the biodiversity, for, to take the purely this mm. topic, um, of the, um, the site as a whole, and particularly the Royal Military Canal. How do you move from against that baseline and background, how do you assess simply and purely the impact of the diverted traffic? Can you help? How, you well, I've already aspect, mentioned the noise and the air pollution and mm. the, the, the lights of the vehicles. Of course, you're bringing it right across to close to the Royal Military Canal. Mm. And the Royal Military Canal itself has a lot of um, wildlife that will be impacted. Mm. Um, again, I have listed some of them, but one that I would particularly draw attention to is the red-listed Chetis Warbler. Okay. That um, nests on the Royal Military Canal and certainly does on that eastern section that we are talking about here. 
Um, could, could you read out, please? Thank you. Your, that is your topic four. Yes. Excuse me, impact on wildlife on the canal. Could, could you please excuse me, read out your 4.1? Yes, 4 .1. I would be happy to. Thank so uh, my section four of my evidence reads, in terms of the impact on the canal wildlife, as the Lloyd Bohr Ecological Mitigation Strategy makes clear, the new road will be as close as 13.32 metres to the canal, mm -hmm. which is clearly contrary to Environment Agency advice, which was initially for a 25 metre ecological buffer, and if not achievable, a 20 metre buffer as a planning condition. Mm -hmm. The eastern end of the canal, as well as providing a tranquil area for walking for residents and visitors, is similarly important for wildlife. It includes resident breeding red-listed Chetis warblers, along with reed and sedge warblers, mute swans, and more hens plus water rail in winter. Mm. Now, just pausing there, um, you heard some evidence um, from one of the witnesses, it may have been Mr Andrews, if I actually now remember, I think it was Mr mm. Andrews, it must have been, um, in relation to the compensatory factor of the public open space, and you can see what's yes. proposed on yes. the BAM contractor drawings yes. um, down at the western end um, and we've heard about well I'll come on to that in a minute, that's a separate separate issue but in, in your view how does that um, impact upon your evidence, the fact that effectively what's being said was Environment Agency wanted 25, they couldn't get that they then said 20 it's now 13.32, mm. but it gradually widens, and we've got the measurements as yes. it um, goes towards the, well, uh, down towards the Imperial going west. And then it opens out quite a, in the second half of the site, if I can put it in those terms. Um, so how does, does, does the compensation of the extra provision further down the site, does that, how does that affect matters in your view? Well, firstly, I would say that it's not the other half of the site, of okay. course. It is a much reduced section of the site, and you can mm -hmm. see that on the, the plans. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there is any sort of recompense that is similar to a naturally um, evolved habitat. Mm. The density of the scrub is so important to so many of the species. That is why they are there. I, you know, the, I do not think it will be comparable. The reason that you have got those particular species there, such as the white throats that I've mentioned, is because that habitat is very um, matched to what they need in terms of mm. the perches, in terms of the shrubs, in terms of what they can feed on. Mm. Same with the wintering birds as well. Mm. On the houses on the north side of the... Uh, Royal Military Canal on a winter's day you can see all of the starlings up on the rooftops and they will swoop down and they will feed on the existing site. On the day of the site visit if it's very windy and wet then there won't be a lot of birds yeah. around because they will be keeping low but I think genuinely if you had a day like today where it is a, a clear day without wind as actually was mentioned in terms of the video of the bird school mm. you would um, see the, the, the um, abundant uh, wildlife, including the bird life, on this site. Yes, but, but we must keep in the forefront and front and centre of our mind that the site as a whole, we're not considering the impact on wildlife in relation to the development that's permitted under oh, the Oh, no, I quite understand, but obviously the road takes up a site. And mm -hmm. You know, I mentioned some of the, the rare species that have mm -hmm. been uh, found there, quite a lot of which are water birds, so they have been on the eastern section of the canal. Okay. Um, the night heron, I mentioned, the night heron yes. roosted in a bush, which was exactly pretty much where the road is going. And that will have the traffic going through it, obviously, as a result of this. Mm -hmm. um, now, you might have heard some evidence yesterday about the busyness, if I can put it like that, of mm -hmm. the Royal Military Canal. Um, the broad thrust of it was that there were people canoeing, paddling, yeah. there were people angling off the, fishing off the um, bank, etc. And that that in itself creates um, a, a degree of disturbance to the 
um, habitat itself, the water habitat, um, and therefore concerns about people driving by on the re-diverted route above the footpath and the canal itself it is um, a lesser harm because of the fact that it's a busy uh, environment or a reasonably busy environment, the water environment. You do recall that evidence? I do indeed, yes. What, can you assist the inspector with your view on that topic? It is certainly a much loved and much used site, mm -hmm. undoubtedly. Um, there is waterborne activity in terms of canoes, a few paddleboarders. Um, you can't get all that far on a paddleboard because you hit a low bridge. Um, but uh, canoes uh, are certainly um, coming out of the canoe club at that end. Mm. And then you have people walking, um, including myself. Mm. There are a number of different routes, of course, that mm. you can take. So that is spread across the, the site north-south um, seafront as well. And in fact, in particular, the route along the canal bank, which will be alongside the road, is probably the least used of the um, thoroughfares, the, the footpaths, because there is no hard standing. Mm. And uh, it gets very wet. So in fact, mm. anybody who was going on the site visit in a couple of weeks' time, if they were going to use that route, would probably need to wear Wellington boots. And mm. certainly, you probably wouldn't be walking along there unless you had those on uh, at the moment after the rain that we've had over the last 48 hours. So um, is there a distinction to be drawn? So if we have the BAM drawing to hand, I think you've got them I've got. quite there, um, with, in, in the sense of the waterborne, the wildlife on the canal itself, <coughs> and we've heard evidence about the fact that at that end, by the canoe centre, it's there is quite a lot of activity on the water. What's the character as you progress west along the line of the new proposed road? Does that...? As you progress west along the, uh, the proposed route of the road, mm -hmm. you have got quite dense shrub up on the raised area. Mm -hmm. And then on the canal itself, you have got some fairly thick, deep reed beds, which again will be evident from the site mm -hmm. visit. Those provide quite a lot of protection for water birds, particularly during the breeding season. Mm. And therefore, there is quite sort of suitable refuges for quite a lot of the birds um, along that section at the moment, within the shrubs on the bank and within the, the reeds on okay. the side. So there are two points there, I think. So, um, first of all, in relation to the busy section that's been described with mm. people on their canoes um, at the right at the start of the canal, um, to to uh, I, if, if you've already answered this, forgive me because it's my failure to make a note of your your evidence. But to to what extent did you accept? or agree with the evidence that was given by Mr Andrews yesterday to the effect that because that element of the canal is a, is a busy environment anyway, um, the wildlife has become habituated to that and therefore the fact that there's going to be 75% mm. of the total traffic or two thirds of the total traffic that's diverted on that road doesn't really make that much of a difference that was the sort of thrust of it Did, yes can you comment on that i certainly think that adding the disturbance caused by the traffic will ramp up to another level the amount of overall disturbance on the that section of the canal and that section of the site so yes a lot of the birds on the canal site themselves will have had to have got used to people walking mm. A few people um, on waterboards and canoes. Um, however, that is a different proposition to four and a half thousand um, vehicles coming that close to the canal. I think the other important point to make is that where the traffic will be travelling, 
currently is not accessible by people. That site is not accessible, so it has been uh, an untouched, um, unspoilt mm. um, section corridor through which that traffic will now be travelling. Mm. And that will be a major change for the wildlife on that section. And as one moves down, going, you describe the next section, if that's the right word, before one gets to the bridge mm. um, and the thick waterbed vegetative features, etc. Does that mean, or, or how does, how, what's your f opinion in relation to the vehicular traffic at that end of the um, eastern section where the road is gradually <coughs> getting away or further away from the canal? It's not getting to 25 metres, it's not getting to no. 20 metres. No. So uh, I think it is particularly bad where it is narrowest. Mm -hmm. It is slightly less bad where it gets uh, slightly further away from the canal. Mm. And I know that uh, the Environment Agency has, shall we say, changed the goalpost a little bit in terms of what it has been advising over the last few years, but certainly its starting point was 25 metres, its mm. second position was 20 metres, and um, it isn't going to be either of those. And you, you, you make reference to a, a planning condition, that was, was your understanding, environment, the Environment Agency as a statutory consultee sought a planning condition from the local planning authority. Mm. Is that, is that your understanding? That, that is my understanding. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm not a, a lawyer. No, no. I can have the uh, documents put no. in front of me, and I'm sure I will have, um, but that is my understanding of the situation. Okay, thank you. Um, all right. Um, now, other fauna, again, bearing in mind the scope of the jurisdiction and the issues, could you just... Um, Deal with your evidence in relation to other fauna, please, Mr. Um, Wybrow. Well, uh, uh, my evidence on other fauna is largely drawing out um, the evidence of, of others. Um, mm -hmm. So I do go through the freshwater invertebrates uh, mm -hmm. that are on this section of the canal, including dragonflies and uh, damselflies. Mm -hmm. um, I flag the fact that it qualifies as a eutrophic standing water, mm -hmm. um, which as I understand is a habitat of principal importance. Um, Rambo's pied shell bug, I have to say I wouldn't know a Rambo's pied shell bug if it came and sat on my binoculars, but, um, right. and the scarce moss, moth, the uh, coast uh, bramble pygmy. Mm -hmm. I think the, the fact that there has also been um, the considerable bat activity on that section of the canal um, I list out, based on the Lloyd Bohr Ecological Mitigation mm. Strategy, uh, the eight bat species which have been confirmed mm. along the canal, yes. um, along that dock. Okay, there's quite a lot of his historic ecological um, source material and reports that you're there referring is. to, but that's all back in um, to 2016, yeah. and, and, and things move on. We now know there, of course, is a planning commission etc etc so with particular or with only with regard to the impact upon other fauna of the diverted route and the use of that route for the number of vehicles that um, will be traveling down it um, what's your position evidentially now in relation to the impact of that on other fauna my concern would be exactly as per the birds that the impact of noise, air pollution, um, the, the lights from the traffic itself uh, would have a detrimental effect on some or all of that fauna. Uh, particularly the bat population. Um, I, you know, I can't tell one bat from another and it takes an absolute expert to do so. I think you need sound recording to, to actually do mm. that. But certainly there is um, a lot of bat activity on that section of the canal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
So if we draw the stra thr strands together of your evidence, mm. um, in relation to your conclusions, um, I think what I'll do is I'll ask you to, to, to read the paragraphs and then mm. I'll just seek to, to ask you if you're able to clarify one or two pieces in what you've written yes, in your okay, text. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So um, my conclusion is that, um, to quote the report produced in 2016 for the Council, that's the mm -hmm. DSE Design Review Princess Parade CD yep. 111. Yep. Uh, the scheme, and I'm quoting here, brings an intrusive roadway close to the scheduled ancient monument and to the series of trails and paths that run alongside it, urbanising it and creating the need for it to be protected by a bund. The proposed Prince's Parade realignment would, in my opinion, wreck for human and non-human residents and visitors alike the essential peace and quiet of this much-loved site and this part of our area's unique scheduled ancient monument. Just, just pausing there. Now, mm. wreck is a strong word. Um, if we seek to unpack this a little bit, what we need to focus on, of course, is um, the effect and impact of the vehicles that will be diverted mm -hmm. down and along um, the road that will be built pursuant to the Planning Commission to for this right to be exercised upon. Um, looking at it in that context and the baseline as we know as has been pointed <coughs> out is of a lot of development coming after the road has been built mm. and opened to the public um, how do you would you like to clarify um, your opinion, and if so, um, to, to, to what extent, um, and in particular the use of the word wreck, when we're actually talking about simply the traffic on the realigned road, as opposed to mm. the development of a large area of the site for built development. Wreck is an emotive word. I accept that. Um, and like great greatest, it can probably be um, over 40 minutes unpicked and um, well, challenged. However, I have to say that if you spoke to the majority of local residents, yeah. they would use emotive language. Yeah. You know, there was almost a thousand, and I was one of them, marching along this yeah. very route a couple of months ago, you asked them for the language that they would use about what impact yeah. uh, the traffic would have, so, then I think they would use emotive okay, language. Yeah, but Mr. Weibo, I'm not asking you to, you're, you're not giving evidence about what other people might think or say, you're, you're giving... It is my choice of words, it, yes. Well, it, it's, your, it's your choice of words, and mm. I'm asking whether you have a different choice of words that you'd like to offer the inspector as your considered judgment. You, you may not have professional qualifications, but you've certainly got extreme knowledge based on 20 years or whatever it is of being on this site um, with your binoculars, etc., as you described, and are therefore able to speak with that knowledge. Um, in the light of that and what you know about the scope of the jurisdiction and the way in which one has to Mm. Um, calibrate um, harms or seek to calibrate them. Um, what is your considered uh, view in relation to the question of the overall harm to biodiversity that would arise from the realigned route being used by four and a half thousand vehicles each day approximately? Well, of course, I think that sentence has to be seen as its entirety because I am referring to the peace and quiet of the site mm. um, for residents. Um, spoil, destroy, wreck, I'm, I will get out my thesaurus. Um, but I think that essentially you have taken 4,500 vehicles and put them alongside the Royal Military Canal, which as we have heard is unique. 
it is tranquil, it is hugely appreciated for the peace and quiet. That peace and quiet will no longer be part of that experience of this uh, area and so wreck, spoil, destroy. Um, I think within the context of what I have said in that sentence, um, I'm not sure what other word I would substitute. Okay. And I am bearing in mind it's the traffic that we are talking about. Okay, that's fine. It's your evidence, um, yeah. Mr. Um, Wiper. Thank you very much for giving your evidence you. to the inquiry. I have no further questions, sir. Thank you. Uh, I have one question. So, hmm. paragraph 7.2 in your conclusion section. Um, it refers to uh, the uh, essential peace and quiet of a much loved site. Um, and that seems to be the focus of your conclusion. Mm. Whereas your actual main value of your document is on biodiversity matters, uh, so birds, fauna, etc. So I'm just trying to understand the, 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 the link, if you like, between your suggestion of disruption to peace and mm. quiet uh, as opposed to the uh, biodiversity matters that you reference in your main part of your... I think brief. in... Thank you for the question. I think in 7.2 I slipped in human, so I probably strayed a little bit from the, the bulk of the... But I did mention non-human residents which was um, referencing back to the rest of my statement. Okay, so that's how it sort of draws in the actual impact on the biodiversity. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's everything for me, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Wybrand, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, are you a member of Save Princess Parade? St. Francis Bray doesn't have a membership fee, it doesn't have a membership card, um, so support a member, I think it is a grey area, but for the purposes of this, I'm happy to be described as a member, but it is a, a sort of very, um, yes, it, it's not a clearly defined membership. So is there, for example, a membership list? I believe that there is a list, whether you would describe them as members or supporters, there is a list. But I, again, I'm not sure whether you would specifically attach the word member to that. Uh, and where have you seen that membership list? I haven't seen that membership list. How do you know of its existence? Um, I, there's been reference to uh, an email base of 600, I believe, but um, so it, it's been a, a verbal reference to it. And who made that verbal reference? I don't know, and there's probably been different references over the years. So it's just something that I believe is there, but um, I haven't sort of seen it in black and white, read it anywhere. No, but can you recall... You recall the figure of 600. Can you recall who mentioned that to you? I can't even remember the context in which it was mentioned, so no. I think any group of this size would have an email base. Um, I receive emails from, say, Prince's Parade, so there, I, there clearly is an email base. But that is BCC'd, not CC'd, quite rightly, of course. Um, uh, and who sends out those emails? I think they come from... Save Prince's Parade generically from a Save Prince's Parade email address, but I couldn't say for sure. And who writes them? Do you know who writes them? No, I don't know. Um, th do they ever have anyone's name on it? I do not recall. I believe they are from generically Say Princess Parade, but um, you know, th this has been running for 12 years, this campaign, and that is a long period of time. So I couldn't say that over 12 years there hasn't been names on there, but um, I think they are a generic email address and a generic email. Um, and since when have you been in the position of being content to be described as a member of Save Princess Parade? Since the outset. 
And when was that, roughly? I think it's roughly 12 years ago. That's how long this has been rumbling on. And what's your involvement been in Save Princess Parade over that 12-year period? Um, I have attended uh, various hearings. I have joined a lot of residents um, for protest marches. The one most recently that I mentioned about uh, two months ago along the seafront and back along the canal on the, the route of the, uh, the road that we are talking about stopping up today. Um, so, yes, various different uh, events over more than a decade. Have you ever been to any meetings of Safe Princess Parade? I tend to more be gatherings such as the, the, the protest march. Um, we've had one of those, which was also um, with one or two other groups in Hyde High Street. We had the one a couple of months ago. So there isn't particularly, I, don't, I can't recall a meeting per se where we sat down and had an actual meeting. They're more sort of getting out and doing things and making our sort of... Um, Do they have, for example, annual general meetings? I suspect they do, but I must admit I can't say for sure. So you have never been to a meeting of Save Princess Parade? No. Um, you've just said I haven't never been to a meeting of Save Princess Parade. I've said I cannot recall a specific meeting where we sit in a room and have a agenda and a discussion, but... I'm not, I, I didn't mention agendas. Have no. you ever been to a meeting of Save Princess Parade other than the hearings of the protest marches you've told us Not about? that I recall. Um, do you know who, is, who makes up the committee of Save Princess Parade? Have we not already established this, that um, Elaine Martin and Jean Baker, I think we can probably ask that question of every witness and you'll get the same answers. Uh, in a pure volunteer capacity, and it is very good that people come forward and actually, you know, fulfil those roles. So are they the only two okay. members of the committee that you've ever known of? No, there have been other members that have come and gone. It's, as I said, 12 years. Um, that is a long while for a single committee to be in place, and so there have definitely been sort of changes over that period of time. So do you know who were the members of Save Princess Parade committee... Um, during, say, the late summer period, August, September? I don't know who stepped down, who came forwards. My wife has certainly been involved since the outset, has been a committee member at times, but I don't know sort of specifically who comes on, who goes off, when. Um, was your wife a committee member during that? August, September 2021 period I just asked about? I'm not sure. I don't know when she stopped being a committee member. And uh, were you present at the pre-inquiry meeting? I wasn't. Did you watch the video of it? I didn't, but I got a summary of what was discussed and the, an understanding of the guidelines. And who gave you that summary? I think that would have come via... Just remembering how I was informed and what times, because we've had different discussions back and forth about this. But ahead of me submitting my evidence, I think that it probably would have come via my wife. And... But at the time, you don't know whether she was on the committee. I think at that time she wouldn't have been on the committee. So do you know who she would have got it from? Was it her attendance at the pre-inquiry meeting or was it that via, say, Princess Parade? It would be my guess that it was the former. And did anyone, therefore, from Save Princess Parade um, give you any... Um, briefing on what was discussed at the pre-inquiry meeting? No. Did you read the inspector's pre-inquiry meeting note? No. I had the uh, verbal summary. Um, 
And before producing your proof of evidence, did you read the amended statement of case from, say, Prince's Parade? No, I didn't. I have subsequently seen it, but not before submitting my evidence. Yeah, uh, and y you are covering the topic of biodiversity for Save Princess Parade. Mm. Yep. Yes. Did you set your own remit for what you would cover in the proof of evidence, or were you informed about the ambit of Save Princess Parade's case? I was directed by the pre-inquiry guidelines that clearly stated that ecology was part of the remit of this inquiry. Um, I was also uh, following the instruction that I believe, if in doubt about evidence, include it. Um, but that is all my own homework. This is uh, my opinion, and I was not instructed by anybody um, what to put into my evidence whatsoever. Yeah, no, I'm not, not suggesting that, but in terms of... As I understand it, from what you've just said, you effectively set your own remit for what went in the proof rather than sticking to the ambit of Save Prince's Parade's yes, amended right. statement yes. of case. Yes. Um, so there was no attempt by Save Prince's Parade, anyone on their behalf, to actually inform you of the ambit of the case that Save Prince's Parade was promoting at the inquiry that you would be giving evidence to support? No, I think the biodiversity was sufficiently ring-fenced and a clear enough remit that uh, there wasn't. We're clear enough, but we've just been through putting lines through chunks of your proof, so it wasn't clear enough, was well, it? Well, it was clear enough because a lot of those lines have come from yesterday's debate. And I, I admit that the interpretation that I took of what was um, relevant to this inquiry and what wasn't was probably based on a misperception by myself. My feeling was that the diverted road was 100% a result of um, the stopping up order. And I still believe that if there is no stopping up order, there will be no diverted road because its whole reason for being false you just end up with additional costs and you end up with a smaller development site. But I understand that that was a misconception on my part. It was my interpretation. It was me um, looking at this from what I thought was a common sense point of view. And uh, I apologise if I made the wrong interpretation. No need to apologise. We just need to know what the position was. So as I understand it from what you've just said, when the inspector reads your written proof of evidence he needs to bear in mind that what you are talking about there was 100% of the impact of the new road, both its construction and its use by all traffic, yeah? It was, yes. OK, thank you. Um, your proof of evidence, therefore, given that remit, hmm. um, covered, uh, we can assume, can we all, ecological matters that you thought were significant? Yes. Thank you. Um, and how sure are you that there will be effects on biodiversity as a result of this order? How sure? As I emphasised at the start, um, I think the expertise I bring here is from 25 years of looking at the site, so I do not have the ecological qualifications of the Council's ecologist. Um, nevertheless, it seems clear-cut to me, and indeed from the reports from Lloyd Bohr and elsewhere, it is clearly stated that there will be a biodiversity impact. Um, hence we have the mitigation, hence we have the creation of the new habitat. I do not see how you can take 4,500 4, vehicles down a currently... Um, uh, closed site with that amount of wildlife and not have an impact. Now, the precise extent to which that will be impacted is something beyond my expertise. So when you've been giving your oral evidence today, mm. you've been comparing the impact of the traffic against what you've just described as a currently closed site, so the site mm. in its current condition, is that right? Yes, that's right. Um, 
so the the scale of the impact of the diversion you've been comparing to the site as it stands today yes that's right in terms of the lack of noise the lack of air pollution the <coughs> disruption that will stem from the traffic yes. so your position is that the development traffic won't cause any noise or any air pollution therefore i'm not sure how you you came to that conclusion. Could you just explain how my thinking got to that conclusion? Well, it's based on what you've just told us. You've said that in terms of the um, impacts that you've been describing, mm. you've been comparing it to the site as it stands today. Right. And you referred to there being a lack of noise and a lack of air quality mm. impacts. Yes. Um, as your barrister explained, the baseline for the comparison is not the site as it stands today. Mm -hmm. Do you accept that? Yes, do I you understand that. that? Yes, I do. Yes. So if you understand that, it necessarily implies that you don't think the development traffic is going to have any effect on noise or air emissions, given what you just told us. Well, the development traffic adds, to, I think it is a quarter to the current volumes. Is that right? From what I recall. So it adds to the overall volume of traffic that is going through that route. Uh, so it is wrong, therefore, to compare the impact of the stopping up and diversion order to the site as it stands today. If you are taking the site as it stands today purely as the baseline, I think was the word that you used previously, then the development traffic would be over and above that baseline if I understand correctly. Yeah, so the, the, you've told us that you were comparing the situation with the site as it stands today. That would be wrong. Certainly when I was putting this together, I was looking at the entire picture of the site as it stands today with the additional traffic. Yeah, I was asking about your oral evidence and it was in right. that context that you explained the oral evidence you've given today was on the basis of comparing the traffic from the diversion to the site as it stands right. today uh -huh. okay well I, if that was my verbal um response then clearly that is not the case it is the development traffic on top of the existing traffic okay so so my apologies well no, no need to apologize no we just to need apologize. to be clear that you're accepting that yes, that was wrong yes okay now, you've referred to your 25 years' experience. I'm guessing that by 2018, that would have been 22 years' experience. Yes, that sounds right. Right, Max. Yes. Um, you objected to the stopping up and diversion order in May 2018. Mm. Yes. Do you recall what you said in your objection? I then? don't. I'm about to find out, I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it was dated the 22nd of May 2018. Um, so it was one of the original objections. You're down as objector 123. Um, if you would like a copy of it, then I'm sure a copy can be found for you. But I can read out the bit. Reading out, I think, would be fine. Okay. Yes. Are you reading out the entirety or a bit? No, no, it's just one relevant point that oh, I right, want okay. to explore. Uh -huh. If you want to, uh, to see the whole thing, I certainly am not trying to... No, sure. Yes, I appreciate that. If the whole thing is available, then I would appreciate it just to see it in context. And I think you were, at the time, the KCC member for Hythe West, is I that right? Been, yes, that's right. Yeah, and this came from your kent.gov.uk right. email. You. Um, and you start by saying, I am the KCC member for Hythe West, mm -hmm. is that right? Yes, that's and right. And I was going to ask you about the third block of text, mm -hmm. which begins more over to move the road. Yes, I... Do you see that? Uh, and you say, moreover, to move the road adjacent to the unique Royal Military Canal, a scheduled, ancient, a scheduled monument, would have a clear detrimental impact on the tranquility of the setting and potentially the wildlife. Do you see that? I do, yes. So you were not certain at that stage that it would have an impact on the wildlife, only the potential to have an impact. 
wasn't the best of chosen words. Um, but you inserted the word potentially. I did, yeah. And that had a meaning, one assumes. Yes. Uh, and this was coming from you as KCC member from Hythe West, as from your kent.gov.uk email. So it is <coughs> right for the inspector to take away from this that at the time you only thought there was the potential for impact. I think at the time I thought there was the potential impact and I am absolutely certain of the impact now. Yeah. So you yeah. talk there about it having um, a detrimental impact on tranquility. So you mm. were sure at that time about tranquility, but at yep. this stage you were not sure about the impact on wildlife. I guess that at that stage, uh, some of the detail in terms of traffic volume and that sort of thing was not known, but um, certainly um, I would remove today, now knowing what I do in terms of detail, I would not put the word potentially in there. Thank you. So your, um, the appearance notice Mr Moy circulated this morning has you down as a resident. Yes. Um, there's no expert declaration hmm. on your statement. Um, you have no relevant professional qualifications, I think, as far as ecology no, or biodiversity No, and I've tried to be clear on that in my statement and in my uh, verbal report. Yes, and I, I certainly mean no disrespect by this, but in this respect, you're an amateur, yes? Yes. Um, you refer in your statement to records, but you've not um, produced any records to the inquiry, have you? No, I haven't. I thought that would have been detailed too far. OK. Um, picking up on something you were asked earlier, do you... I don't want to push you beyond your um, comfort zone in terms of your experience with planning, hmm. but do you know who, who imposes planning conditions on the grant of planning permission? So um, it is the case, um, feel free to, to say you don't know, um, that the Environment Agency cannot impose conditions right. on planning permissions that are granted by local planning authorities or indeed the Secretary of State. Right. Uh -huh. Is that news to you? Did I know that? I think it is news to me. Okay. I, yes, I am not a, a planning expert, of course. So you thought the Environment Agency had the ability to impose conditions on the grant of planning permission? I suspect that I misconstrued that. I was looking at the fact that they had been fairly clear in a number of uh, correspondence about what they would want to see, and so I may have misconstrued their, the precise nature of their... Um, authority within this uh, case, or within planning. And it is the case, isn't it, that the Environment Agency, or indeed um, no statutory advisor, sought to have the planning application called in for determination by the Secretary of State. That is true, sadly, yes. So when we look at your proof at paragraph 4.1, um, we see there what you say about the Environment Agency and the position with the buffer zone. Um, and this is under the heading impact mm. on the wildlife on the canal. Y you say, second line, the new road will be as close as 13.32 metres to the canal, which is clearly contrary to Environment Agency advice. So you have based your appraisal, as it were, of the ecological impact Acts on the view that the buffer that was proposed was clearly contrary to Environment Agency advice. Is that right? That was one of the factors that I took into consideration. Um, and that was based, I think, on the... Because you refer to um, the 20 metres... That was based, I think, on the Environment Agency's letter of the 10th of April 2018. Do you recall that? I do not recall that that was the date of it, but yes, it was a letter from the Environment Agency. And had you seen any subsequent letter from the Environment Agency that dealt with the buffer? I certainly seem to recollect that somewhere I saw that they had accepted that the reduced buffer was 
and I can't remember the terms that they put this in, um, was something that they would accept. So when you wrote in your proof of evidence that the buffer was clearly contrary to environment agency advice, you were leaving out the later advice from the Environment Agency that, that, that said they were content with the buffer? No, I think uh, what I was doing was emphasising that they had a starting position for what they would want to see in an ideal world, which was the 25 metres. Um, I am disappointed that they have accepted a much reduced buffer, but it seems to me as though their opening bid, as it were, was for 25 metres. And that presumably is based on some solid evidence from the Environment Agency as to sort of why they picked 25 metres. You see, what you have done in 4.1 is set out two steps in the chain of advice without mm. giving the third final <coughs> step, haven't you? I have, but... The point I was making was that the Environment Agency twice gave a certain number of metres that they would want to see and, OK, they have come back from what their initial position was, but I do think that is significant. If they were saying it has to be a 25 metre as a, a sort of ideal, then they say 20 metre. The fact that the Environment Agency has given ground and given ground... I think is the point that I was making there. Yeah, well, what you say is that the 13.32 buffer is clearly contrary to environment agency advice. That's what you informed mm -hmm. the Inspector and the Secretary of State. Yes. Uh, using the word is and explaining that it's clearly contrary to their advice, giving two steps but not the final position of the environment agency. Right. Now... Why did you choose to use those words and then omit the final advice that came from the Environment Agency about the acceptability of the buffer? Because, from my perspective, the important aspect was where they initially set what they wanted to see. So they said that right at the outset, 25 metres. They then said 20 metres. Now, we have ended up with 13.32 metres. Um, I would have assumed that the Environment Agency would not be supportive of something that was almost half of what they had initially said they wanted to see. That was your assumption, but you knew at the time you wrote this that they were OK with that. They had accepted that. Yeah, and you deliberately left out mention of that? I did not feel that that was... That was not the point I was trying to make. It was the 25 metres, it was the 20. The fact that it has ended up as 13.32, it has been accepted by the Environment Agency, but they have given and given a lot of ground on that. Yeah. What you said in your proof, what you chose to write is... This is clearly contrary to environment agency advice. When you wrote that, yeah. that was not true, was it? It was true with regard to the advice that they had given. But then yeah. that omitted consideration of the final step in the advice. Their advice was for a 25-metre buffer. Their advice was then for a 20-metre buffer. They have now accepted... A 13.32 buffer. I wouldn't say that 13.32 is based on environment agency advice. The buffer is contrary to what they were advising. Now, if the environment agency then accepts a scheme which is not aligned with their advice, then that is down to the environment agency. But they, they accepted that three years before you wrote this proof of evidence. Yes, and yet they have never at any point advised for a 13.32 metre buffer. No, but you said that the buffer that is actually proposed is clearly contrary to environment agency advice. Yeah. That was not correct at the time you wrote it, was it? 
Well, uh, from my perspective, yes, because their advice, as opposed to what they have accepted, so that is my interpretation. The advice was given. The application ignores that advice, is a much smaller buffer than the Environment Agency advised, and the Environment Agency has said that they will live with that. I do not contest that the verb advice is related to that final situation. I think their advice was for 25 metres, their advice was for 20 metres. They have not advised, they have accepted 13.32. And they accepted it on the basis that the buffer overall was OK? From their perspective, contrary to what their initial position had been. Yeah, and it's for them to determine what their position is. It is. Yes. Uh, and it's enti entirely for them to change position as the development design evolves during the application process. If they see fit. And they did, didn't they? They did, alas. Yes, yes. But, but the point here is that you were not giving an accurate picture to the Secretary of State when you produced this proof of evidence, were you? I believe that I was. OK, the inspector will report on that. Now, your proof of evidence, paragraph 2.6, um, is not um, uh, something that you changed in your evidence-in-chief. I think you told us in your evidence-in-chief that paragraph 2.5, um, you were satisfied on that. Now, you're still maintaining paragraph 2.6, are you? I am, because there has not been a winter bird survey. And I would include that from my perspective. And I, again, it may be a question of interpretation, but when I'm looking at what is a full ecological appraisal, I would have expected to see a winter bird survey. So that's the only thing that, that you say is missing? I have concerns about some of the mitigation, particularly around the reptiles, but I'm not at all sure whether that is related specifically to the site as opposed to this inquiry. On the site visit, it will be clear that the area that is being mitigated for reptiles is purely on a relatively small corridor on the south side of the site and not on the, the rest of the site. And that concerns me because I have no idea and I have not seen it and I'm happy to be shown the evidence as to why there is not reptiles on the entire site rather than just on a relatively small southern barrier, a southern uh, corridor. So just to be absolutely clear, that in 2.6 you're maintaining that there has not been a full ecological appraisal, um, in terms of which deals with the, the ambit of the ecological appraisal, I think. You're saying, as I understand it, that it's only the winter bird survey that you say was missing, should have been done but wasn't done, but you take issue with some of the mitigation measures. Yes, that's Thank right. You. Thank you. Um, I, I'll ask you, please, to have a look at what we've got as core document 93. Um, you may need a copy of that passed oh, well, up to yes. you. I'm just conscious of time as well. Uh, it's already 10 to 5. Uh, Approximately, how much longer do you think you'll be? I'm about halfway through. Okay. Um, are we still on strict five o'clock deadline? Okay, thank you. We'll find out because I'd like to push through a bit longer if we can, just if that's okay with you. I'd like not to be impaired overnight if that's <laughs> a <feasible. laughs> I'm also conscious we do have another witness who has been sitting here all day who I assume we are not going to get to. No, I'm afraid not. Yeah, I think I'm going to be at least... Uh, I've been half an hour mm -hmm. to get about halfway through. I'm going to be at least another half an hour is my best sure. estimate. But we'll do the best we can. Um, so have you got uh, CD93 now? I have now. And that's the officer's report from August 2021. Yes. Have you seen that before? I am... Fairly sure that I would have had a look at it when I was going through all of the documents that looked relevant. I don't think I cite it in my evidence, but 
Now, had you seen it before you finalised your proof of evidence? Right, that's just what I'm saying. I would imagine that I have done, but I couldn't say absolutely for sure. Yeah, it's not referred to in your evidence. No, indeed, no. Um, we can see from that, um, I think we've looked before at paragraph 3.2, which relates to the ecological appraisal. But if we look at 5.1, for example, we can see that there were consultations with KCC Ecology, Natural England and the Environment Agency, mm. and that they had no comments or no objections. I see, see that. that. Yes. Um, uh, what we're talking about here is um, the details for Habitat Creation Plan Ecological Methods Statement for Phase 1 of the development, and that includes the construction of the new road, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Now, I, I'm... People may be listening on the live stream, people may be looking down, so it would help if you could speak an answer. Well, I'd go, um, mm, yeah. yes. But okay. No, okay. we need to be clear, because... Okay. Uh, I appreciate the public inquiry process is not familiar to many people. We need to be writing down your evidence so we're clear. Yes, right. So let's just Chris, pause us a second so I can hear about the timing of the ending. Okay. Um, there is a bed on tonight. Okay. Um, they need to bring everybody down due to the flood this morning. So they need to open up at quarter to six. We have to be out of here at the latest 5.30. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, so we'll need to be packed up and clear by 5.30, I take from that. Yeah. So. Yes, OK, so we'll, we'll proceed till 5.20 and we'll see if that gets us there. OK. <clears throat> um, did you attend or watch online this um, planning committee meeting? Um, not that I recall. I do not think so. And did you look at the minutes of it? I'm not sure. Um, can, you, can you confirm that there were representatives of the public speaking at the committee meeting? I think Hilary St. Clair and Councillor Jim Martin. Do you not know? Uh, no. no. Um, OK. Um, there are a number of conditions on the planning permission which govern ecological impacts from the construction and operation of the new road, aren't there? Yes, I believe so. Um, I don't know if you've got a copy of the planning permission to hand the CD2. No, I have not. OK. Are you familiar with the planning permission? Familiar-ish. Okay. I wouldn't mind a CD2 if that was possible, please. Yeah, certainly if you want something, please do ask. Well, let's take a starting point. Can we agree that conditions 15, 16 and 17 relate to ecological matters? We've just been looking at the officer's report yes. on those. Um, Thank you. So if you've got the planning permission, we've done 15, 16 and 17. If you go on to condition 18... Sorry, where am I finding condition? Condition 18, which is about five pages in, I think. Six pages, maybe? In CDO2. Yeah. Prior to commencement of development, hereby permitted. Yeah, so that covers the second line, a street lighting plan and a lighting design plan for biodiversity. Right. Yeah. Um, and then if you look on at 26... Yes. That's a condition we can see from the second line for a construction environment management plan. Long list of things to be covered by it, but you can see over the page that it covers ecological matters at N and O, for example, and at Q there's to be an ecological clerk of works. Do you see that? I do. And then there's also, I think, condition 47, which is relevant... Uh, which is towards the back of that document, condition 47, is for a landscape and ecological management plan. Do you mm. see that? I do see that. Yeah, so there are, uh, we can agree, a number of conditions on the planning permission which govern the ecological impacts of the construction and operation of the new road. Yes. Yeah? Mm. 
Um, now, as far as your proof is concerned, just so I can be absolutely clear, you were, uh, I think you read this out, and indeed you were asked a number of questions about the wording of it, but paragraph 7.1, 7.2 of your proof, you're not withdrawing or amending those two paragraphs. No. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so, Wintering Bird Survey. You picked this up, I think, in paragraph 3.5. Um, and say that it was flagged in 2017 by Kent County Council in objecting to the planning application and not subsequently addressed. So, are you intending to convey by that that KCC objected due to the lack of the survey and that that was not subsequently addressed? I don't think that is what in objecting, flagged in objecting, is actually stating. So no. what, I just want to clarify what it was that you were attempting to convey by those words, and in particular the not subsequently addressed. I was addressing the fact that Kent County Council Ecology in 2017 did indicate that there had not been a full wintering bird survey and were proposing or were suggesting that that was something that they wanted to see. Well, they, they never said that, did they? They never said that a survey should be undertaken. There has been no full wintering bird survey, something that was flagged in 2017 by KCC Ecology, is what I said. Yeah, but yeah. KCC Ecology never said that a wintering bird survey was required, did they? They said there hadn't been one. Yeah, but they never said one was required. But the reason for raising the fact that there hadn't been one was to indicate that there hadn't been one. Yeah. But what they said was they wanted further information on why it had been decided that one was not necessary. Right. Okay. That's all they said. Right. Are you accepting that? Uh, yes, I'm accepting that. OK. Yeah. Um, and when you tell us that was in 2017, in the later comments made by KCC Ecology during 2018, they never repeated any point about a wintering bird survey, did they? I assume that you are correct, and no, they didn't in that case, if that's what you're telling me. And indeed, KCC went on in July 2018 to say that the surveys that had been submitted provided a good understanding of the species present, didn't they? Yes, I, if that is what you're saying. Yes. Well, I mean, I'm not, I, well, I, look, I, I, I'm, if, you, if you don't know, I can show you the document. No, no, I, I'm not doubting your word. Okay. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm yeah. not doubting so your word. The, the chronology of this, as it were, was KCC had not said that a survey was required. They simply <laughs> asked for further information on why it had been judged that one was not necessary. Mm -hmm. And then they never mentioned it again. Right. And they went on to say that um, surveys provided um, provide a good understanding of the species present. Right. Yeah, so okay. that's the situation that the inspector needs to take into account. At the same time, there has not been a winter bird survey, and in my opinion, that is an omission. So that doesn't change my opinion, is, is that. But it was not something that Kent County Council had ever said was required and save for asking uh, for further information on why a survey was not necessary they never mentioned it again no but they did flag it which is the verb that i used um, and there must be a reason why they flagged it now if they subsequently say that they are satisfied with the information that they were given, given which I don't think that they've actually specifically stated that, but I guess you would assume from their position. Well, no, they did say that. 
and I can that they you are document. satisfied with the information that they were given with regards to why there had not been a wintering bird survey? Well, they stated, their final comments, I think, in July 2018, said that they were satisfied that the surveys provided, all the surveys, gave um, a good understanding of the species that were present. Right. So that's disappointing, isn't it? Because I think they, again, should stuck to their original concerns and that... And ultimately, I, I still believe that historical, looking at historical records is not a substitute. And why wouldn't you do a wintering bird survey if you were doing a thorough job? But this is another example in your proof, isn't it, where you flag up one of the early steps in the process without explaining to the Inspector or the Secretary of State what then happened. There are... I don't know how many 120 plus documents I am a single individual going through these documents. I do not have the mass ranks of legal team to pour over every document. Um, so if there are particular documents that I have missed or I have failed to spot the trail through to a situation like this, then that is not willful. That is because I am trying to do the best that I can to try and work out. And the documents have come in dribs and drabs, they have been hard to access, they have appeared on the District Council website um, in sort of clumps, to use a word that was used uh, previously, and are very difficult to navigate. So nothing was willfully meant by not concluding that thread through to where we are now. But what you said was that it was not subsequently addressed. So rather than just referring to the 2017 comments right. and not knowing what happened, you were positively stating that it was not subsequently addressed. Right. And yes. that is similar to the other point you made where you'd referred to, in the present tense, it being clearly contrary to the Environment Agency advice. The lack of a full wintering bird survey has not been subsequently addressed adequately to my mind. But it's been KCC assessed. But to KCC Ecology's mind, it would seem yes. Thank you. They are a very small team looking at developments right across the country and that would seem to country? be their position. County, sorry. And they are professionals. They are. And you're not seeking to impugn their expertise or experience not, at all? No, no, not in the slightest. Thank you. So as far as your proof is concerned, we've looked at um, 7.2 um, and indeed discussed that before, but you're clear there that it's the realignment of the road that harms the biodiversity. And that's still your position, yes? I have hopefully been very clear that where I refer to the road, it is in relation to the traffic as per the advice and the remit of this inquiry. But if we go to 3.1, what you raise under that heading of impact on wildlife, did you say in terms, you're referring to the impacts of the road closure, the diversion and construction. Sorry, have you got 3.1? I have lost my 3.1, I have to say. I'm, amidst all the bits of paper, my 3.1 has... If you need a moment... It's page two, if that helps. Yes, no, it's page two that has disappeared, but I now have a, another page two. Right, I have page two. Oh, right, OK, thanks. So it is 3.1 that I was asking you about. Let me know mm -hmm. when you found that. I have, yes. Thank you. So you refer there to the consequences of the road closure, diversion and construction. Yeah? Um, yes, but 3.1 clearly should be changed to in line with everything else that that um, does not include closure, diversion and construction. Yeah, so it should be changed, but when the inspector reads your proof of evidence, he needs to bear in mind that your conclusion was written 
taking into account the road closure, diversion and construction, yes? Yes. And you've now made abundantly clear in examination in chief, you're not changing that, despite the acceptance that the construction has got to come out of the picture. That's right. I still think that the traffic per se is sufficient to keep the uh, conclusion. Well, let's have a look at what you talk about under this heading in section three, where, for example, in 3.6, you talk about migrating birds. You're referring there to the dense scrub providing a safe haven for them, yeah? Yeah. And in 3.7, you refer to the on-site grassland. Yeah? Yes. That the impact on those things is going to come from the development of the site, isn't it? It will come from the development of the site, it will come from the development of the road, and it will come from the traffic on the road. The, um, the, the traffic on the road is not going to lead to any loss of dense scrub or any loss of grassland, is it? Not per se. No, that's all going to come due to the development of the site. Yep. The dense scrub that will, would remain with the road in place would have traffic running alongside it. So therefore, it is highly unlikely that it would be still a haven for birds, whether they be resident or migrant. But when the inspector is asking himself what is the impact on birds going to be, he needs to do that in the context of assuming that all the buildings under the planning permission have been constructed, mm -hmm. the road has been constructed, and it is being used by the development traffic, mm. and ask himself what additional effect is it going to cause by putting the diverted traffic on top of that? Right. And in those circumstances, it must be the case that the diverted traffic does not cause all the impact. Not all the impact, that yeah. of course. And it, it won't cause any loss of habitat? It will not cause loss of habitat per se, but the habitat that remains will have four and a half thousand vehicles up and down alongside it. So I guess you would say that the impact of the traffic would have an impact on the, the vegetation that remains but it is as, not, a, as a haven for bird life. But he's not going to introduce the traffic because there'll be the development traffic there. Right. Yeah? Yeah. There will be, yes, the development traffic and... It's not, therefore, causing um, traffic to be on the new road that wouldn't otherwise be there in the sense of there will be traffic on the new road. What we're talking about is the amount of it. Mm. Yeah? Yes. So you accept that it won't cause traffic um, to be introduced on the new road? Yes. Um, so that baseline of asking what is the impact in a situation where we have the construction of the buildings, the construction of the new road, and its use by development traffic, we'll be putting the diverted traffic into a setting which is, to use your words from examination in chief, not dark and relatively undisturbed and not unspoiled. Sorry, not? Yeah, because... The impact of diverting the traffic from the stopping up right, and diversion I see what order you mean. Yes. will be felt in the context of all the buildings being there, the road being constructed, and the road being used by development traffic. Mm -hmm. So in your examination in chief, you were explaining the impacts that would arise from the additional traffic being introduced into a dark and relatively undisturbed corridor that was unspoiled. Yes. That would simply not be the situation, would it? If you put that sort of sequence of events explained like that, then yes, I accept what you are saying. Yes, yeah. And that's the way 
that the inspector needs to consider it, because what we're looking at is a future where two things feed into it. The planning permission is one thing, the diversion of the traffic is the other. Mm -hmm. And that, the planning permission, the development, the construction of the road, the development traffic has been approved. And the inspector is effectively saying, in that context, what does it matter to add the additional traffic on top of that? Right. Yeah, and you've accepted, I think, that your assessment of the harm was against the wrong baseline, because it's not going to be against the site as it stands today. You're asking, if we've got all buildings there, the road there, it's being used by development traffic, what's the impact of putting the more traffic on? I see clearly, yes, the argument that you are making. I also was bearing in mind that the um, explanation as to what was in the remit of this inquiry was very clearly stated as ecology. Yeah, but it's ecology, the impacts of what on ecology and what ecology. Yes, I accept that. So the, yes. the ecology is not going to be the site at the moment, it's going to be the site as developed. And the impacts are not going to be from the diverted traffic against the existing situation, it's going to be the impacts of the diverted traffic through the development site. Mm. And those are different things, aren't they? Yes. Thank you. Um, now, if we look at your summary, the one thing that you mentioned there was lighting from the road. That's right, isn't it? The, the only thing, as it were, that you refer to as having an impact is lighting from the road. Sorry, seven point... Sorry, this is the summary of your proof. It's the very... Oh, I see the, the summary. Start My apologies. Yeah. Yes. Um, and that has now been omitted from your proof. Yes. Th can you point to any ecological impact in your proof which would actually be a direct consequence of the order in the context that we've just agreed? To my mind, the impact on the wildlife along the canal and on what remains of the um, undeveloped area will be impacted by the traffic. But that's going to be in the context of, as we've just agreed, the redevelopment of the site, the existence of the road, and the use of the road by the development traffic. Right, yes. Yeah. Can you point to anything in your proof and say that's down to the diverted traffic? I would still contest, and I completely understand the point that you are making, but I would still contest that the impact on the wildlife, on the canal, and on what remains undeveloped of the site would still have an influence from the traffic. And I struggle to understand how you can strike through everything to do with ecology from the stopping up and from the traffic when it was, I think, one of the four main topics of this inquiry. Well, ecology is the topic, but the inquiry is about establishing whether there would be a significant effect on biodiversity, I think was the word that was actually used, as a result of the stopping up and diversion order. Mm. Our position is that there wouldn't be a significant impact mm. as a result of the stopping up and diversion order. Uh, this is not a trick question, genuine question. Is there any part of your proof of evidence where you can point to an ecological impact in your proof which would be a direct consequence of the diverted traffic aside from, uh, rather than, the things that we've been talking about? Not aside from the things that we have been talking about. Thank you. So those were all the questions. Thank you very much right. indeed, Mr. Weibrow. Thank you very much. Uh, so we have three minutes. <laughs> uh, you, well, you need longer. If you do, then, it, then I'm afraid you, you will just have to be in Pedro overnight, Mr. Weibrow. Mm -hmm. I wasn't proposing to re-examine. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you.
In that case, thank you very much. And I'm not in Perth. Good. No. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'll just be able to finish quite quickly now, so I'll deal with any housekeeping stuff tomorrow morning instead. Uh, obviously, we have speakers first thing who can't make the afternoon, so I suggest it would be speakers first thing that have indicated they have to be, then the two witnesses, and then the remaining speakers in uh, lastly. Uh, very quickly, is Mr Pritchard now here? Um, so if, if you do wish to speak, then... Um, well, no, I, I was going to say, um, I'm afraid uh, in order to, to, to speak, we need to understand what it's about. Um, and everyone else who's down to speak has submitted information in advance uh, by several weeks so that the applicant could respond to them and understand what they were going to say. Um, so... Well, I'm afraid we don't have time for starters. No, 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 no. Yeah, uh, um, if, you, um, if you do have time to come tomorrow, then you're more than welcome to. But I, I cannot promise that I'll be allowed to let you speak. But I will... What time would be best? Uh, well, 9.30 would be best, because that's when there are other um, objectives speaking first. Thing. OK, um, but we are hearing more in the afternoon, and you are more than welcome to come. But I will have to consider whether or not that that's right in the format of the, of the inquiry. Okay, but so thank you, thank you, sir. Okay, uh, in that case, the inquiry is adjourned, and will resume at nine thirty in the morning. Thank you.